if you stand here, you can see the well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the south of England. Clear Pigeon, to be exact, the iconic car track located just outside of, well, between Dorchester and Yeovil, if you know your English geography. My name is Joe Bradley. We're here for the first round of the 2024 NKC, the Junction 6 NKC, delivered lots of drama, intrigue, contention, and that is surely to continue into 2024. I am, as usual... Joined by my cohort, Nick Dillon. Cohort, Nick, Nick, you like that? <laughs> I quite like being a cohort. Well, I've been working good. on a word to describe <laughs> Have you? it. I've been working on a word to describe it. Yes. You came with cohort. Cohort. One of the, the better choices, surely. <laughs> yes, I think so. There was a lot of other choices, but we couldn't use it. We went for cohort, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, mate, um, we've been waiting a while for this, it seems. Other series have kicked off already. We have been waiting uh, patiently since we were here. Last year, in October, for the final round of the 2023 season, it ended in dramatic style. We've been waiting to kick off 2024, and we're doing it at exactly the same place, which seems quite... It's a, quite it's a nice ending. way of doing it's it. Book yes, ending book ending. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Actually, not we book ending, because that would be first and last. It's kind of indie booking. I'll t- see what yeah. I mean. Cohort does suit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> little bit of a difference between uh, 2020, 2023 and 2024. Where is it between, sorry? <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit of a difference. We, we split the season into uh, two halves, basically. The first half, rounds one, two and three, uh, form a Southern Cup. Um, we then have a little bit of a break in July for an old plate where we go off to Cumbria and Raura, and then we reconvene with rounds four, five and six for the Northern Cup. Now, the Southern Cup calendar looks like this. We're here at Clear Pigeon now. Uh, towards the end of May, we'll go to Forest Edge, also in the very south of England, and then even further south of England into the southwest is Dunkerswell Raceway, formerly known as the Mansell Raceway, taking back its old name. That's the end of June. Uh, all played for Rower in July, and then the Northern Cup kicks off at Wilton Mill uh, in the middle of August. We then go to Three Sisters in the northwest near Wigan for the 20 to the 22nd of September, and then we end the season, round six and third round of the Northern Cup at Warden Law up in the northeast of England, just south of Sunderland. Now, all six rounds count for the overall NKC Championship, the Junction 6 NKC Championship, to give it its full title, but we are going to have trophies for the Southern Cup and, indeed, the Northern Cup. So a little bit of difference, but overall, everybody, nothing's really changed We've still got two tire, two sets of tyres to get you through all six rounds. However, you are now, it's compulsory to use just one set for the first three rounds. Ah, right, OK. And then your second set can be brought in for round four. So, whereas before in 2023, um, you had uh, two sets of tyres which you could then intermingle and use as you saw fit throughout the season. Now, it's, it kind of simplifies things. One set... First three rounds, second set, last three rounds. Quite simple. And one set for the O-plate. And a brand new set for the O-plate, yes, That's of course. Set. So, yeah, so we, don't, we haven't got to kind of uh, guesstimate who's got what, which tyre they That's put right. on, where they run, because they'll be running. The only advantage, I suppose if you miss a heat, or you miss a round, you've got a slight advantage rounds two and three. Or, but then, yes, but there are, there are ways of getting around that. So interlopers who come in for, you know, the, the, the last round of the, uh, round three, for instance, will have to scrub their tyres. Um, We are already underway. We got underway yesterday afternoon with three heats to kick off the 2024 Junction 6 season. Here we are continuing today. We're going to have a full day of racing. We'll be lucky to get a lunch break, uh, Nick. We've uh, we've got carts on track at the moment, and they are our first heat of the day, which is, no surprise here, with over 70 entries. It's our junior road tax squad. And Billy Vogt is the pole position driver there in the uh, the blue and yellow cart. Adam Catling alongside. Got Alex Fraser and Reese Green on row two. Sam Mott and Jill Leverton on the gold cart on row three. Charles Green and Alex Dole are then on row four. Row five, Kazari Visercek and Jacob Anslow. Row six is Carthy Kometa and Alfie McBain. With only a 30, what, 34, 35 second lap time here at Clear Pigeons. The shortest track, I think it's the shortest track in the UK. Uh, that we race on at this level. Uh, 815 metres of race track is where we are today, and we're about to go racing indeed. And away they go, sweeping beneath us in the commentary booth and through into Billy's Blind for the first time. Good start by Catling. It seems to go a slow start. That's a 65 has just crept in. That's Jesse Whitmore as they go through the, the uh, I thought it was called the S's for the first time, Joe. Yeah, through the S's and down towards the hairpin there. That's Hans' hairpin. And... 
I think that's named after Neil Han. I may be wrong. Um, we've got an off there. That will certainly be sorted out as the field at the front are already through buttons. That's the penultimate corner. The final corner is top end. That's it there. And you sweep out there. It's faster than it looks using all of the exit curb. And then down to complete lap number one. The first lap of the day, Billy Buck from the pole position from Reese Green. Adam Catling third, Sam Mott fourth. Then Charles Green, because Harry Vistacek is in sixth. We're already through the S's and back out onto lap two, down towards the airport again, Neil. Yeah, big look behind the shoulder there by Billy Voigt in the uh, blue cart yellow helmet. The all-white machine. Well, it's got a bit of colour on the uh, pods, but that's uh, Reese Green looking very much like he wants to get past. In It did look actually interesting. He was really right behind him coming into the hairpin, and now he's just a little bit of gapage there. Perhaps Voigt's tyres just coming in. Slight move back then to Catling in third. And then there's a big group you now fighting with fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And then another group, eighth, ninth, and downwards. So they've, they've done that groupy thing they like to do. We've got a car off at the exit of uh, Top Ben. He's taken a little bit of, um, of the track marshalling with him as well. That was a 66 cart uh, who's had a bit of a problem. That's Alex Dull. Now, the white nose cone and fairing, uh, NASA fairing on the front of the, uh, of the Reese Green cart there in second place, uh, hasn't got a sticker kit. That could be down to weight. There's just under a kilogram of weight in a sticker kit, but that includes the side pods, which he has colour on. And that looks like a cosmic uh, livery there as they flash underneath us there. Uh, Vuk is still the leader. Adam Catling still in third. Charles Green for Sam Modji, 11th and 6th. And there's no change there, Nick, at all in the top 10. As Vuk once again looks over his shoulder. You know what? I've got a feeling that Reese Green is working this. And he's working with Vuk. He's not challenging. And what is that? What we're seeing there is with these two have, have enabled themselves to break clear of Catling and the charging field behind them. Yeah, there's a gap back to the triple seven of Catling. And then there's another. I mean, there's the gap. When I say gap, it's not massive. It's probably about you know, just, just about a second. In fairness, the 77 of Charles Green is getting close, but it's even closer to first and second. And that's yeah, we've had, enough, had enough waiting, and Reese takes the lead. Yeah, he's been, Billy's blind. He's been looking like he was uh, just weighing that up. Looks uh, over his right shoulder there as they go into the hand hairpin. Now, Billy Vuk Oof. Got in, getting onto the back bumper now of Reese Green. He knew he was there. It was a bit of a textbook move through that sweeping left hander into Billy's blind. We're going to see a lot of that, Nick, aren't we, yeah. at that point? There's only real two obvious... I mean, anywhere can be an overtaking place, but only two obvious places. That's obviously into Billy's Blimey Store and also into the hairpin. The hairpin's tricky. Now, third and fourth now is where the action is. And they are nose to tail, so much so that the nose was hitting the tail there as it went past underneath us there. And that's Catley and Green. I think Green's actually made oh. the move. 77 takes 777, seven, seven, so uh, one seven less, but one position more. That was a great move there, and that was all about the Adam Catley card just sliding wide through the double apex of Billings blind through that right hander leading to the S's and then Charles Green just moving serenely keeping the inside line and it just look you made that look so easy it's not of course and now these two are going to space out as Charles Green takes up the cudgels of third place Adam Catling now fourth Jaden Sherwood Kaziri Vistacek they've gone ahead of Jay Leverton who's now in seventh Sam Mott eighth George K ninth tenth is Lucas Howell and you can see movement throughout the field there on the timing bar on the screen that you're watching at home. If you are new to the NKC or new indeed to karting, welcome to the Junction 6 NKC for 2024. You've missed two years that you can catch up on, on the karting <laughs> live, live stream. This evening, I'd, right now. I'd, yeah, I'd urge you to do that um, for the next few weeks because there's some cracking racing on there. If you are a motorsport fan, this is the epitome of pure racing. There's no hybrids. There's nothing other than driver, chassis, and engine at this level, and it is pure racing indeed. Yeah, and it's interesting. That we, rather strangely, we've got a really spaced out field. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. I'm, not count, I'm not learning to count. That's before you have a battle. <laughs> that's that's how many carts is well, before you have a battle. I think and you can watch them splashing by now. Look, there, bang. Bang! They're all equidistant apart as they come underneath this uh, the gantry and come underneath the commentary booth now. That's probably something to do, Nick, with the mixed grids. Now, what am I talking about when I say mixed grids? I'm going to continue educating people who are new to this level of motorsport and indeed this NKC Junction Six NKC karting. Uh, we have mixed grids here through the heats, which means as a competitor, you get three heats that qualify for your grid place for the finals, and uh, you'll have one heat near the front, one heat near the middle or in the middle and one heat near starting near the back and then 
you basically sort yourself out through the heats if you're at the back then your objective is to get as far forward and overtake as many people as you can F- overtaking being the optimum yeah the 32 word there, there just got through that's yeah. uh, Kasseri Viserec's got past the uh, 777 of Catlin and obviously he's uh, been drifting back from the start this is his front start and of course as you know there's, as you've been explaining Joe there's, you, know, you, you are not graded according to your time you're graded according to what came out of the hat and, and I think the most what, of it. what you've seen about it being spaced out is probably you've got drivers of similar sort of uh, pace and ability there at the same point on the grid for this heat. And that's just the look of the draw, quite literally. Yeah, the other thing, of course, is this track being slightly short, as we are seeing it's some lap... Some, some t- oh, but the problem... In fr- uh, there's two cars It's Jill Everton. 19165 has just gone off in an accident, just coming out of the horseshoe. These two carts are probably get, they're going to get going, actually, before the cart. But there was a yellow flag coming out of uh, the hairpin. So just to reset, it's green leading from green. So it's re-screened from Charles Green. So it's the greens. Uh, so that's good for ecology. The greens are leading a cart race. <laughs> and then it's Voigt, Sherwood, Vizicek, Catling and Leverton. So we're inside the last 90 seconds as we still have people moving ahead of the number yeah. 777 Catlin goes back to Mott there. that's Mott in the uh, white helmet and that's Catlin in the triple seven you can read that quite nicely he goes away oh he's not, he's not taking that line down looking at the outside line no in fact he's lost two more places by going wide there so Catlin showed, lost a couple more places as they sweep round there's Catlin was leading that pack going across the line just what well 35 seconds ago and now he's got dropped back three spaces so when he goes across the line he's going to be scored I think in ninth I think you can watch it as, he, as they all change now as, as Leverton, Mott, and I think Lucas Howell all got past cut, and they did. So, still the movement. It's taken a while, hasn't it, for this suddenly to get it, it comes. Always the stagger to unwind, the stagger of where you positioned in the heat. It it's unwound now, and, and we're seeing these, these big changes. It's taken almost the full length of the eight minute heat to have Adam Catling just uh, make his way down the field as the faster drivers have come through. That's no critique of Adam Catling. He's found where he is and that at the moment is he's been unable to defend those positions and finds himself now in ninth crossing the line now they'll get one more racing lap after this one the last lap board is due out next time with only less than 10 seconds now on the timing board that's G Leverton on the number 11 there that's the battle for sixth place there and Leverton going down the inside of Leverton was Lucas Howell on the 99 and he's already pulled a a bit of a gap as they pulled out of the hand hairpin. Yeah, Sherwood's off camera. Uh, Sherwood's picked up second, Joe. So, all oh, right, okay. It, so it's now Green, Sherwood, Green, Sherwood, and Green. This is all turning into a Robin Hood <laughs> incident, isn't it? Really, we should be up, up by Nottingham, not here. Uh, let's see if we can find Reese Green as we, he's gone on to the uh, final lap. Yeah, he's, he's in the uh, the all white machine. He's just going round hands hairpin now. Yes, yeah, so exiting out of the hairpin, out of the hairpin and through the horseshoe. So we'll pick up Reese Green, Jaden Sherwood there he is. has got 1.3 seconds gap and Sherwood making, and the back his marker way, as well, unfortunately. making his way past Charles Green, uh, not in good time or time enough to make a challenge on Reese Green as he takes the first heat of the day. Light wave, that's what you're allowed to do now. Well, Light not, wave acknowledgement. Not necessarily, there, are, there, are, there have been a, a bit of a, a sort of a concerns raised. At, uh, with the MSUK governing body, of which we are not part of. This is an IKR. Well, you and I personally. Um, well, yes, yeah. you are. Well, I kind of am, <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, concerns have been raised with, uh, with cele- celebrations, <laughs> celebrations across the line of various degrees of hands and indeed feet off the pedals, which has uh, been deemed to be getting a little bit outrageous. So with that in mind, going forward, we'll see perhaps less... Um, Razamataz from drivers going across the line. Reese Green there just raised a finger to acknowledge the checkered flag. Raised the hand. Jaden Sherwood in second. Charles Green third. Billy Vogt fourth. Fifth was Kasari Vischek. Uh, Lucas Howell sixth. G11 seventh. Eighth was Sam Mott. Nathan Traverse uh, uh, was ninth. And then rounding off the top ten, Adam Catling. There's your result on the right hand side of the screen. That was the first heat of the day for our junior Rotax class. We have got such a grid of junior Rotax. It's uh, non-stop junior that, rotax, isn't it? It absolutely is. It's, a, it's certainly a junior like, rotax uh, championship. 
uh, of numbers. Of numbers, <laughs> yeah. How many did we get, by the way? What, I, I think it was 70 something. Something, 72 gonna, or something. Yeah, I'll confirm it. Um, exactly just want to say hello to those of you who joined us on YouTube. Well, obviously, we're on Facebook. We're on Facebook and uh, the Cars Live TV Facebook page. you watch that Facebook page, please like us. Uh, we're also on the NKC page as well, um, in which case, hello. Uh, and on YouTube, that's the, the main place. Hello to uh, Michelle Harper, uh, Gabriel Esposito. Uh, Reece Sedgwick, uh, Martin Taylor, uh, Ella Haynes, Finley Cullen, uh, Jack Philpot 60, obviously, Holly, hello Holly, uh, Carl Young, I haven't forgotten these people up, um, and they're all kind of, it seems that Nathan Jensen, who's coming out I think in this heat, he's, he's very popular, he's got, a kind of, he's, he's, he's got a bit of a fan he's club. He's got a very, very good profile on social media, is Nathan, yes, he's, he's like 100,000 Instagram followers he's, or something. He's very savvy, yeah, is he? he's oh, always he? updating, big fan yeah. of ours, big fan, I'm a big fan of his actually. Oh, um, here we go. He's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always out and about there, and uh, always good to, uh, to see his posts. Uh, got a healthy profile, so it doesn't surprise me that he's got a, he's developed a bit of a fan club. Not at all. Um, we've got our seniors out next, Nick. Um, that's the grid. That yeah, thank you for giving me the grid. You also I, have to give I my am. glasses as well. Okay. Because uh, yeah, I'm, really I'm se- as I said yesterday, there are two of us commentating. The combined age is over 120, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> 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 so here we go. Senior Hotex is our next one. It's a, it's the second heat. They had one last night. We want to see that all the Saturday's action, which ended up being a three heats uh, due to the cancel, well, the postponement of the fourth heat due to an incident right at the start. Uh, that's on the YouTube page as well, and you can watch that back. Uh, and a lot of people have watched, in fact. And also, we have our pit walk. But we haven't, got to, we haven't got to watch the pit walk back because the pit walk is coming up at lunchtime. And it's an extended version of the pit walk. It includes a special bonus interview with uh, Oynit Smith, uh, done by me because Joe made me. A bonus didn't you? you made me do it, didn't you? Well, I just thought you'd need to, you know, you're, you're losing your, t- your interview skills are getting a bit weak. <laughs> a weak, excellent, <laughs> you're brilliant. You're going them. Let's see if my speed talking works well. So in pole, it's Levi Goodwatt. Good, you know, it's Feldman with me. Pole is Levi Goodyear. Second is Kieran Giffen. It's Ethan Wyatt and Ryan Shepherd on row two. Row three is Finley Underwood and George Holm. Row four is James Becker and Kieran Thompson. Row five is Archie Carter and Lewis Berry. Row six, Matthew Lambert and Reese Pope. Row seven, Henry Swanson and Elliot Barrell. Row eight is uh, Paolo Nunes Aranda and Henry Stratton. Row nine, Olive Varney and Simon Spagnuolo. And then ten is Jensen Watts and Samuel Wyatt. Eleven is Nathan Jensen, there we are, and Jamie Burt. Twelve is Arthur Thacker and Ashton French. Thirteen is Jason Bear and Liam Debbin. Fourteen which is row 14 is Michael Goodburn and Beard here on the back row not because it qualified because it came out of a hat it's Tristan Sharp and our 30th starter is Samuel Christensen there we are I can read well done Nick with my glasses obviously uh, number 93 Jensen Watts uh, came out to play with us in the NKC last year three times I think and he took three final wins uh, Emma Haynes is his girlfriend by the way so she's obviously the most important who's who's girlfriend this Nathan guy oh Nathan <laughs> Nathan, Nathan Jensen in fact right which is his cousin see right okay <laughs> There we are. And it's a good thing if you're a girlfriend, you should know where he well, is. Well, he's starting 23. And you know where he is, so you know he's not getting up to anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? That's <laughs> your insecurities coming out again. No, it's just the, if you look at the, the modern world, it's, 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 everyone, needs, everyone needs to know everything. Like, oh, that's a bit of a jump start. Surely. They're going yeah. to that one off. Are, are we seeing no, the... No, taking it. Are we seeing the race start there, Nick? We can't see any flags yet. No, off. we've got a cart off at the first oh, turn yeah. of Billy's Blind. That's the number 22. That Yo, was a little bit down the order. So uh, Gifford, Jim, James Becker, who started sixth, Nick, ended up going off track and right at the back of the field there. And I'm not sure if he was helped off. Let's just have a look at this. Oh, um, yes, he oh, was. Yeah. He got it. Oh, no, no, he, no, no, no. He, he was using something to break. He took avoiding action, didn't like he? It, either his brakes fell, he just massively over hit them and locked them dramatically. Yes, it must, might be cold towers. And, there he, no, and he's off and he's it gone. Was somebody in front. Uh, okay. Gifford is the leader. Kieran Gifford, the all plate holder. That's where he, why he's carrying the zero. On his number plate behind him, Levi Goodyear is in second. This is going to be a cracker. Ethan Wyatt there here with his brother Sam being run by their father, Andy. Uh, they've been a bit of a stalwart team here at the NKC for the last few years. And we've seen these boys come up through the junior ranks. Now both racing in seniors and both increasing their pace year on year, it seems. They are very, very tricky and hard to beat. Uh, Jensen Watts, by the way, he came out, like I say, three times last year, 
and won and every time. And won every mm. time. And he, he's already made his way. Let's see where he he's is ninth. now. He's ninth. He's ninth. And uh, yeah. Nathan, uh, the Nathan fans, he is up to 13th. Nathan Jensen, he's made a lot of places. I think he made four of that last up. So the top three, top four actually are, are now quite close. A little bit of a gap for Kieran Gifford. And he's got second, third and fourth coming together, which is Goodyear, Wyatt and Holm. Goodyear with the black helmets, the white helmet for Wyatt. It's best to give a little bit of identification for people to understand, don't know which colour is which, because some, some of you are super knowledgeable and know every single uh, sticker kit, that'll be Joe Bradley, or people like me go, who's caught that? So the 60 from the 65, going through the S's. Currently, not again, I'm not sure whether Watt's going to want to sit there very long, so why it's going to sit there very long, to be honest, because Gifford is getting away. He's pulled out 1,000 less than the second lead last time around. They've been joined in this, this second place by 54, Ryan Shepherd's coming through. Jensen Watts up to 7th, and Jensen still 30. So no movement really, but I think Watts made two more. It's up to 7th, but it's going to be, this is a back start. This is the one where he's just going to try and bank some points before his front starts later on. Yeah, that's They cross the line with about five and a half minutes to go. Yeah, he's going to be delighted with that, making his way up into 6th place. And this is from a, 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 a grid start, way down the order. However, I think as he gets forward to the first, certainly the first five there, of Gifford, Goodyear, Wyatt, Holm and Shepherd. His, uh, his progress may be stifled somewhat. He's on the number 93, about to come into this picture here. As we go too wide, Josh Hulman oh. trying to squeeze by. He needed a tin opener. It didn't work. The tin opener snapped in his hand there as he tried to get by Wyatt. Ethan, uh, he's got a bit of uh, got a bit of experience underneath him now. Yeah, we've got a bit of a check. Good, you took down to fifth there. Watts is in sixth, so he's now coming. So the, the, yep. the car at the back of this pack of four, don't forget the leaders away is Jensen Watts. It's a great run for Gifford. Gifford's really benefited, A, from being quick, and B, from this scrapple behind him. But it's really the man who's probably going to be the most interesting at this point, and coming for him, them all, is the quite now well-known 93 red and white car with the Birrell. It is called Jensen Watts, and he's now in sixth at the back of this. And my guess is he won't be in sixth when we get to the end of this race in four minutes and 30 seconds. And he's already now hunting down on our screens the, the black, the man in black. <laughs> Yep, it's going to be a movement there. The barrel overalls there of Jensen Watts just making his way. He's on, he's on, no, uh, he, he classes dunk as well as his home we circuit, but he's very familiar being from the south of England with this track here mm. at Clear Pigeon. Well, Duncan's was way further south, uh, way further north than here, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, about 100 metres, About yes. 100 metres, yeah. Latitude, that is. So Watts has gone through on Goodyear, the number 16 now slots behind. As we get them across the line, the all plate of Kieran Gifford leads. Ethan Wyatt still hanging on desperately to that second place. George Young, Shepherd, Watts now challenging Shepherd right on his bumper. He knows where to pass out of the S's now, down towards the hand hairpin. Defensive driving, but Watts squeezing through there and moving up into fourth place. This is a great run from Jensen Watts. We knew that he was going to be coming hard, and he's already passed the number 54 of Ryan Shepherd already through buttons into the final turn now of top bend and he's going to be moving up the order there give it across the line eight laps completed then we've got Wyatt home Watts now into fourth Shepard fifth Goodyear sixth Matthew Lambert seventh Berry Underwood Carter Archie Carter rounding off the top ten now then can Jensen Watts catch George Holm that's very very doable with three minutes remaining on this clock and then, having got by, it's going to be one thing catching George Hulme and Ethan Wyatt just ahead of him. It's going to be a different matter altogether trying to get by. There's the leader. There's second, third. Ethan Wyatt second. There's third place, George Hulme. And there, right on his bumper now, into the S's. We've seen what Watts can do down at the hand hairpin. He pulls out. Has he gone down the inside? He has. How many times has he done that already? Absolute master class in how to overtake a clear pigeon from that number 93 and did the southern rounds of the NKC last year and now he's got Ethan Wyatt we're all on Max's tyres remember a little bit of a harder compound than what you see at other karting series but that's because we've got to have these tyres last for three rounds all about cost effectiveness this championship and it certainly works very popular and you can see by the size of the grids now then Ethan Wyatt on the cosmic from the Birrell 
of Jensen Watts. He's just ahead of him. The purple and blue, that's the cosmic of Ethan Wyatt. The red and white, I do like red and white being from where I'm from. Obviously. Is the Birrell of Jensen Watts. Now, this is where he's been able to get onto the rear bumper of drivers in previous laps. He follows them through, and this is where he'll come. Ethan needs to be aware of that. He looks over his shoulder and just look oh, at that. Last oh, minute. He's, he's last used, he minute. absolutely <laughs> used the tin <laughs> opener there, Nick. Hey, but he, he, used, he, used, he used Ethan Wyatt. I mean, a lot of the uh, prevention of spinning off was by just leaning on the car. I mean, this is fantastic driving from Watts. He really is a master of these southern circuits. But he's in for the whole season, isn't he? So we're going to see him yeah. at the northern circuits as well. Well, we have a chat to him in the paddock show, so at lunchtime, um, and hopefully we'll have enough, enough lunchtime to show you our paddock walk, uh, we do talk to Jensen about that, and uh, he is in for the full season. He's after a championship. And I tell you what, that drive up from near the back of the grid here for these mixed grid heats, into second place now. Now, Kieran Gifford is way ahead of him. He got almost three seconds with coming up to 30 seconds remaining Gifford just coming out the final turn now and heading across the line there'll be just on 26 25 seconds on the clock the gap to Watts is 2.6 so I think that's how it's going to remain Nick with Jensen Watts now in second too far back with two more laps remaining yep Watts is going to sit there again taking, taking the hat full of points from that lower grid start position We've had plenty of action beyond that. Beautiful uh, isolated shot of him there. <laughs> there we go. So we have got the one lap to go board being shown to Kieran Gifford as he crosses the line there. The chasing Jensen Watts has closed the gap to 2.4. He's only a couple of tenths a lap quicker. Let's follow the leader just ahead of that one there. That's him there. Good, good work, Matt. That's Kieran Gifford, who took the oil plate last year. He'll be trying to keep that oil plate moniker when we go to Rower in July. Plenty of plenty of racing to go before then. So we're going to see this Kieran Gifford cart with those colours and that number plate for a time yet. So heat number two for senior road tax goes to Gifford. What's an absolutely outstanding drive through traffic to get that second place. Ethan Wyatt, a strong third from him. Uh, other strong drives, of course, from pretty much everybody down the field. George Young fourth, Ryan Shepard fifth, Matthew Lambert sixth, Lewis Berry seventh, Samuel Wyatt, the second of the Wyatt brothers, up the order as well. That's a great drive from Sam, who got up from way down the grid and managed to get up to eighth and in the, to the top ten. Finley Underwood, Nathan Jensen. Nathan... Ella will be delighted to have Nathan with a top 10 finish there in his first heat of the day. And then just outside the top 10, Jamie Burt, Billy Edgecombe, Arthur Thacker, Elliot Barrel, Ashton French, Archie Carter, Liam Deedman, Michael Goodburn, Jason Bear, who is our first master and th oh, a first master. And only master in 162s. It's not an old man's sport, is it? Because normally, when you've got old, you've got fat, so you're in 177. Well, you're not necessarily <laughs> fat, Nick. You get big. I'd like to point out that you said well done to Nathan. Ella, Ella Haynes is obviously heavy more invested. Uh, Nathan in top 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ella was ahead of me, wasn't she? Yeah, Holly, let's go Nathan. Hang on, there's another girl there. Hang on. Let's go Nathan. So who's Holly, uh, Ella? Let's not, let's not get into that one. Oh, okay. um, it might be his sister, let's hope for. Or someone who vaguely knows him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think really we should try and start a relationship beef on the radio. Radio? On the, on the, on the, on the, on the feed, you know. He's got a lot of He's got a lot of, he's got uh, a lot of fan. fans. He's got a lot of fans there. And keep... keep Stay with us all day, everybody, whoever you are, Ella, Holly, um, Gabriel Esposito, another Nathan Jensen fan. As we get ready then for our next heat, which will be for our heavier senior road tax class, the 177s. I am absolutely delighted to uh, see... I have an, an update from our cameraman. Go ahead. Cameraman. Uh, Matt Guppy tells me he has very cold hands. It's very chilly. I'm not sure that, that that could be a general thing, couldn't it? It could be a circulation issue. You know, it might be not really just now. It could be I've got cold hands generally. <laughs> or you, not necessarily now. It's yeah. just a general state. Holly's his sister. We're fine. We're All fine. Right, Holly's okay, his sister. Fine. We're, this, we're that's we're, yeah, that's good. We're that's excellent news. Because, you know, we, we, so the one thing, we, we want everyone to have a lovely time. I mean, we don't want to start people <laughs> getting vicious attacks, going, what are you doing over there? Who is and, this Holly? And, and for any competitors who are watching this back over the course of next week, 
if you have got more than one girlfriend, <laughs> tell them to stay off YouTube. <laughs> Hang on, wait a second, that's not very modern. If you have got one more person of a relationship interest. Yes, if you have got, yes, of yes. course, of course. Because it could be anything. Yes, yes. Man, woman, woman yes. furry, yes. who knows? Uh, who knows, yes. Um... One seven seven's out next, Nick. Quickly, Jim Finley. Oh, hang on, so this, is, this is getting on now. Oh, oh, right, okay. right. So on. we have Finley Colin, who's his best friend since nursery. Oh, that's sweet, Finley. And then right, Rhys Cedric, he's his cousin. So this has become very much the, 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 the Nathan family. Do, do you not think you guys should actually get together like yeah. uh, like of an evening and play games rather than just to converse? I've got a better idea. Get Don't together me. and have a have a karting live day. Yes, but in front I, of the TV. no, because I prefer them all to watch individually. All <laughs> ah, right, of course. Yes. Not the yeah, more than one hit. Yes. Okay. So later on in the Nathan Jensen show, yes. we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> be you, we'll be giving the odd mention to other competitors. Are there any, are there any other competitors? I don't know. Not in their world. What, what, you, what anyone listening is finding out is that it's the easiest way to influence is just write it down on YouTube and we'll just go, yeah, sure, yeah, he's the best ever. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, go with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Get, gets, yeah. If you've got any sponsors, let us know that they are as well. Get their uh, marketing value. Yes, and obviously um, we are we are absolutely prepared to mention you for money as well. Do you want Do you <laughs> want me to have a look at the grid from one seven sevens coming next? <sighs> Go on then. I have got to say I am delighted to see Stephen Mottram on the pole position here. Now Stephen is a lad down from Sunderland, a Sunderland lad like me. Um, he st- uh, been racing at his local track at Warden Law, and Stephen is the sort of lad who was. Who was retrieving tyres from the, the scoops <laughs> and the bins after a British Championship round and then using them quite effectively in the club rounds up at Warden Law. And, and that, I like that. I like that savviness of where, where to go karting. Uh, Stephen here, he'd be delighted with the two sets per season rule that we have. And uh, a big welcome to Stephen Mottram. He's going to start his Junction 6 NKC season in fine style, off the pole position, with 31 carts, or 30 carts behind him with a 31-card field. Uh, he's starting with the first of our masters, Daniel Hammett, alongside him. Uh, Dan Milner and Paul Morant. Hello, Paul. Welcome to uh, 2024 season. And hello, Helen. What have you got? Oh, the, yeah, uh, where's our yeah. chicken? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Is, is well, not our chicken, their chicken, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not expecting to get any of the chicken. Well, Helen, as, as we know, tends not to make Sunday dinner. She goes to the pool. Yeah, the, the whole thing was she was made, she was talking about something dinner, but it was actually prepared by the local fox and hounds. Is she now Helen Mor- Moran? Oh, I don't know. Did, Good did point. They Have they? Have they? Oh. If not, why not? Come on, Helen. Why is this turning into like a relationship show? This is like more like loose women than than, uh, than karting. <laughs> uh, third row is Adrian Smith and Steve Stewart. Fourth row is Ollie Bailey and Harrison Crook. Sean Rudge and Tim Darlow is, are on row five. Ollie Hancock. Hello, Ollie. Josh Constable alongside on row six. Row seven is Reese Llewellyn and Scott Clay. Always a championship contender, Scott. Uh, Simon Wheeler and Lawrence Hilton. Marty Gilfillan and Lewis Crocker. Then we've got Robert Simpson, Colin Davis, Oliver Moss, Nathan Wells, George Willis, Marcus, Basley, Neil Hemming, Josh Bass, Tonino Machichi, uh, Ryan Taylor Truman, Michael Mallett, Oliver Smith and James O'Keefe. And we are about ready to have them come out of the final turn. We've got a straggler. We may not indeed this, delay they the start. Got we have got incredibly so slow. slow. Look at them go. Coming very slow. They're nipping the fuel pipe there, you know, so the engines don't, don't oil and choke. We're about to get going. That is a massively slow pace to get to the acceleration line. I'm sure We're going to have go, people they? bogging down considerably there as we get them underway into Billy's oh, line. We've got a spinner all, there. That's gone out to 55 has gone initially, and that was Steve, Steve Stewart. Stewart. He's taken a few with him. And that was purely to do with brakes, I think, Nick. Cold yeah, tires. cold tires, cold. And they're they, they obviously losing temperature with that very, very slow ride in. So yeah, just, he just, just locked get, up just there. Just he, he didn't oh. want to hit the cart in front, did he? He didn't mm. want to get a nose. And he's managed to do, avoid that, but it has lost him a number of positions and a couple others as well. So they're going to come across the line. To get, this, the taps I've, are so I've, short. I've done that myself. I've done We've that all myself. done that. Just over. I've, never, I've, I've seen my... my Racing in the rain at Butmore Park story one day, and if it's the lead there, sweeping by the, it's the, the sixth car. Harrison took the lead on the line, so he's yeah. kind of way up in that first lap. Hamnet is second, Moran is third, Rudge is fourth, Holly Hancock fifth, and then Tim Darlow. And it's already instantaneously a break at the front by Crook. Uh, the next three are coming round the hairpin pretty much together. Actually, they're just splitting out just a bit of a lead there for that orange and yellow machine, which I think's Hamnet. I don't think they've changed positions around that. No, it's Moran is in the orange and yellow cart. And then, again, as they just start to gap each other, probably before the start of a, a big battle, don't forget these tyres aren't up to temperature or pressure yet, so they're all kind of perhaps babying a little bit, and they don't want to actually lean them too much in the situation. 
got to use them in three meetings, Joe. Yeah, so you have got to have at the back of your mind a little bit of tyre management ethos going on whilst the carts go around. Harry Wainwright's the current 177 champion from 2023. Harry has gone off to study at college to become a race mechanic and get a proper job in motorsport. If there is such a thing, good luck to you, Harry, in that endeavour. I'm sure we'll see you karting uh, again sometime in the future after you've completed your studies and qualified and, and find, find yourself with some sort of endurance team at Le Mans. Might even see you on the pit lane. Who no, knows? Good thing. Uh, here they come then. Three laps completed. Crook, Moran, Hammett, Sean Rudgeon, fourth, Holly Hancock, fifth, Tim Darlow, Reese Llewellyn, Dan Milner, Lawrence Hilton, Scott Clee, tenth. This is the third and fourth battle. It's about becoming the fourth and third as Sean Raj pops out. To stick. Yep, he has. So the 40 now gets past the 86. So the blue and white cart scoops up into what will be a podium position. If this is a final, but it's a heat. So it's just more points. And it looks actually like that uh, Hamnet is the little bit slow because he's now very quickly. Ollie Hancock's driven up onto the back of him. And they go now into Billy's blind. So it's the kind of the yellowy and white cart with the red helmet. That is Hamnet. He's got Ollie Hancock right behind him. And got into 51. He's going to pop out. Ollie down the inside, Ollie Hancock, who we uh, are more familiar with in car racing, you and I, Nick. He's yeah. done some sports car racing. He's done some historic racing in various things, even uh, historic Formula One, I remember seeing Ollie. Yeah, he's the only person who turns around and says, karting so cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but as uh, perhaps a little bit more intense, I think he, he compared um, these Rotax Max karts very similar to the characteristics of a put a 1980s 1970s formula one car the power to rate ratio r is sort of makes it that uh we're just about a half a minute off half distance and is that reese llewellyn in that he's now 22 car the 22 yeah he's come through yes that, yeah, now, that I'm yellow a bit, i'm a bit disappointed in reese because he used to can you remember reese was always in full black Oh, black yeah. Black cart, black livery. Man he's with, from black doing a full Johnny Cash. He's with Howarth Racing, and I think the flamboyant... Oh, Phil's made him put, Phil, Phil put some... Yeah, he's made yeah. him put some pink yeah, on. Yeah, fair he's enough. Made, he's made him put some uh, some colour to not just his cart. That's the yellow and black cart that we're seeing. But he's also got yellow and orange flashes on his shoulders there. He used to be the Dark Knight, didn't oh, he, did Reese? Howarth, such a show off. It even goes to the rest of his team, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's rubbing off. Rubbing <laughs> off on the Dark Knight, Reese the one who's making his way past sick, the number yeah, eight Dan, Daniel Hammett. Yeah, he's in fifth now. Uh, there's a gap to fourth, though. One, two, one is away. So Harrison Cook is absolutely away. Second and third are getting a little bit closer. Getting a little bit closer. So that's Roger Moran. Thank you, Eve. Um, <laughs> 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 he's the number 40 coming back at him Sean Rudge Reese Llewellyn no that's not Reese Llewellyn that's Sean Rudge getting by the number 77 yeah. of Paul Moran for second place yeah second and third change well caught yeah. there by the, uh, the camera team we were talking about something else in time they're actually doing their jobs um, <laughs> yeah now look at him pulling away wow he's got the pass real Moran. pace yeah Moran the first of the masters here now in third as they cross the line we're inside the second half of this first heat with 177. Well, actually, it's the second heat. We had the first heat yesterday afternoon to get that out of the way. So points accruing steadily, not just for championship, though. This is going to be sorting the grids for our finals, B final and A final, I believe, for this class coming up later. Yeah, there's, well there's, lunch, there's, B, there's B and A finals for senior and 177. There's a, there's a C final for junior and just a one-off for TKMs. All 23 of them will race against each other in that order every single time. So as they sprint down with about two and a half minutes to go, this is the battle involving the 51s. This yeah, is Hancock again looking to get for third against Moran. It's Moran, Paul dropping back towards Ollie Hancock. Uh, Sean Rudge got ahead of him. That's the blue cart that mm. you'll just see there, the blue and white cart. Now we're looking at the orange, orange and yellow and with a blue flash there. And then behind them, Ollie Hancock with the black overalls and the sort of silver and blue helmet there, just chasing him down. He's and lost a bit of that. He, he lost a bit of that lap. It's, it's yes. kind of a settling down. I think Ollie's going to have a challenge there. I think he's making ground towards the rear bumper there. Paul Moran's cart showing the 
my feeling is that Hancock's got better drive, but I think that uh, Moran's got better top speed. We're going to see that, aren't we? So through the corners here, we've got Ollie Hancock on the white-nosed cart there, moving on to the rear bumper of the orange and yellow and blue cart there. And now, this is where we see Paul Moran's motor really coming into play. As he blasts across the line, look at that, he does gap it a well, slightly. No, he's you know only that. coming back, he's got the slipstream. Has a look down the inside, not quite enough momentum there. No, but he did drive. have a slipstream, Yeah, it was a good drive on Moran, though, because Moran, we've seen a lot of the, the other drivers, I think perhaps with the extra weight means they can perhaps position the carts better, but they, they oh, try and take tight. That's too late anyway, because Honkett's got him. Yeah, so, that was momentum out of the S's there. It's been a bit of a textbook move here at Clear Pigeon. What's Come interesting, up. sorry Joe, what's interesting is it, it how they slow each other up. We've now got, they've been joined by uh, yes. Reese Truman and Scott Clee, who were away away before this battle started. I think that's Ryan Taylor Truman who is in that orange and white car. There's yeah. Reese Llewellyn past Paul Moran. I'm not sure what happened there to Paul. Seemed to uh, oh, pop down, yes. Yeah, and there's a little problem there, he's lost two more places as well. Taylor Truman through as well. Um, it, it seemed to just lose power there, didn't he? Yeah. I'm not sure if he's got a problem. So Paul Moran on the yellow and orange I, car. I think, I think he's got his tyre pressures wrong. Because oh, he, he started so well and now he's dropping back. I think, it's, I think it could be right. It could be he's got a little bit of an engine issue. But I, my feeling is the way he's just kind of gone off as the race has well, gone it, on, he's it, got his tyres wrong. It was just where it happened, mm. Nick. Uh, right well, I think that was a drive street. issue. He's got poor drive. Yeah. That, now, that's Reese Llewellyn there in the black and yellow, uh, with the black and yellow car. Yeah. And he's got Ryan Taylor Truman absolutely all over the back of him. Just ahead of them there in the in the white livery cart is Ollie Hancock. That's for third. So that's third, fourth, and fifth that we're looking at there. And Llewellyn having to place the cart a little bit defensively in the middle of the track there into the hand hairpin. He's right on the inside of the horseshoe. He's not. He's having to defend. That's a very fast right hander there at Button, an equally fast right hander. It's faster than you think. This one. Top mm. bend is its name. And here we go then across the line. And it'll be the one lap to go ball that these drivers will see down the inside. Oh, and can he back. hold it? No, Llewellyn's switch back. going to oh. do the switch back <laughs> into the S's. How many times have we seen that? Yeah, quite a lot. And it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, you, know, you, you throw it up the inside and you kind of hope to high heaven it's going to hold. And if it doesn't, you just, that's it. It's gone again. It's gone the wrong way. We've got three cards have pulled off, actually. Um, there's been a big incident. Uh, everyone's fine at the hairpin. We've lost four cards. Uh, so something's happened there. Uh, in the back of the pack there wasn't scrapping in the midfield but I'm sure we'll start seeing who the carts are going to drop back it looks like it's Mackie, Crocker and Mottram and Davis but that was fine out as they come across the line and that's it I think isn't it that's the finish yes Cook yeah, wins yeah. Rush Possibly. second uh, Hancock third we're in fourth Ryan Taylor in fifth Scott Clee fifth and then uh, sixth yeah. and Paul Moran seventh but yeah so then we've got a, a big instant penultimate lap just outside of that top ten as, uh, just behind Paul Moran Robert Simpson Daniel Hammett and then 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th we had Tim Darlow, Dan Milner, Oliver Moss, Lawrence Hilton, Marcus Basley. This will be another look at that uh, failed overtaking attempt, the over and under. Just didn't have enough grip to hold it and just drifted out wide through Billy's blind. Yeah, that's a textbook move here at um, Clear Pigeon. Uh, another one, another of our junior heats coming up next. Uh, we've got 32, a 32 card grid for you. Where did Stephen finish, by the way? Stephen who? Stephen Mottram. Uh, can't see him. Oh, he finished off track, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, one, yeah the, one, of who, who, one of the four who, who went away. So a bit of a gap while they try and clear up the whatever happened at that hairpin. Whatever yes. Whatever happened at the hairpin. Whatever happened at the hairpin. What happened at the hairpin? So, Junior Rotax, um, we've, we ha we've had a lot of drivers from 2023s. Junction 6 NKC Championship have gotten too old for junior road tax and have Nightmare. moved into seniors, Nightmare. which has bolstered the senior grid and have, has given it quite a quality to it. Uh, the more of that, of course, uh, when we get them out on track. But right now, the junior road tax numbers are there to be, or the junior road tax honours are there for the taking. Tom Holden and Jasmine Taylor are back. They finished fifth and sixth in 2023. Uh, Lingen Bevan, who you remember as, uh, is quite a name on the Isle of Man at Isle of Man Karting and it, he's here in the uh, in the Junior Max category um, we will chat to Sonny Morgan who was our vice champion from Mini Max last year there's right. no Mini Max class here uh, this year for, for reasons uh, that Mini Max class doesn't exist anymore it was kind of the last 
the last bastion of Minimax in the NKC last year. Uh, the Minimax champion, Sebastian Corping, has gone off and he's running... <coughs> excuse me. He's running in IPKC, isn't he? Being run by his dad, Graham. So, yeah. Not able to defend uh, Not that. choosing. Or, or he's not, able. Not, not, not choosing, able yeah. to, to continue in the NKC in juniors. He's, he's gone off and running in the uh, in the IPKC. Um, Danny May Reed is our, or will be our pole position driver when they get released. Amy Peacock alongside. Uh, second row of the grid is Alexander Stevanov with Harvey Williams alongside. Do you want me to do this? Because you've, 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 you've got a cough, throat, yes. yes. So it's uh, Danny May Reed in pole and Amy Peacock who is uh, showing that front row. And it's Alexander Stefanov and Harvey Williams on row two. Ryan Sayers and uh, Tom Holden on row three. Harvey Lee, there's, there's an awful lot of hyphens these days, isn't it? Harvey Lee, he's half his first name for it. It's Harvey Lee Witteridge and uh, Jamie Salter on four. Rafi Salentano and Sonny Morgan on five. Oliver Grundy and Charles Effergrave on six. Lucy Lovell and Will Swirls on seven. Charlie Hume, Sam Gomez Gomez in eight. Row 9 is Jacob Hobbs and Frankie Theobald. Row 10 is Caden Welch and Ethan Barrow. Row 11, Joshua Withcombe and Jensen Hookey. Row 12, Connor Tubby and Ben Adrian. Thanks for that, Ben Adrian. <laughs> Row 13, Zach Burke and Archie Hardiman. Row 14, Harris Roberts and Sally Ashton. Row 15, Kieran Cohen, Ferguson and Freddie Warlock. And row 16, it's Izzy Loughton and Charlie Thompson. And Joe Bradley, come back with your phlegm, please. Uh, right, I'm back. <laughs> um, I've got to say that the uh, you're, the like, car- that. you're like that. You're car- like, uh, you I'm remember, like that. Flash show. Do you remember? I'm like the no, flash show. Old that. Do you remember Lampwick from Dis- Dick Emery? Uh, the Dick Emery show. Lamp- I do remember the, yeah. the gardening. I know guy we're now doing these. The ref- we're doing these references and, yeah, like you're, you're, from the 90s. The coffin guy from the when, 90s. When well, we got these, the 70s reference from, that, from, from well, these competitors. Were born. Weren't, weren't yeah. even born. So I'm loving the liveries on the carts on the front row of the grid here. Danny May Red in the bright orange cart, but then Amy Peacock's. Look at the red and black livery of the number 17. I'm a big fan of that. Well done, Amy. I'm liking that livery. Here we go, then. We're going to go racing. And that looks absolute chaos (laughs) in the mid-pack as they get down towards Billy's Blind. And are we going to make it through? through? They are. They are. Well, look at that. Well well done, kids. Like I said, we're the mid, and it's a sweet. Oh no, there's an instant, though, coming out into the S's. It's in the middle pack, and everyone's got going again, I think. I think 53 oh, might... 33, was it? It was 50... Jensen Hookie. Jensen It could be Charlie Hume. It's 53 or 33. We'll find out what's going to be coming in a minute. Cracking battle at the front, Nick. The number 17, Amy Peacock there, under immense amount of pressure from Harvey Williams. And Harvey squeezed his way through he, down the out. inside. Yep. And who's coming through with him? I think that's uh, Danny Mir Reid. It's not all over, though. No, it's not. No, it's Tom Holden. Harvey Williams, Amy Peacock, Ooh. Tom Holden. Danny Mir Reid. Got a body check there, didn't she? So they are they obviously with the same team. Those two, they're in the same livery, eighty-seven and seventeen. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be a bit, of, a bit of a conversation, I think, about that corner. Perhaps not. Perhaps that's, that's, what, that's just what you do. Um, are they on the same livery? No, no they're just very, different. they're just similar. They're very different. There's yes. the pure uh, orangey red, sixty-eight and fourth place of Danny May Reed. So the first four. So again, they're going into groups of two. They're going to be at Noah's Ark here in two by two. Williams and Peacock, and then uh, Williams and Holder, and then Peacock and Danny May Reed. Yeah, Tom Holden looking very racy on the rear end. Oh, and it's sliding wide there. Yeah, that's. And I'm not sure what happened there. Peacock done that a couple of, of times. Is it, is, it, is it? As they make their way out of Hans Hairpin, down towards the horseshoe. That's the leader. I'm not sure where the peacocks are kind of just, just throwing it in a little bit too fast in the bottom corner there. Yes, I think so. I think it was more of a slide wide there. And they come out of the top end there oh, and man. sliding very wide again. Holden, is it? Sliding wide again for Tom Holden. And I'm not sure he hung on, hung on to that no. lead. That's on that. Harvey Williams through and Emmy Peacock trying to get through as well. He's hung on to the lead though. The faster line around the outside. No, he's the second. No, no, no. I'm not about the leader, Tom Holden. Yeah, Holden's not the lead anymore. The 200 took the lead. Oh, no. But he's and then it's changed again. Back. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it's changed again. In fact, every time I look at the timing screen, yeah, let's, not, it's a let's, just, let's just look at the screen, shall we? It's probably yeah. easier. Yeah. So, as you say, it's Holden. And now back into second place, got Amy Peacock. And down to third has gone Harvey Williams. So wow. Harvey been Williams a lot of, down to third. A lot of scruffling he, about on this one. And actually, Danny Murray's been in fourth through all of this, just kind of watching what's going on. 
Very tight. A lot of front end on that uh, Holden car, isn't there? Yeah, there was. I was looking at that thinking ooh, a little bit of a variation of opinion on line through to, uh, Billy's blind. Here they come into the hands hairpin. Heavy braking. A little bit of a pass there for fifth for Harvey Lee Whitridge. I think that might have been Sonny Morgan on the number 20 coming through. I think it was. But at the lead of this race so far, Tom Holden, it is hanging on to that lead grimly from Amy Peacock, who's right on the bumper out of top end. Down across the line, Amy will get a bit of a slipstream. Whether she can benefit from that into the braking area for Billy's blind, no. They're absolutely matched through there, aren't they? Yeah, it's a superb race. And don't forget, this is the best the carts are going to feel till the first heat at Wilton Mill for That's the start right. of the Northern Trophy. Because this right. is, they've got the freshest tyres, they've got them up to temperature, they've taken off the uh, releasing agent, and uh, they now can enjoy the, uh, the, the joy of um, a brand new, brand set. new set of tyres, yeah. Yeah, they've been scrubbed in, obviously, in morning practice. Here they come, then, out of top end again. We're not even at half distance, Nick, so there's plenty of time. I think they're playing a bit of a waiting game here. Peacock quite happy to sit in the rear, on the rear bumper of Tom Holden. And there she, did, did not at all, squeezing down the inside. They're Ooh, side by side woof. into the S's. They have to sort themselves out before the left-hander. And they're side by side again into the hand hairpin. Yep. I'm not sure which car was no. on the inside. It was Holden. Yeah. Holden on the Peacock inside line. second. Now, interesting, they're able to do this and still not get too much. Harvey Williams, isn't, I think if they weren't scrapping, they'd be gapping Harvey really easily. And yeah, that's what's, that's, what's, yeah, that's what's keeping Williams in, in touch. These two are actually a lot quicker than the, the, than the field at the moment because the, the others aren't, aren't gaining from this scrapping. And the scrapping's costing him time. Now, Peacock this time around just watches Holden as he takes his slightly tighter than wider line through Billy's blind now through the S's and up into the hairpin no real move possible here she's thinking about it and no not doing it. just kind of warned him slightly hang on mate I might be doing that well she's just having a look she, she needs oh and there's the move oh no, no, no she's done exactly the same as she did the hairpin she's just you know what if the leader's cart had mirrors his mirrors would be <laughs> full of Amy Peacock however that's not going to work unless he's looking over his shoulder here okay. they come then she's bound to get the slipstream here she's really tucked under his rear bumper can she make it a yeah, benefit? Yes, she can. Be, can she hold it on? It's going to slide no, wide over and under. The Holden's coming through on the inside. It's, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's tricky with the car. With the car, with the extra braking of the front wheels, you could park it in the corner and potentially block past. But I think you just haven't got the ability with the rear wheel only braking on the car to, to put the car in that sort of position as you, as you tighten up the corners. Well, you're just carrying momentum. on. If you brake later, you're carrying so much momentum, you can't keep the car from sliding out and, and opening up the door. And if you see somebody coming down your inside into Billy's blind, you let them go. You know they're going to go wide, and then you know what you're going to do. You're going to cut back and do the switchback. And once again, we're back to where we were. Tom Holden from Amy Peacock. Now, who's that in third place? Sonny Morgan from Sonny Wales wow. has come through the pack and is now in second place. We saw how quick Sonny can be in the Minimax class last year. Is Amy Peacock. She's had enough of following Tom Holden. And has gone through and into the lead before we get the buttons. And will lead out of top bend and across the line to complete what will be 10 laps and two minutes to go. Yeah, great move there. there. Morgan in the rainbow-coloured machine. He's, 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 he's paid for every single colour for the front of that card in third place. So Sonny, he's the one who's managed to break through. Interesting that the 200 Williams now has, has dropped back to, to fourth. And these cards actually are able to kind of gain a little bit on, the, on, the, on each other. Now, uh, Sonny Morgan's been looked after uh, for this season by Philip Howarth and Howarth Racing. And Howarth, <laughs> Phil, has took him under his wing. And taught I'm him sure, all he knows. I'm not sure you want to be under <laughs> Phil's wing. Uh, he's not old enough to be tucked out for a night out, though, so he's safe. Uh, but he's learned a lot. Sonny was telling us, you'll see that in the paddock show. We've got a four-card battle, Nick. A yeah. four-card battle now for the lead. A minute and 20 to go. So about three. Oh, no, that's straight away there. That's Withcombe. That's Withcombe there. Getting past Morgan. I think Morgan's probably surprised, but actually, with him to sweep round, carry some momentum to the blind. And four of them go through. So, Amy Peacock, having followed Tom Holden, she's gotten by, uh, but she hasn't pulled away. Holden is still there on, his bu on her bumper, and now we've got Joshua Withcom, who's now on the bumper of Tom Holden. Sonny Morgan's just dropped off a little. Oh, look at that. Looks to the left, looks to the right. Not enough momentum and speed and pace to get by. I think we're going to see two more laps here. So plenty of time. Now Sonny Morgan's recovered a little bit. He's got his composure, having been overtaken by Withcombe. I think he took him by surprise a little bit there. Yeah, definitely did. I think he, he, it was yeah, he wasn't more surprised than we that. were that he was there. Yeah. I think because he, he closed the gap to Holden and Peacock. 
We're going to have Withcom challenging. They're three. They're absolutely together, bumper to bumper, out of top end. Four carts across the line, so close you could pitch a tent over them. That one was for Matt Hunter there. Yeah, he, he loves that. that one. Does he? Yeah, into the Billy's blind, and it'll be the penultimate time as we'll get the one lap to go. Board Holden coming back at Peacock and almost coming together. They sort themselves out, but that's going to disadvantage them towards the hand hairpin. Silhouetted against the bright sunshine here at Clear Pigeon as they come into and who's that that sneaked up and into the lead and ahead of both of them wow. it's Joshua Withcombe who now takes the lead Peacock in second Holden third Sonny Morgan keeping a watching brief there his first season in junior road tax and he's learning a lot he's learning a lot about racecraft in these faster carts as Withcombe already pulling two carts gaps Peacock Holden down the inside oh. again, once again, side by side. Sonny Morgan, can he take advantage of that towards the hands hairpin? He looks down the inside, it's defended well. Holden held him off. Peacock in second now with Holden third. Sonny Morgan fourth. Goodbye, Joshua Withcombe. He's gone. He's left these three behind for dead. And he's going to be taking the checkered flag and taking a very fine heat wing. Here he comes then. The heat win to Joshua Withcombe. That was a great, fantastic great run from young Josh there. Amy Peacock, equally great battling there from Amy Peacock. Tom Holden, congratulations, round of applause to all of those drivers in that top four battle. I mean, round of applause to everybody in the field. Unfortunately, we're, we, we, we can't cover everyone. I wish we could. I wish there was a way of, of showing everybody what was happening down that field because there was some absolutely fabulous racing going on all the way down that 32 cart field um, so just to get catch our breath now and uh, give you a rundown of uh, at least the top 20 which I've got on my screen Whit Withcombe takes the win Amy Peacock second Tom Holden third Sonny Morgan takes fourth Harvey Williams fifth then we've got Will Swales Danny May Reed Harvey Lee Winteridge uh, Zach Burke Freddie Warlock rounds off the top 10 just outside the top 10 Ben Adrian Jacob Hobbs Ryan Sears, Rafi Salentano, Jensen Hookey, Samuel Aston, Freddie Theobald, Charlie F. Grave, uh, Oliver Grundy, and it's Archie Hardiman who rounds off the top 20. The rest of the drivers and how they finished uh, are there on the screen still. Uh, we lost Lucy Lovell on lap seven. Not quite sure what happened to Lucy, being run here by her dad. And Harris Roberts we lost on lap 10. We lost Caden Welsh as well. On lap 11. So that is uh, the heat four, the fourth of our junior road tax heats. Well, actually, it's the third because we've delayed a, a heat that will take place. More of that later. Uh, right now, we are preparing for our next, the third heat for the senior road tax class. 60 plus just over 60 entries for this category. It's the 162 kilogram category. Category. What do we mean by 177, 162? Were you here chunky. chat about that? We mean chunky. <laughs> mean the bigger, taller guys yes. and girls. The people, are, the people are shop at Giacomo. <laughs> it's not that good, that bad. Not that that's bad, of course, before just, we get into trouble. Now. Have, we got any, uh, have we got any comms coming through? Uh, DH racing for the good luck Louis Reason, senior road tax. Good luck, bud. What, why, why is Zach Bolton there? Get up Harrison, he says. Yes, but why is he there and not here? Because he wants to go to Super 1 where there's 12 people rather than here with the 70. Yeah, and he did get a podium he at won, first. Did, yeah. I think he won, didn't he? I, I'm sure he got a podium. Did well. Yeah, did well. Well done, Zach, for your Super 1 success. However, we miss you dearly here at the Junction 6 NKC. But I have heard rumours that LRG are coming back for the Northern-based rounds. So it should be. Um, we, we which need, will be good. We need the Zach Bolton fan club, really, don't we? Because they're the, uh, the the highlight of it. Well, actually, no. Well, no, no, we don't no, need them we, anymore. No, now we've got the Nathan Jensen yeah, fan we've got club. The Nathan Jensen yeah, fan so club. Zach Bolton fan club. You're being out fan club by the Nathan Jensen fan club. Absolutely. So that's the fan club. And you know why that is, Zach Bolton? Because you're not here. Not here. We are watching. Hi, Zach. But nice <laughs> to have you watching, Zach. Yes. Watch some real racing. What, why are we. Oh, Paul, sorry. Paul's given us a lovely sorry, replay. I thought you were playing a replay of a child jumping up and down. <laughs> I got around the wrong way there because I only saw the, the child jumping up and the replay. Why did we play the child jumping up and down? Right, Senior Road Tax 162s. What I was about to tell you before Nick interrupted me 162 stands for the weight category. Uh, 162 kilograms, maximum weight for these carts and drivers. 177 Road Tax category. Oh, we've got cold tyres coming into play on this rolling lap. Mm. There's Bruce. That's Bruce, our clerk of the course, shaking his head in despondency. Yeah. Oh really? We had a spinner there coming out. Easily done, Paul. Done it myself. Brand new tyres. Come out the collecting area. 
pointing the wrong way. Not very clever. No. Jeremy Hawthorne is on the pole position from James Cutting alongside. Second row is Kel Gray and Luke Evans. Ethan Lomax and George Spilsbury are next. Then we've got Harry Pease and Sam Cresswell. Paula Nunez Aranda. Jack Maidment. Gregory Akers. Rufus Flan are on row six. Row seven is Joshua Delacarta and Zach Fletcher. Mason Perrin, our junior champion. Mason Perrin on row eight with Matthew Griffin. Now, Mason would be carrying the number one in junior road acts. However, he got too old and has had to move on to seniors. Oh, no. So that's a shame. Uh, Bobby Rosier, our British, uh, British, our, our reigning champion, is just behind him on row eight, on row nine. As all of our rows get going, we've got Ooh. consternation there. That's a bit of stunt driving there Who's from that? the number 60 30, of Kelgrave. Is it number it? 30? I could be or wrong. is it 60? It could be either. It's our old eyes yeah. now. Oh, he's, oh he's, decided to go, he's decided to go grass tracking. Well, there's no grass there. Uh, uh, but you know what? We've 60, all done yeah. that. We've all done that. Was it 50? Was it Sam Craswell? It was, it was definitely a zero and a number. <laughs> right. Well, it's the black and gold livery cart, which I'm a, a, a big fan of as well. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, we've got a three-card battle developing, a four-card battle developing, a five-card battle. No, hang on. Everybody's I, battling for the front. Are you just learned to count? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Sweeping through underneath our commentary box, and they're going to fly into Billy's blind. This the whole field goes by, and into the lead, or in the lead, is the one three two of Ethan Lomax, and then it's uh, Luke Evans in second, and then it's Jack Maidman third, and Paolo Nunes is, is still in fourth. So it's the uh, it's a cart that's just given up, uh, just pulled off by the side, and he's kind of parked it not quite off the track enough. Uh, as they go in the infield, it's the right hand side of the shot now, but so a nice little break now by Lomax. He comes round the top of well, top of top bend actually, and then well, the, you've got the blue cart in second, and then third. I'm, I think that's going to be. It is still Evan from Maidman. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, field down the order in tenth place. Philip Howarth on the 101. He won the 177 class two years ago. Then he lost a bit of weight and dropped into the 162s for 2023. Here he is back, challenging for a championship. He had a bit of a mixed season, a bit of a character building season for Phil. He's come here with even more members in Farworth Racing's team. He wants even more responsibility, more drivers, more carts to prep. And it's great to have Haworth Racing a big part here at their home circuit, I believe. As they cross the line, then Lomax leads by eight tenths already. Luke Evans second. Jack Maidman, Nunes Aranda, Rufus Flan, Cresswell, Sam Cresswell that is, in sixth. Harry Pearson, Philip Haworth up to eight. Where's Bobby Rosier? He's still there trying to get by Gregory Akers for 10th place the number one driver Sam Cress was a fan it's uh, John Shelton saying good luck Sam number 50 it was number 30 about in Bramwell who went at grass tracking at the start by the it way it was 30 was it yeah so the blue cart in second place that's Luke Evans he's just trying to shake off the uh, attentions of Jack Maidman as they come across the start finish line into Billy's blind Maidman not quite near enough to make a move really big attempt to bite the curb there of the 24 cart Evans now through the S's. And they go up towards the hairpin. A little bit of a defensive line again. I think that'll probably work this time round. They get pulled out from here. It wasn't Martin Bramwell. Well, why does it say 30 Martin Bramwell on the side in the timing sheet then? It wasn't Martin Bramwell because he was, at the, he was on the third row of the grid or something. The yeah. spinner. It might have been 60, Kel Greer. There was 30? 50, Sam Cresswell. There was 30. 30's down there. Yeah, okay, I don't know. It's a mystery. If you can read numbers on a screen better than we can, uh, we have employment opportunities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a high benchmark. No, and basically, if your eyes are better than two old blokes <laughs> uh, staring into a monitor against the background of the sun, it's not yeah, very bright. It's the sun shining mm. on the screen. Yeah, that's, that's our right excuse. Little that's, battles a, there. that's a great battle for the front. Look at that. Everyone's in first second, coming out of the hand. Second. Oh, that's it's a second, second of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ethan Lomax has gone, hasn't he? Yes, look at this. Oh, oh that's a nudging. Phil, that's bit of nudge. Oh, Howarth giving someone a nudge. There's a surprise. Gold helmet, Phil. That's the first time you've said that. I've now, never, never seen Phil do anything apart from uh, completely, completely he, clean overtakes. Elbows out. He's gotten by two carts there. Chasing after the number 24 of Luke Evans and Rufus Flan. This is where the action is going to be for the next few laps. We're not even at half distance yet. And Phil Howarth has come through. Round the outside of Hans Hairpin. He uh, hasn't made it stick. Oh. He's going to get challenged going towards the horseshoe. Yeah. Great driving from Luke Evans and Rufus Flan. Not to be flustered at all by that. Through buttons now and off towards the final turn. Do you think as, as, as he comes up, they can all hear the Jaws music in their ears? <laughs> da, 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 yeah, the gold da, helmet. Da. Looking over your shoulder and seeing that gold helmet. It into Billy's blind. And look at that. There's a lot of 
Hargy bargy going on there. Mm. I'm not sure how they're going to come on. Oh, look at that. Phil Howarth comes out in second place. He just knew to just hang back a little bit, didn't he? Yeah. And then take the inside line. Everybody it's try very, as they might. Look at the gaggle of carts there. Is that mm. for fifth place? Yeah, there's not a lot of, ex of, of, ex of uh, you know, excuse for experience, that's for sure. You know, people just... Well, this is what... this. You know what? This is the sort of karting and motorsport that mixed grids give you yeah. because you get a massive diff difference in ability, experience, pace and it just brings them all together and you learn so much in racecraft you learn how to overtake but more importantly perhaps you learn how to be overtaken without disadvantaging yourself yeah. too greatly because that is an art form as well you know the guy behind you is much quicker you know, you've, got a, you've got a former champion coming behind you know he's coming through and there's the number one, the current champion there, the number one of Bobby Rosier, onto the tail of Luke Evans. We know how quick Luke can be. He's struggling, really, as Luke Evans to keep these carts behind him. And down the inside of Rosier has gone the number 35 of Braden Hill. We know how quick Braden can be as well. These two having many, many battles in the junior class. And there's Braden Hill ahead now of Bobby Rosier. Great move from Braden. So Lomax's lead is something like five seconds. I mean, fair to Howarth, he's, he's, he's broken away. And there's a pair of carts actually fighting for third and fourth, which is probably the, the, just in front of this selection of machines. So they're coming through underneath us now. That's the third and fourth battle between Maidman and Rufus Flan. Oh, and Flan goodness. gets up. Oh, he's never going to hold that in a million years. No. Never in a million years. <laughs> You've just got to give it a go, and hopefully you put off the cart that you're trying to do. Jack Maidman just stayed cool, though, didn't he? Mm. Just uh, hug the hug the line. There's the battle behind them, Nick. That's really raging massively. Just behind these two. That's still going on. Now they're on to the tail. Is that still Luke Evans? That is the cut. It is indeed. Brilliant driving from Luke. He's got Braden Hill. Now, Braden with Jib Tech. Just want to say happy birthday to Carl of Jib Tech. He's a, it's, his, it's a big one, this one. It's his 40th. I'm That's told quite that. Small, I'm, really, I'm, isn't I'm it? told that by uh, oh, some members two of his team. Oh, two lost by the blue cart there. In fact, three almost. That was, in the that, that was Braden Hill and Bobby Rosier. Yeah. He's carrying the number one because he won this season, won this class in 2023 by doing just what he's doing there and just making his way nicely up the field. And Braden Hill is broken free now. We'll see a change on the leaderboard as they come underneath us now. That's Phil Howarth in second. He's tapping his helmet to Jack Maidman and Rufus Flan, saying, let's go and catch the leader. That never That's happens. That's five right. seconds is the gap there, Nick. That's, they've got to catch the leader. And they're, and they're tapping the helmet. No one ever... I've never... I've been watching this kart racing very close for three years, and no one pays a blind bit of interest to this tapping of the helmet thing. It's like, oh, yeah, let's work together with you in front. No, oh, no. That's right. Let's work Absolutely. together with me in front. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's exactly how it works. And there, there we're seeing it. A little bit of movement change as the 92 of Theo Roderick, Frederick gets involved. The 92 ahead of Bobby Rosier this time. So, Frederick now pulling away, it seems, as we go back to the battle for second, third and fourth. These three become a little bit spaced out. I'm not sure we're going to see any movement there as we continue on. It's going to be the one lap to go board next time by for Ethan Lomax. That's where the action is, just behind these three. It's quite a big gap between them and yeah. the next set come through now and it's a, a kind of a multicoloured shot as they sweep by the well, leading one. We're going to stay with this one into the last lap because I think, well, as I say that, oh. they seem to have settled down somewhat as well. There's a little bit of a side-by-side -side potential action there at the top two. There we go, sweeping into B's blind. Just easy. I think if you were ahead, I think they should have worked out now they can keep, they can keep the other car behind them by, by just going tight in and just not sliding out well look at how Braden Hill is defending there Frederick mm. has to stay right in his bumper there and then he exposes himself to the carts behind of Bobby Rosie and Mason Perrin we know how quick Mason is as well Mason our current junior champion moving up into seniors for the first time this year there's two champions two NKC champions there together on track but the checkered flag has flown and who's it going to be for that all important fifth place it's Braden Hill and Frederick but just ahead of them Ethan Lomax took the win by four seconds from a chasing Philip Howarth. Jack Maidman was third, Rufus Flan fourth, Braden Hill fifth, Theo Frederick uh, chasing him down all the way to the flag in sixth. Equally 
chasing Frederick down was Bobby Rosie and Mason Perrin behind in seven and eight. And then we had Luke Evans who hung on as long as he could for those places up into fourth. He ended up coming ninth. Uh, he should be happy with that considering the quality of the, uh, the, the field ahead of him. Sam Cresswell it was who rounded off the top ten and then just behind Sam. Tommy Lee Davis, Ben Ballou, Zach Fletcher, Aidan Pomeroy, uh, Paulo Nunez Aranda, Ben Harper, Louis Rees, Gregory Akers, Kel Greer and Harry Pearson was the driver that rounded off the top 20. Hooray. What's next? 177s. It's a constant... Uh, it's a constant... Ro- we, we haven't seen any TKMs out yet, have we? Yeah, they've got three goes. It must be out soon, surely. Well, we've got just over 20 entries in TKMs. Um, so there's no need to have this plethora of um, TKMs are out next after the 177s. We've got um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six heats because we're tagging that junior one on from. Mm. So six more heats before the lunch break, and then we finish off our rounding off our heats after lunch, uh, and then we go into the all important. So there's finals. six heats to the lunch break, Ash. Six heats to the lunch break. Which is about an hour and ten minutes, I'd say. Yeah, Ash has got an, the appetite of a hippopotamus, but the hips of a snake. Yes, Damn him. at the moment. Damn him. But he needs to... We, the important message about this for a dear viewer is that we are trying to time ordering the food so it arrives during the busy half hour so they can eat it before... They, it's very, very difficult. Is it? Mm. Trying to get, cause it, because it's lunchtime when it's the most busy. Well, you can't eat whilst you talk, can you? You can't eat whilst you film. And you can't eat whilst you film. But they do get two minutes to scoff everything. Uh, yes. Just so you know, the, we, we, uh, just to repeat the order for um, Matt is cheesy chips. Cheesy chips for Matt. <laughs> uh, have a look at that, Nick, while I check something out. So I, have, so I read it out quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Rotax at 170 Heat 3. I won't be very quick here. It's Dan Millwood on pole with Nicholas Walker. Row 2 is Nick Skelton and Zach Fontenot. Row 3, Will Milner and Joshua Pickford. Alex Thomas and Cameron Master on row 4. Row 5, Tyler Fossey and James Frost. Row 6 is Tyler Kelsey and Gary Cox. Row 7 is Cease Thompson and Matthew Lear. Car 8, car eight cut row 8 is Jake Davis and Patrick Williams Raj. Then it's Archie Elliott and Matt Zanetti on 9. Zach Sweeting and Nathan Schaefer on 10. James Price and Toby Chase on 11. Then we've got Martin Kaminsky and Sean Rudge on 12. Max Williamson and George Walker on 13. Steve Gilly and Daniel Hammett on 14. And Cole Edwards and Alf Williams on 15 as they begin to gather up as they prepare to start the race. Great stuff from our 177 class. Dan Millwood, the first of the Masters on the pole position here. We don't distinguish between the Masters and any other runners. They're just all mixed in together. But we do have a Masters championship to run for. Dan Millwood uh, is currently... Down. Leading the field to the starter, and they're on the way. That's a bit, yeah, they got to go. It's the light grey race suit has dropped into second place there. Oh, further down third and fourth, they get right. Oh, no, I was say they get right. Oh, that was an unfortunate twum, twonk on the cart at the end. That might have done some damage, actually. The orange cart there, the 27, I think it was. A bit of damage. Oh, it's four, it's two more carts off at the. I mean, at the uh, so it wasn't a great start. It started well and then went, went downhill rapidly, Joe. <laughs> and I just caught a call out to all competitors. Reflective number plates don't do us any service whatsoever. <laughs> they just shine in off the, the sun. You just glint off the sun. I realise. Matt finished the, number plates, please. I realise that the sun at cart meetings has been quite in short supply over well, the last uh, year yes. or so. Yeah. When it does come out, can't see a damn thing. Dan Millward, <laughs> Dan Millward leads. Nick Skelton second. Nicholas Walker third. Pickford Milner. Fontenot. Alex Thomas, Frost, Cameron Marston and Steve Thompson. That's your top ten just outside that oh. ten. As a change for the lead there, the bright yellow cart oh, down but the there's inside. A big, half an instant behind it. Did you, did you see that? Yeah, the number 28 of Nicholas Walker climbing, up on backside. climbing over the back of the cart in front of him. He's kind of gathered it together as they come out of the corner there. Just it, it, oh. He just got bogged down. It, the momentum was lost by the yeah. triple two. Is that the triple yeah, two of Dan yeah. Millward? Yes, the, uh, he just bogged down coming out of hand hairpin. And the, uh, I think it was Pickford. Pickford's in third. He's going, and Pickford's about to move through to second. And Pickford does take second. So this has left the Nick Skelton, number 127, and indeed one of the le- the uh, the leading master is our overall leader. What do I mean by master? I think it's over 36 or something, isn't it? That's not master. That's, know, that's, that's, no, that's, I, that's I, young and villile. Absolutely. I know. I know. I laugh at that when they say masters at 36. So, if you're over 36, then you can be, uh, then you can race for the Masters honours. Do you not feel this might get? They need to re-age that. Given the fact that Alonso just signed a new contract at 42. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Uh, we've got uh, 
things settling in with Nick Skelton now leading by just under eight tenths of a second there and the slow running car just not getting in the way there's the there's 127 of, of Skelton the bright yellow and orange car leading the pack just ahead of this gaggle that we're watching here though and we'll keep an eye on that orange CRG as they come underneath us it's the number 19 number 19 or was that 49 that's how these reflective numbers 49 mate work. it's Will Milner, yeah, Will Milner of course it is Will Milner trying all he can to break away from the uh, drivers behind him Nicholas Walk, Alex Thomas Zach Fontenot and Steve Thompson and I think he's managing to do that because everyone behind him that's the number 42 of Steve Thompson there. oh more kerfuffleage there we're going around the horseshoe the 74 Jake Davis seemed to be involved in some way and, and Alfie Williams and they were just just this kind of almost wheel over wheel stuff I know they've obviously you've got the uh, side pod that stops that but it's kind of a this is a, a bit of a scrappy one isn't it so far yes it's been uh, yeah there's been a lot of uh, of scuffleage as you see Nick in the uh, in the down the order and back with our leaders now though uh, as yeah. Pickford has, has made up the gap to Skelton Pickford has found the rear bumper of Nick Skelton Mm. And it's been a, a couple of laps, Nick, that he's, he's kind of plucked his way towards the rear bumper of Skelton. And if anything, he's looking very, very quick down the straights, just picking up a little bit of slipstream there. And now we come towards a possibility of challenging for the lead. Nick Skelton, we know how, we know how experienced Nick is. Yeah, into the hairpin might be a, nope not even, no, not no, even thinking about not it yet. was he yeah. no not yet maybe a lap or two before he thinks about that we're only at half distance so plenty of time plenty of time for Josh Pickford to pick his way forward see what I did there yeah behind him Millwood, uh, Milner's making a big move on Millwood and got him so third place has just changed behind him and this is the first two also battling so it's kind of a, as, as always you get these little little pairs and triples of battles but obviously it's the front battle that's the always the most important it's the most points and the most uh, gained positions effectively on the virtual grid that will become a real grid in a couple of hours time for the main final well he might be playing that metaphorical high speed game of chess here from Josh Pickford who he's not in any hurry he hasn't he hasn't really sort of mounted any challenge if anything he's struggling to stay in touch with Nick Skelton Nick may be able to control the pace we saw a gap of about eight tenths between first and second that's disappeared now to just over a tenth it might not be back up again this yeah, time it's yeah, it's about four yeah. I think yeah just waiting for that to update and tell us and uh, what looked like Pickford had momentum as he closed the gap to almost bumper to bumper but Skelton's responded there he's become aware hasn't he yeah Nick it was two uh, just over two tenths Fourth of a second, second there yeah quarter of a second um, we'll let that uh, phase out because behind these two in fact behind the first four we've got a massive battle from seventh down over yeah it's a, it's like a, you'll it's just a, come into big battle, battle yeah yeah if just we... just let it roll back let's just um let's just uh, wait for this big battle to come in watch the carts going through on the camera there. Isn't that, there we go this is this is the uh, the battle of the, of the buzzing bees of rotax 177 um and involving got, everybody yeah, yeah everybody yeah we, we've got movement in that line of carts constantly um it's a cr i mean that is pure oh, and, and we pick it up just, the just right in time, time. <laughs> who was that hopefully he just missed our camera point as well i have no idea nick but we'll, well i'm sure we'll see it again oh he didn't do it did you? yeah we've uh, we picked that battle up that we could see that coming i could see that coming off of the, the distance as they cross the line now, Fontenot, Will Milner, Max Williamson, George Walker, Jake Davis, Dan Millwood, Steve Gilly coming into play just outside the top ten. And it looks like that driver's out of the cart. He looks all right. He, he, uh, he carried a lot of speed into that tyre barrier, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, been a bit winded from that, I think. I'm trying to fathom who that was. Was it Zanetti? Um, or was it? I think it was Walker. I think it was Nicholas Walker's Walker. Walker's two laps back. Yeah, I think you're right. It was yeah, Walker. It yeah. was Walker. Yeah. Oh, up the inside of the 22 That's a move there, I think, by Williams, picking up third, fourth place. As they cross the line now. So we are just over a minute remaining in this heat for the, it's the third of our 177 heats. Again, where you finish in your heats 
uh, defines where you will start on the grid for the finals. And we have place changes and swappage and kerfuffleage, as Nick says, uh, all the way that. down the order. And that's part and parcel of the nature of mixed grid racing. I do. I'm a big fan of it. I know a lot of people aren't, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It's what, how I went racing when I was karting, because uh, I'm so old, we didn't have the technology for time qualifying, that's why. You had it, we couldn't do it by Sandal, could you? <laughs> <laughs> Great battle there between the number, is that the number 49 of I Will think Milner? that's the 49 Milner, yeah, going yeah, up down the inside, the, Williamson, yeah. yeah. He's on the CRG. Mm. Is he on the no, CRG? it's the one, no, that's no, one, one five. five. That's a long way further down. Yeah, that is. That's Tyler Fossey. That's down a long way. And uh, the two, battle of the two Tylers. Is that Tyler Kelsey and Tyler that Fossey? Was, it, it sounds like a, uh, it's some sort of like a country music awards, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's have a look and see if we can pick Where's up Where's our Nick leader? Skelton, Where yeah. is he? Who's Number still, one, two, seven. He's still... Is he coming uh, out? There he comes out the hairpin now. He's got right on his tail. He's got the uh, 56 of Josh Pickford. They're right together. They, they've been the together the whole race, haven't they? They've so been together the whole race. This is uh, going to be the last lap when they cross underneath us and the timing beam any second now and on to their last lap now bang and they pull onto Billy's blind with the final time Josh Pickford I either can't catch up or just decide that second place is fine for his no, first I, I think they're racing I think Nick Skelton has a, you know a sort of a wise head on his shoulder look he knows exactly where Pickford is I mean Pickford's not stupid at this stage of the event to be making any lunges or silly chances if, you know, he's going to have to make the, the move um, stick quite solidly. And Nick Skelton's got a, quite a bit of pace. They just haven't been able to. That's a pretty fair fight that we're seeing there. And a pretty fair fight all the way to the flag for Nick Skelton to take the third of the 177 heats from Joshua Pickford. There's Nathan Chafer of NCR, NC Racing, running the CRG, the CRG distributor, actually. CRG card distributor Nathan Schaefer in third there he kind of got away from us there we didn't see much of Nathan Alfie Williams fourth Zach Fontenot is in fifth Max Williamson sixth George Walker seventh Jake Davis eighth Will Milner ninth running off the top ten with Steve Gilly and then down from tenth Alex Thomas Daniel Hammett Tyler Kelsey Dan Millward Gary Cox Tyler Fossey dropping down to 16th there I don't know why Steve Thompson Matthew Lear James Frost and uh, Patrick Williams Rahaj rounding off the top 20. First of our TKMs, what is a TKM? Well, that's the. What is a TKM? That is the brand of engine that we're using, slightly different from the Rotax Max engine. Uh, I say slightly different, quite a lot different actually. The Rotax Max is a water cooled two stroke, 125cc. The TKM is an air cooled direct drive. Mortar, single cylinder. You can get a clutch from it, can't you? You can get a clutch, yeah. Direct drive by the, the, uh, Yeah, it's a matter of choice, really. Um, they're 110 cc. They run to the same uh, regulations as you will see in the British Championship. Uh, we've got a former all plate winner here oh. on this grid. And I'm just trying to uh, remind myself who that is. A uh, James Workman. Was British all plate champion. British all plate. British all plate champion about 30 years ago. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. Let's see where he is. Uh, let's have a quick run of the grid and we'll find uh, Mr. Workman, uh, who is down in 19th and running in the Masters class. We've got a couple of people running the Masters yes. class. John Shelton has uh, got in touch with us. He says, uh, great racing. Uh, from, and he says, for greetings from Mercia in Spain. Excellent, Excellent job. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Got better weather in Mercy, I see. Well, you don't know. It might be one of those weird days where it yeah, rains slightly. it's been slightly. a bit weird, the, the global weather. Mentally, when I was in... When was I, I was in Spain quite... No, I was, in, I was in Spain in February, and it was quite nice. But we had one day... It can be. We had a bit of other be. days. It was, it was an absolute bluer storm. John, let us know what temperatures you've got in Mercy, please. Yeah. Uh, and stay with us for the rest of the day, because if you've enjoyed the racing so far, it hasn't even gotten intense yet. Because there's no trophies or podiums to be had. Yeah, we're, we're building towards that. But, and uh, there are points, of course. The Heats have points well, on them. Yeah, you are, you, you're accruing championship points and you are forming the grid for the finals coming up later. Uh, we've got 23 carts have ended. I, I did say just over 20. Uh, 23 carts entered for this first round of the Junction 6 NKC. 
Um, Joseph Phillips will line up on pole position with Chris Whiteside alongside. Row two is Matt Slade and James King. Charlie King is our vice champion from 2023. He starts fifth with right alongside the number one. That's because he's our current TKM champion, the NKC champion from 2023, Mitchell Paul, alongside on row three. Ryan Layton and Liv Jenkins is on, are on row four. Alexander Lehman and Harrison Morrill are on row five. Will Cregeen and Leo Crabtree start on row six. Row seven, Tom Johnson and Jamie Mead. With Jack Crisp and Sam Cope on row eight. Molly Nicholas Biles and Matthew Temple Purcell are on row nine. Now we've got former row plate. Holder, James Workman and Ben Watson starting on the 10th row. 11th row is Jake Humphrey and James Hull. And then it's Samuel King on a novice plate starting in 23rd place. So the TKM, yeah, Mitchell Ball took the win. We haven't got Louis Bevan with us, I see. No. Um, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but it was, a, it was a cracking fight all the way down to the last chequered flag of the season. I'm pretty sure we're going to see exactly the same format this year. We're about to get things they, underway, or are we? They like to have two, don't they, normally? Yeah, you normally do, but I think we're going to start yeah, racing blimey. straight Some from right the off. oiled up machines then as the, as the wave of smoke flies past our commentary booth window. The Junction 6 NKC 2024 TEM Championship gets underway as the number 65 has a little bit of an off. Matthew Temple Purcell, he recovers. We've got a four-way card battle at the hand hairpin beginning to sort themselves out it's Joseph Phillips from the pole who leads at the horseshoe for the first time remember we're still on cold tyres the tyres aren't anywhere near where we need them to be to be able to corner like we expect them to so we're going to be seeing that probably here about lap three before everybody's happy however that's not going to stop people absolutely battling on the limit into the first turn there and a change for second as current reigning champion Mitchell Ball goes ahead of Matt Slate. Chris Whiteside keeping a watching brief there on the 72. And there's Ball into the lead. So Mitchell Ball takes the lead and continues on his winning way. He's carrying the number one. He won the championship here at Clear Pigeon, clinched the championship here in October at the final round of the 2023 season. He's starting 2024 as clearly he means to go on. We see... We'll have a chat with Mitchell in the uh, in the paddock show that goes out at lunchtime. And uh, Mitchell Ball also, it's his company, it's family company, Junction 6, who have been supporters of the NKC for many years now. And we do value your support as sponsoring our main sponsor of the Junction 6 NKC. It enables the championship to do bring you this fully fully live on Karting Live TV, for instance. Uh, you know, the partnerships that we have in the series enables the money to be spent to be able to bring you this close and exciting racing throughout the season so a big thank you to Mitchell we leave Mitchell to his lead as that battle for second place beginning to get a little bit warmed up now that the tyres are coming in Joseph Phillips Matt Slate the number 11 the Flex Motorsport the Flex team a big stalwart and very prominent in the TKM class and little ventures into the junior road tax classes as well that looks like a Birrell that is in second place in the hands of Joseph Phillips, who is very steady in that second place. Mitchell Ball has checked out a little bit. The gap was just under eight tenths last time by. It's going to be a little bit more, I think, this time by, with four laps completed. And it's a great start again, Mitchell Ball away. Now, the important news is that John Shelton has told us about the weather. He's watching the racing on the Sun Terrace. A very pleasant 20 degrees scene in the sunshine. So about six more than here, which is what you pay for. We're glad to have you along, John. But we are in the sun here at yeah, Clay Pigeon. But it's uh, blooming freezing. For round one, it's not blue, it's not for us. It's better to get too hot in here when the sun comes in. Uh, round one of the NKC uh, 2024. Uh, we're Karting Live TV. My name's Nick Damon. By my side is Joe Bradley. Up in the cameras, we have Ashley Antine and Matt Guppy. And pressing the buttons is Paul Bateman. But in the lead of this race and uh, carrying on where he started last year, uh, finished last year, it's Mitchell Ball. There's Joseph Phillips and Matt Slight. Chris Whiteside and Harrison Morrow. On camera at the moment is our leaders. Drop back, that's it. And second and third is closer. That's Phillips and Slight and the TKNs. Let's have a look a little bit further back down the field, actually, Paul, uh, because things have, have kind of settled down for that second play. I say, you know what? Yeah. Gonna, they're going to prove why me did, wrong. Why did you say that? I, I know, I know, I know. We've had Matt Slate, who has been just happy to follow in the wheel tracks of Joseph Phillips. Phillips there on the 66, Matt Slate on the number 11. The number 11 being the yellow and blue cart. The red and white cart is Joseph Phillips. That's second and third. And here we go, Slate for Flex. 
Is he going to have a go? No, he isn't. That's how close these carts are. They are slightly narrower track than the Rotax Max cart, so there's a lot more room and a lot more variation on the line. They've got a lot more freedom on the track, if you like. And only slight difference in track width gives them an, an amazing amount of freedom of where, to, where you can place the cart in the TEM class. And if anything, Nick, Matt Slate looks like he's lining up for a move here. Just when I thought that had settled well, down. Well, I think basically, obviously, he's, he's, he's listening to our comms and you've, you've upset him. <laughs> I am. He said, I'm not sitting here waiting on you. I have a tactical opinion of when I'm going to get past and change to second place. Do not come off me on the camera. I demand my time <laughs> in the spotlight. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll follow him through with another lap, though, just so you can see the back of my cart number 11. And th those numbers are super easy to read, so well done, TKMs. Yeah, no reflective number plates there. Nicely matte plastic is the thing that we commentators appreciate. We Mitchell can actually ball, see the numbers in the sunshine. Mitchell Ball, three seconds off the front. Yeah, at the he's moment. gone, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, these two, I don't know whether, whether Phillips is, is in some way slowing Matt down. You'd think that Matt would at that point attempt to get past not redoing it I'm a little bit surprised Nick by Charlie King on the number two who was a massive challenger for the championship going into the final round here in October and Charlie down in I think it was 13th there tenth, and then yeah. he's just come through into 10th there so I'm not sure what happened to him on lap one and something's happened to him on lap one out of our view and now he's making his way back up because I did expect him to follow he was he was alongside mm. He was alongside Mitchell Ball on the grid. Yeah, let's, so, uh, let's, let's take a risk and drop back, Ash. Just hold, hold on for a couple more, because there's a great greyish cart coming. There's a very tight battle between these, ne these next two after this one. There we are. These two are really nailed together. They may be the part now. It's Lando oh. Norris cart goes up the inside. And that is... Oh, that's not a Lando Norris. Yes, it is. The first one is. is it? Oh, it's not. Sorry, you're right. It's, how dare they paint things similarly for <laughs> people to think they look the same? I know they mm. are. They're all mm, similar. No. Well, given the fact that Lando Norris is the same as the Fernando Alonso, the same as the Carlos Sainz anyway, it's <laughs> yes. fine. So it's a 40, because we wouldn't be Lando, it's a TKM, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, was that was actually Leo Crabtree getting past Harrison Morrow. He's got the 44, so he's got a, he does have a Formula 1 reference, of course, because 44 is uh, Lewis Hamilton's number as well. Yeah, and he looks like he's pulling away, doesn't he, Crabtree? Crabtree ahead of the number 75 of Harrison Morrow. Who, who was the famous Crabtree from uh, sitcom times? From where, sorry? From sitcom. Who was the famous Crabtree in a sitcom? Leave that one with there you. Was a, there, was a, there was a famous Crabtree in British saloon car racing in the no, 70s. No, this is a very famous Crabtree who, we've, who is a constant source of amusement even many years now. And we refer to many, from 80s sitcom, obviously. I don't know. Officer Crabtree from Allo Allo. I was pissing past your jour. <laughs> the one who couldn't speak French. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Uh, you see, uh, well, see... You're not, you're I'm not, not old enough, man. No, it's because you're not in the Mimic Motorsport gang. That's I'm, why. I'm not old you need enough. To, you need to listen to the Mimic Motorsport because that's the sort of rubbish we get overly involved with the whole time. <laughs> Mimic Motorsport is a podcast, a live podcast, out every Wednesday on radio show Limited. It's, uh, I'm the F1 correspondent. We have John Hindoff, the world-famous um, commentator and best friend of Joe and I. So there we go. It's always, it's always who you know, isn't it? You need a karting section on that. I've tried that, but it gets um, harruffed down on the okay. whole. Okay, back to the racing. Quite, quite quite more sport. Way more important is the yeah. racing well, now. Well, that's, that's settled. That, that, that line of carts that we've just been keeping a little bit we of need a to move, As we know, we need to move forward one because yeah. it's now the carts. It, battle actually is now between uh, two, three, and four. That's where we want to go as they flash now into the second part of the uh, track. Remember, Nick, that there's no point in making rash decisions. We have had a move for that <laughs> position. We have had a move for that position just ahead of them. There's Mitchell Ball, the leader, just coming out the hand yeah. hairpin as this string of carts go through. They're second place second, now. Second, third and fourth was, yes, was much, much closer. They, they, they come right together. And I'm not we, sure about have changed, actually. There may have, may have been a change Jimmy at Mead, point. I think, uh, let's see who it is in third as they come underneath us with that red helmet. Yeah. It's the number 11 of Matt Slate now in second, yeah. and his flick flex teammate. Mead's gone of past Jamie Mead. Phillips. Yeah, yeah. There was, yeah. that was kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of Mead's got some real momentum now in the second half of the race, but well, second half was the final lap actually. So can he take second place on this last lap? Mitchell Ball has dominated it. We're going to have a flex one, and two, yep, three. There here. he goes up the doesn't inside. Matter, doesn't matter what happens there. Jamie Mead through on the inside of uh, Matt it? Slate. Yep. Yeah, he's going to hold it into the horseshoe. Mitchell Ball coming. Out of the final turn. It's won that one quite easily. And Already yes. saving fuel. Con and continues. That change on the last lap. We'll have seen Jamie Mead take second place. Oh, no. It's, 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 97 and 11 look really similar. 
but it was it was Meadie took it then from Slight and flipped and Crabtree so it did so move towards the end it's a flex one two three the flex team will be delighted with the start of their 2024 season Joseph Phillips came through in fourth Leo Crabtree fifth Harrison Morrow sixth Ben Watson was seventh eighth was Jake Humphrey Will Cregeen was ninth Charlie King not sure what happened to Charlie um, we've seen him on the pace of Mitchell Ball throughout 2023 we'll see what happens in the coming heats Tom Johnson was 11th Liv Jakins 12th and then we had Molly Nicholas Biles Alexander Lehman Chris Whiteside Jack Crisp 17th Matthew Temple Purcell after that spin at the start James King the first of the Masters in TKM was 18th Sam Cope was 19th James Workman was 20th, Ryan Layton 21st, and then James Hull was 22nd. Full 22 carts field finished. The same amount of carts finished that started, and that bodes very well for that. There's the number 97 of Jamie Mead making that move for second there at the hand hairpin. They came out of there side by side, but Jamie Mead had the pace to get towards the horseshoe. So that's Starting off 2024, Nick, very much how we finished it yeah, at the absolutely. front of the field. The number one Mitchell Ball, current champion, and uh, starting as he means to go on, no doubt. Uh, we've got um, Junior Rotax out next. Really? Yeah, not, 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 got a Junior Rotax? Another Never. Junior Rotax, yeah. And then we've got a Senior Rotax coming, and then a Rotax 177, and then another Junior Rotax to finish off. That's the extra um, one that's come back from yesterday, isn't it? So, yeah. So, it's it's according to my time Do you think there's table, four left, do you? Including the extra one? Yes. Till lunch. One, two, three, four left. Four left. Including. Ash. Yeah, more importantly. Oh, I get to read it out. I'm very excited. I'll do it quickly. Uh, Frank Ward on pole. Uh, Oliver Gusman joins him on the front row. There's Maxim Smith and Alexander Colantunio. Uh, Harry Hadley and Jasmine Taylor take up row three. Luigi Perolini and Aiden Clark, or Arden Clark, sorry, on four. Melissa Adrian on five uh, with Jason Dukis. It's Charles Green and Leo Basterfield on six. Jesse Whitmore and Dylan Moran Morton, sorry, on seven. Uh, Kasper Kutwisterchek and Sam Mott on eight. Dalton Haywood and Lucas Howell on nine. Alex Fraser and Daniel Clancy on ten. It's Jarek Metters and Alex Dole on eleven. Jaden Sherwood and Joshua Whitting on twelve. Okay, George Kay and Jack Dimbleby are 13. It's uh, Karthik Kumeta and Reese Green on 14. Jack Thielbird, Alfie McBain on 15. And at the back, not for skill, just from the how they were drawn out the hat, it's the 191 of Jacob Aston and George Theobald, who I think both are novices and therefore starting at the back of the grid. And don't forget, Kaziri Vitrasek came third in the Minimax Championship in 2023. He's now moved up into there the junior go. class as the... Junior like Rotax gets away the into the first turn of Billy's Blind. More stretched out start, which seems to have worked, actually, because actually he managed not to have any incidents. Already out towards the hands, hairpin through the S's, braking. Oof. And that's the, that's the cool tyres and the rear brakes coming into play there. That was deliberate by the driver, Frank Ward, though. He's inducing that rear slide. Maxim Smith's got into second over that through the hairpin. That 30 cart is in second, so it's kind of a kind of very similar pink and white carts with... Uh, uh, with well, purple and purple and blue and pink carts. With oh, the cart seventy there just parked. Uh, That's not Harry doing Hadley. anything. Harry Hadley's cart is out of this race, and Harry Hadley. I'm assuming he is as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah across the barrier and, and to, to to a safe place. Assume he's there as well. So Frank Ward, Maxim Smith, Jasmine Taylor, Oliver Guzman, Colin Tiano, Luigi Perlini, no, Melissa no Adrian, there, Jason no. Duchis, Charles Green, and Aidan Clark. That's your top ten. So we do have a yellow flag uh, going into the hairpin. And a couple of carts were thinking about going past. So there could be some issues later. They may have backed out of it having seen it. But they're going to have to clear that cart. Otherwise, that's one of the two main overtaking spots dead in the water. But down the top three go now. Flashing underneath it. It's Ward, Smith and Taylor. Right together. And then through goes Smith into the lead. Can he hold it? Yes, he can. He's a tight line. He displaced the 42 of Ward. Go through the S's. Watching brief from Taylor. Thinking perhaps now about getting run into the hairpin. Can't because of the flash. Oh, I had a chance there. Yeah, but just, the flag said, yeah. no, you can't do it. Jack, those, now, are they what, teammates are just very I, similarly I was going to say, Nick. Uh, definitely, definitely the 42. Taylor and Smith are teammates. It's exactly the same sticker kit. It's a very, very similar sticker kit ahead of them. Right. Because it's easy to watch in real life, Joe, as they come All across right. now. In real life. Yeah, yeah. Yes. These three, absolutely hammer and tongs, aren't they? 
Can First, I, can I use Smith, the... Frank Ward, Jasmine Taylor there, looking like she's wanting to get by both of them, isn't she? I'm going to use another reference that the youngsters won't get. They couldn't get a cigarette paper between them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to be allowed to say that soon, are we? Oh, they're down the inside, Jasmine Taylor. On Frank Ward for second. The teammates have swapped positions. We'll just confirm that through the horseshoe. Yep. They, all, they have indeed. The 84 of Jasmine Taylor now into second. She was looking. I said she wanted to get by both of them. Now's a chance to get a go at Maxim Smith. They've spaced out more than they've seen. We've seen the whole of this heat. It's four laps completed. And Taylor now doing all she can to get onto the rear bumper of Maxim Smith. Maxim Smith fully aware, I would think, Nick, that she's there. He's just looked over his shoulder yeah. and saw her again. Yeah, I mean, she, she, I think it just took a lap longer because of the yellow flag into the hairpin the previous lap. But that was where she looked to make the move. So Maxim Smith now. She's got a lot of pace through hand. that bit. Through the, through the infield, yeah, she's she's driving really well as well. This is where she'll need to be maximised the exit oh. speed. And you see there the, the leader, he oh. slid wide, he taps his helmet too oh, late, mate. Mistake, Jasmine yeah. Taylor's off and into the lead. Got psyched, he got spooked a little bit. She, she took the t- a nice like, like, There's a good front end on that car it, on the 84. You know what, the problem with Billy with Look, the top bend is, come through. it's so easy to get on the throttle early and you've just got to let the cart breathe. And if that's going to take you out too wide... Onto that exit curb, then tough, you, you, you're think, in for the ride. I think something that's been noticeable here, I think perhaps, I don't think it's the first is it race of the season, or it's because they're all on fresh tyres for the first time, but some of these cars have got much better front ends than others. There's that's possibly real, the tyres. Yeah, it's a real, yeah. you can see there's just an extra bite. I mean, it could be the setup, it could be people get used yeah, yeah, and stuff, yeah, but you yeah, still think I think it that is. car can turn better. I mean, they've all, they've all got severe limits of adhesion when you go 95 miles an hour into bottom bend, in fairness, and Billy's blind, but you know. It's just you suddenly see, it's not just, just, not just Jasmine, it's a number of cars that just have well, been able to just get that kind of bite you don't normally see. Stay, as they say, another age reference, stay tuned for, <laughs> our, uh, for our paddock show because we welcome Coles Racing to uh, the Junction 6 NKC paddock. Now, Coles Racing, a renowned team at the very highest levels of national kart racing over the years. Uh, British Championships under their, under their belt. And we talked to, their, to the, the both team managers at Coles and I was telling them about the challenges of using the Maxxis tyres for over three three rounds, three race weekends. And he said that it's going to be a voyage of discovery for them as to how they go about the setup of the cart because it's something that's alien to them. Mm. They're quite used to using the other tyres in other series and just, you know, one set of tyres per week, per race day, mm. several sets of tyres over the course of the weekend. There's no point of throwing new tyres at this because you're going to have to practice on old tyres to find out what car setup you need. That's a cracking battle as well. Yeah, so the top three are kind of spaced out. So we're now looking at the fourth, fifth, Leo Basterfield and Charles Green. Basterfield in the blue machine. Green in the Tony cart. Oh, we're way around, haven't we? Basterfield in the Tony cart and Green in the blue machine. Sorry, it's like... Now, Basterfield is a name that you remember from Minimax. He had some cracking battles in Minimax with the likes of Sonny Morgan, Seb Corking and Kazeri Vesicek who joins again, you know, a driver that's gotten old enough to be in junior road tax this year. So we're seeing the drivers progress through the age groups and into the different classes. And really look at home, Leo Basterfield looking very much at home, chasing down or being chased down by Charles Green there. Basterfield on the Tony cart there, that's the green and white yeah, yeah. one. I'm not sure what brand that number 77 it's is. Blue one. It's a blue one. Charles Green, <laughs> it's a blue one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, they're, uh, they're pretty much all the same. Behind them, Jaden Sherwood sure, just uh, picked up Jason Tuckis for sixth place. And I think he has a bit of pace. We may see him joining the back of this, uh, the fifth and sixth battle. Um, they are a little bit, they've done a little bit of spreadage now, in fairness. Certainly the top three are well spread out. Well, two minutes to go, Nick, and a very impressive drive at this stage of the weekend from Jasmine Taylor, who's pulled out a gap of 1.8 seconds there. The fastest lap of the race. She holds with a 34.4. I mean, I know there's only hundreds and tenths in it, or hundreds of a second in it, but she's, she's been the class of the field, certainly in this heat. It's the fifth time we've seen the, Rotax Max, uh, the junior Rotax Max class out. And if anything, Nick, things beginning to space out there at the front. Jasmine Taylor leading, Maxim Smith, Frank Ward, Leo Basterfield, Charles Green. That's the two carts on your picture there, the blue one. Then just behind them... Jaden Sherwood, he's got an absolute lonely, lonely <laughs> race experience. <laughs> yeah. He's just racing himself. Yeah, he got past, once he got past Duckers, he's, he's managed to pull away. He's almost 1.3 seconds ahead, but he's also two set, 1.3 seconds behind um, the rest of the team. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a point, isn't it? Uh, Jason 
Duchess, Duchess. We need to know how to pronounce that. If anybody's watching out there, Duchess. Duce, well, it depends what nationality that's derived from. It could be Duchess, 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 Jason Duchess. You say Duchess. I say. We need Duchess. to know. The, 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 By the, all the, means, the, let the, us know. The, the, the. Message us. Come in, pop into the box if you're here. Yeah, but you're if listening. you are going to pop in, please know yeah. how you pronounce your own name. Yeah, we have had that. We have had that, yes. Is he here? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think Aww. I've seen his name. No, it's a shame, that. <laughs> There's a move, is it? The number 42 two. of Frank Ward, Ward has got Leo Basterfield now on his rear bumper with 30 seconds on the clock. Whilst Nick and I have been chatting amongst ourselves, Leo Basterfield has gotten on got with him. it. Got and him. there he goes. We've seen... We've seen how Basterfield in the past, certainly in the Minimax class, which was a small grid, gets his elbows out. He's proving to be able to do the same. A little oh, bit of a nudge no, there. No, no, we got, we got Just to open up the gap. Squeeze, is that enough? Oh, be no, careful. he came across the front. Be careful. The right? nose, those four right together. They've got one more lap after this. I think Bruce would have looked at that a little bit differently if he'd made the move. I'm not sure who's going to come out of uh, the hand hairpin at the front of this field. The number 42 has absolutely been mugged there. Yeah, Ward. And he's found himself he's in the back of more that places, three carts. Yeah. 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 Green and Sherwood both got him there. And also Basterfield got a bit of an air gap as well between the two of them, so that's quite good. And he comes out, it just went wide, and he just found, oh, there's no more track there. <laughs> what do I do with there's no more track? Jasmine Taylor has taken the one lap to go board, Nick. Four seconds ahead, been almost. Watching that, almost four seconds in it. We'll stay with this one, though, all the way to the flag, because I think this is where it's going to reap entertainment benefits. I'll keep an eye over my shoulder. She's just going through the horseshoe at the moment whilst we watch that Basterfield-led train of carts Basterfield Sherwood Charles Green and Frank Ward as uh, underneath us the chequered flag will fly for Jasmine Taylor to take a very fine heat win here and then behind Jasmine Maxim Smith will take second place there's the third place finisher Leo Basterfield made his way through the order Jaden Sherwood fourth Charles Green fifth six with Frank Ward Jason Duchess no say no chequered flag perhaps another lap aren't they? oh really <laughs> Oh, that's, that's they're waving the yellows. That there was a mistake. That was a mistake. Was a mistake. Not, not yeah. giving the checkered flag. Yes, yes. Uh, we everyone's wave, gone. Yes. Everyone's looked confused when the yellows have come out. So everyone's confused. Well, the checkered flag appeared on the timing screen, which but is the most no important one, thing. And I think it probably appeared on the board as well. Right. Okay. But not on the man <laughs> waving. Right. Person waving failed the one job they had. Right. Okay then. Okay, um, you one job. Right. Whereabouts did you interrupt me there? Where was I in the field? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you, don't take a flag. Don't you flag. got excited. Why did you get excited? Because Paul told me don't take a flag. I, I know, know you don't need to get I excited. Have an official didn't cock up. You know I that. Know, but don't, you don't, don't get excited. Just you know. Sorry, just leave that. Me, when you're seeing dramatic motor racing, I'm not allowed to get excited. No. You heartless not man. Not unless it's on the screen. Don't care. It's very confusing. You shout about something. <laughs> what do you? Do you know it's confusing to me? You. <laughs> Yes. Everyone else is going, oh, extra information. Thank you very much. Just want to have a co commentator <laughs> to provide extra information. Oh, no. Number one commentator doesn't want to hear it. Oh, there we are. I'll just be quiet. I'll sit here in the corner and say nothing. What does the Twitter art say? They say, Joe, stop being so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the number 35 of Braden Hill had to make room for him because he, he was coming. Ben Ballou now has Philip Howarth. The distinctive gold helmet of Philip Howarth is very soon going to be mounting a challenge to get by Ben Ballou on the 37 there. That's those two there. Ahead of these two, Jensen Watts now leads from Braden Hill. But this is where the next move is going to come from. We know Philip Howarth knows Clear Pigeon. It's his local track here. The former 177 champion in 22 moved down to, or down the weight order, I should say, into the 162s. And just look how he's going. This truly is a battle of the Giants here in the fourth heat for Senior Rotax. Textbook move here, we see on the replay. Again, momentum through the sweeping start-finish straight. That isn't really straight here, a clear pigeon. And then he got that into the braking area. And now, look, he's leaving Baloo behind. Baloo is going to have Arthur Thacker and Rufus Flan and Theo Frederick not that far behind. There's Samuel Wyatt and the all played holder, Kieran Gifford. Just outside the, just inside the top ten in ninth, Aidan Pomeroy rounds off the top ten. But here we have Philip Howarth now. Philip onto the back of Braden Hill, and down the inside at Han Hairpin, and he's made it happen. Yep, he's made that stick. And if Braden Hill isn't careful, he's going to have Ben Ballou wanting to take advantage of the situation. But Philip Howarth is cleared off now. Now the gap was eight tenths of a second to Jensen Watts. This is going to be, for me, personally, quite fascinating. Because Philip Howarth, we know how quick Phil is here. 
and we know how quick Jensen Watts is pretty much everywhere Phil's no slouch everywhere and as well let's see what the gap can be so that lap by as Philip Howarth made his way through the field with clear air now in front of him to Jensen Watts 1.5 seconds was the gap so with clear air we'll get a good feel for just how much time Philip Howarth can claw back at Jensen Watts here they come across the line then it'll be seven laps completed Watts crosses the line waiting for me screen to update it's not as excited as I am and that's Philip Howarth chasing him down the gap 1.4 personal best lap times look, look at this 34.661 from Watts in the lead 34.614 from Philip Howarth slightly quicker we're inside the second half of this heat three and a half minutes remain Philip Howarth he's got a clear view in front of him all he can see is the back end of that barrel cart of Jensen Watts 34.49 sorry 34.459 for Jensen Watts 34.497 and it's a fastest lap from Watts he's laid down the gauntlet hasn't he come and catch me he says Philip Howard says I'm trying Brayton Hill 34.603 <laughs> you know what Nick I am thrilled to have this quality of driver in the Junction 6 NKC for 2024 we weren't sure if Phil was going to compete I'm delighted to see that he is indeed competing he's challenged as he's, well it's, it's yeah. a challenge with the rest of the field this time it, we've seen him carve through fields for two or three years and just kind of at, at will but he's got up against a real, real uh, rival in, in Jensen Watts, certainly in these southern circuits. Now, we, we, we need to see Jensen when he does the whole championship and starts in the northern he says track. He is, yeah. I'm sure he's been to Wilton Mill, whether he's been to uh, he hasn't Three been Sisters to Warden Law. or Warden Law. Yeah. You know, but then again, how many laps does it take a talented car to get around to learn a new track? Five. Five laps, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there is set up elements, but it's interesting. This one has really spread out, actually. There's no real nose to tell until you get about 11th place. How yep. if not? How if not pushing away? If we watch the field going through Billy's blind, you can see there was a few two by twos, but not too much happening outside of that. You know what? It's 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 always like it, it, coming from the background we do in car racing when it, when you you get the chance to have a post race interview with the drivers. We haven't got time to do anything. We haven't got time to breathe in and out between races here no, no. in the NKC. But it, it's always nice. And uh, what I want to ask Phil, or my question to Phil would be is how hard were you pushing to catch Jensen Watts? Because by the time you got a, you got into second place and ahead of Braden Hill and, and Frederick and Gifford, who, who have come through the field magnificently in fourth and fifth, let's, have a, let's drop back and have a look at Theo Frederick and Kieran Gifford if we can. That's those two there really, who've third, come through. Two behind. Yeah, they're quite close together, actually, third and fourth. But, yeah, but getting back, to, um, getting back to, to Phil, I want to ask him just how hard were you pushing there? Because once you got by, you knew he was way ahead. He was over a second ahead of you. So is there any real, you know, you're going to take the life out of your tyres. And they've got to, just clip away they've got to run for three metres. Absolutely. So, you know what, you, you kind of, you, you know, you put your intelligent head on and, uh, and you think, right, I'm going to manage the tyres. Because there's no way in, you know, three, four minutes by the time you've got the chance to of cl clawing back at Jensen Watts. That will come at the final when they're starting, hopefully, around one another on the starting grid. That's the number 92 of Theo Frederick getting ahead of Braden Hill there. That was a great move there. And just look at the pace of that 92. And you know what, Nick? All of these quick drivers that we'll see coming through the field, they are going to be together on the beside one. They're going to be racing wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper, in the finals this afternoon. So if you are watching, if you have got any plans for this afternoon, put them off and stay in front of <laughs> yes. your TV or yeah, your YouTube. Don't, don't, because there's finals to come. And that'll be crazy. But uh, Howarth, uh, just flashing out, he has got very stabilised. I mean, I think it feels absolutely, you can see Jensen Watt in the, in the distance going, nah, I'm not going to get him. I don't need to get him now. I need to get him at half past four, five o'clock this afternoon. And the final's out. Good move there in third from Frederick now. He's managed to put a bit of a distance over Burden Hill. And then we go Gifford and Thacker. So this is um, we, we had the drama in the first three or four minutes, and now it's settled into turning laps and getting to the end and scoring points. Last lap for Watts. Let's just move forward to our leader. Let's watch him over the line. Jensen coming around the horseshoe now. It's great to have Jensen here for the whole season, isn't it? We, he really impressed us when he came to visit uh, for those three rounds. 
mainly southern based rounds well um, he's able to join us for the whole season and uh, we know how much pace he's got he's with uh, the PRP racing the um, I think it's PR racing isn't it mm. for um, for Jensen oh, and uh, he's on the burrow it's not very often you see a burrow out racing to be honest um, but he certainly showed the way forward on the number 93 Jensen Watts it is Let me up. RP. it's the RP Burrow yeah. racing team just underneath us actually just behind us they over are. our right shoulder um, Jensen Watts takes the win in fine style Philip Howarth chasing him down to uh, a gap of two seconds there I think Phil was maybe managing tyres there towards the end Theo Frederick what a great drive through the field overtaking some really class drivers as well to get there in third Braden Hill he had a, a, a bit of a, a, a good race as well just losing out to Theo Frederick in the latest stages. Kieran Gifford, the old plate holder, he came through and up to fifth. Arthur Thacker was sixth. Sam, Sam Wyatt uh, inside the top ten there with seventh. Rufus Flan, eighth in Pomeroy. Uh, brother to Sam, Ethan Wyatt in tenth. Reese Pope, eleventh. Jack Maidman, Nathan Jensen, thirteenth. Everybody out there. Tom Lee Davies, fourteenth. Michael Goodburn, Liam Deedman, Henry Stratton, Jason Bear, the first of the Masters. Jason Bear was in 18th, Finley Underwood 19th, and it was Lewis Berry that rounded off the top 20, and just outside the 20, Josh Delacarta, Simon Spagnuolo, Elliot Barrell, James Becker, Samuel Christiansen, and then we had Ben Ballou, we lost, yeah, Ben Ballou was up there, wasn't he? We, we lost Ben Ballou, we, we lost Ben Ballou on, on uh, lap 11, and Levi Goodyear, we lost at the very start, that was Levi uh, across at the Han Hairpin. Yeah. Now the Nick, What's we've next? got a... Uh, one seven seven, and then we've got the Rotax. rerun of, of that, the rerun of heat two of that, is it? Then we've got the yeah the the One uh, junior raw tax heat that was postponed from last night, uh, yesterday afternoon. We run that one before we break for lunch, or before we break for lunch. That's a very apt accent for this. For Dorset, have we got any uh, anybody saying uh, just the Nathan? Don't read that bit out. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's sorted. I don't know what that was. Let's find it sorted. Okay. Here we go then. We've got the Here 177s we out. That's, this is the heavier senior Rotax class. 177 I kilograms. Like, I like more rounded. <laughs> there are some, mate, there are some skinny people in this one. Yeah, but it's very, very class. tall though, aren't but they? they're very tall. Yeah. So it's not all about being a chunky lad. Uh, Lewis Crocker is the pole sitter for this one. Alfie Williams alongside. Michael Mallett and Patrick Williams Roger are on row two. George Willis and Robert Simpson row three. Nathan Wells and Max Williams in row four. Josh Constable and Ollie Hancock are on row five. Neil Hemming and Cameron Marston are next. Then Zach Fontenot, Harrison Crook. Oliver Smith, Ryan Taylor Truman. Alex Thomas, Tanino Machichi. Steve Stewart and Oliver Moss. Then we've got Colin Davis and Marty Gilfillan. Ollie Barlow and Tim Darlow are next. Reese Llewellyn and David Simpson, row 13. Paul Moran and Lawrence Hilton with Scott Smith and Steve Thompson rounding off what is a 30-cart field of 177s. Absolutely splendid stuff in the Junction 6 NKC. And we're about to go racing for their fourth heat. Their Williams from second got the jump there quite comprehensively. And they fly around Billy's blind. And as you'll get through there. So it's a clean start. Well done, lads. Uh, Straggler in the 42 of Steve Thompson. Lads and lasses, we've got uh, Marty Gilfillan in there as well. Well done. Everybody through and into the hand hairpin without any incident to report. The leader has managed to break free. The number 96 of Alfie Williams breaking free while everyone around them squabbles over real estate. Yeah, Lewis Crocker in the 43 was a little bit... He kind of went round the corner, kind of very slow, trying in a, in a 50p p, 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 p sort of way, and slowed everyone up behind him. He's been overtaken for second now by Robert Simpson. Yeah, Robert Simpson, first of the Masters there, had a crack in first lap there, and was overtaken about three people. Three or four carters at least is what I saw. Behind them, that train of carts now just beginning to squabble and sort themselves out. Not sure who's where, to be honest, Nick. Well, it's in third now. It's the 91 of Max Williamson. So he's going two positions in this actual heat, in this, this lap. So he's gone from fifth to third. So it is Williamson, Simpson, Williams, Simpson, Williamson. <laughs> and then, uh, it's great, this verbal gymnastics. And then it's the 43, but I think it's about to be a fourth and fifth position change there. 
and they come in and as you can see there's a whole gaggle of cars that big white machine I think it's the 30 that's Ollie Hancock isn't it the 51 yeah, the white car he's yeah. coming forward through the field yeah need to mention Ollie is the second of the masters there in sixth place overall the first of our masters Robert Simpson he's second overall and chasing after the leader and if anything catching the leader ever so slightly in that second place yeah. closing the gap as we have them cross the line now we're looking at third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh there, just coming underneath us. And it's uh, fastest lap of the race for that second place, Robert Simpson. A 35.746, considerably faster than Alfie Williams. So the gap is coming down. And if anything, Nick, we're going to need to perhaps focus on that lead battle as Simpson closes the gap. There's so much to focus on in this 177 heat with place changes all the way down the field. Let's have a quick run of the uh, top 10. So Alfie Williams from a chasing Robert Simpson. Max Williamson is third. Harrison Crook, Lewis Crocker, Ollie Hancock, Ryan Taylor Truman, George oh, Hancock Smith, Wells, place. Sorry, Patrick williams Rogers. Come across you there, but Hancock lost the place there. So, so George Willis is yeah, it on the 153? That's it, gone past him there. But the uh, difficult to read red plates on the red and white at the back there. But Hancock there overtaken quite easily actually by... Uh, by Willis, so whether it was, a, I think it may have lost a bit of drive. We've got a problem for the 55 car that's facing the wrong way coming out of the S's. That's Steve Stewart, who I think had a problem in the first heat when he went off in the first corner. So Steve's not had a great day, but uh, he'll be in the B final, I expect. Here come the first two, getting a bit close up. Yeah, sweet pass. It's the 96 of Alfie Williams from the Simpson car, the 24. It's red against blue, it's as traditional as it can be. It's like Man UV Man City. If the city had blues a little bit more rich than they do. How could, how could be richer than Man City, you think? But there we are. Alfie Williams responds with a personal best lap time, but still not as quick as Robert Simpson that time by. And the gap is continuing to come down. We're not going to need a stopwatch or a timing screen very soon as that battle for the lead continues to come back together. Yes. Meanwhile, behind them, Nick will just stay with that one as Simpson. Let's see where the gap is. Three tenths last time by. Stays at three tenths, but just, just on three tenths. So the gap is coming down couple of hundreds that time only but it's more a case of I think getting into the uh, the area where you feel you're close enough to make a move and that's uh, a couple of tenths not quite there going through the hands hairpin this time but definitely definitely closer oh, yeah we don't need a stopwatch now do we I have got one clear to see <laughs> that's clear to see Robert Simpson first of the masters that means he's over 36 he could be 66 but he's really old at 36 if he is and he's chasing down the younger Alfie Williams. We've seen Alfie in years past. We know how quick Alfie can be. So it's no hard, it's no mean feat to be able to, one, catch Alfie Williams, two, even pass him. But if anything, Robert Simpson looks like that's on his agenda, doesn't it? He's mm. caught him. One thing catching, well, it's a cliche, isn't it? One thing catching a driver, it's another Nothing thing passing overtaking, them. yes. but uh, Another thing doing their taxes. <laughs> yeah absolutely here we go and if anything it's gone back out it was just over a, just under two tenths last time by yeah it's just over two tenths this time by so a response from Alfie Williams it's going to need a mistake I think Nick it's it's gonna, or a lunge or, or the intervention there, go, there he goes got it there he it just, is he, he just went for it that just, wasn't a lunge that was, but, that oh, was pure China thought he was going to he did, nearly went too wide but they've actually let Harrison Crook right back into that team now it's a three cart train as the speed look at that was turns pure. around comes in pure well, outbreak yeah he didn't know he was yeah. going to be there yeah. it, 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 both, it, both of those carts skewing <laughs> sideways on the brakes both drivers absolutely on the limit of adhesion I can't tell you how easy it is to spin off when you, you're just trying to feather the brake and get the thing to, to turn in. And now we've been joined by Harrison Crook. Yeah, I think Crook fancies second going into the hairpin. I mean, he's gone for it and he's got it. Yeah. So Crook. bad news for Williams. Two runs round, hands hairpin and two positions misplaced. Well, we've got two. Uh, we've got uh, Harrison Crook, who had a great season in 2023. Sixth in the 177 Championship. That's why he's running the number six. Behind him, or well, behind him is... Uh, behind him is Alfie Williams but behind Alfie Williams is the number three of Ryan Taylor Truman and we've seen in the past how quick just how quick Ryan Taylor Truman is as we get towards inside the final two minutes of that and 
they go. Not long to run. A little bit stretched out now, the top five, all with a fair few cart lanes between them. Simpson from Crook, from Williams, from Taylor Truman, Max Williamson, who started well but is down in fifth, and then he got the uh, Crook, Oli Hancock, he's dropped back, Willis has got past Hancock as well, so it's not been a great, it's been a good start, then a drift back for Hancock, we'll be looking, be looking at his tyres, be looking at his setup. going, what have I done wrong, why am I going well, backwards rather going forward? Constantly tweaking, going forward, uh, that's the 96 of Alfie Williams, and behind him, Ryan Taylor Truman on the number three, now, Ryan Taylor Truman on that number three he, he won five heats across the course of 2023 so Get we you know with your research we, we know he's got <laughs> pace oh he's he, he, not quite enough pace to no, get alongside no, no he has on the braking yeah just that's where needs it to just hold it in for the first part of the blind and it'll be fine there and indeed he was so that's the change we expected for third and fourth let's watch it again it another kind of textbook all of our replays are going to look like this yes. textbook overtake. <laughs> yes. This is how you outbreak into Billy's blind a clear pigeon. Is this a replay or an arc test? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It's uh, it's textbook. It really is coming through the uh, across the start finish with momentum. And look, look at the gap he's pulled. So he was being stifled on pace somewhat. Uh, we are very close to the one lap board being shown. It'll be shown next time round for our leader, Robert Simpson. We've got to come on Marty from uh, Holly Jensen. Marty Gilfillan. But we are now one and a half laps from the end, sweeping round the exit and into the horseshoe. Robert Simpson's managed to hold off Harrison Crook. Taylor Truman looking to gain slightly. But it looks like, unless Crook's got something super special up his sleeve, which is hard to sell fast, um, on this last lap, they go for the blind for the final time in this Rotax 177 Heat 4. Our penultimate race before lunch. The lunch break where you'll get to see the full splendour of Joe's pit walk with a bit of mine tacked on the end because he made me. But final lap and a very, very good performance from Simpson. I think he had a Great little bit of extra pace. I think he's had a bit of extra pace. And he's been able to manage it quite well. Crook will be happy with second. So Trim will be happy with third. Williams probably not quite as happy with fourth. Um, he's higher up and Williamson sort of a par effort I suppose at fifth and you've got Willis Hancock who will be disappointed he drifted up back after going forward and it's Marston Weld Oliver Smith in 10th Oliver Moss in 11th Reese the well in ahead of both Oliver Moss but he just got ahead of him as I was saying it and then Alex Thompson Scott Smith Patrick Williams Ra Oli Bailey Lawrence Hilton Paul Moran and Lewis Cocker make up your top 20 uh we, we had an allure for Marty Gilfillan, and it's good to see Marty out here this weekend. She's with Jib Tech in, in Carl's team, and uh, Carl Bryant, happy birthday again, Carl. I'm told it's your 40th, so that's a big one, isn't it? The big 4 0, Marty. Big 4 0. Uh, Marty running with Carl's team this weekend, but uh, her dad is a mechanic. I always So help. she's inside the awning, that so always she, helps. All, all that information. That you can Inside glean the when you're That team. sounds like a kind of a, a, a web series that one of, the te- one of the teams will put out. Let's go inside, inside the awning. That is a piece. That is it. That's yours. That is a feature no. piece. We should stop with the pit walk. I call it Inside, Inside the, the awning. awning with Joe Bradley. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like my soap opera behind the garage doors, isn't it? Yes, he has. Very very, similar, he does have his own it? catchphrase if we're listening. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, he invented in, it. In the Creventic series. In yes. the 24 series. Did you write the thing for this week? You, you know, know why? Because I've worked behind did you, garage no, doors. Did you write the thing for this week? Yeah, yeah. Even though you aren't there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always do. Yeah. He wrote, Joe writes in the programme. He's very I, I told the story of being disqualified at Spa. Oh, yeah, that's great. Because that, yeah. that, that still rankles, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, absolutely. How many years is it that? It rankles Doily even more, yeah, but he's from but Glasgow. you kept the trophies, didn't you? We did. We kept the trophies. <laughs> well, still got fine. the photographs. I've still got the memories, and we did beat them. So did you get the prize money, though? No, we had a hundred prize money. It was five hundred euros or something <laughs> in two thousand and seven. That's real. Cash. It's a massive amount of money. <laughs> can we not keep the check and give them the trophies back? No, mate. <laughs> I can hide the trophies. <laughs> yeah, that's a story. That's a story. Twenty four inch series, the that. magazine for the Spa Twelve Hours that's just taking Don't place. Don't watch that. Watch that later. Yeah, watch that. But check out the website if you want to see my behind closed me soap opera behind closed door behind garage doors I've got okay. to get me on catch this is Joe Rotex and Heat 2 this um, was unfortunately not able to run at the back end of yesterday um, 
a couple of things. There's a, there's a cuff, cuff at the stop, and unfortunately, it resulted in a lot of drop noses for a number of the, of the drivers. They decided, look, we just need to restart it. And uh, I think that's a really fair decision. And restart it, they have. Now, as you can see, because it's we, restarting got, from the red flag, I think it's just, we may need an extra lap to get the timing to sort itself out, because it's, it's trying to count back, for, it's, it's kind of got to count back from where it was. And as you can see, they, they've got three minutes already on the, on the board. So <laughs> I think it'll be fine once it gets rolling. But it is literally a restart from yesterday. They get the I whole race. Got, this race is restart. We've got eleven hours and fifty six. <laughs> <laughs> That's one hell it's of a slow, yeah, slow is, lap, isn't it? So we're good with endurance races. <laughs> Here we go. We should get this thing underway. That's a better start altogether from this field. Daniel Clancy triple in the three. triple three, leading them off for the first time on the ball. Oh, and who is that? Spun off. Who is that? That has spun off. Is that Clancy? It's a sixty. 53. It's 53 of Charlie, Charlie Hume Hume. second. Oh, he'd How'd be that happen? kicking himself. Well, watch this now. There he, he is. He just over Oh, just that was pure it's, break, that, yeah. it's that just stop, stop, stop. Just that extra kind of half inch of pressure until yeah. you've locked up, you've gone round. If you put it's a little that, turn on it, yeah. brilliant Absolutely. start by the triple three Clancy. He's got a lovely lead out there. Enjoying starting from pole. There's a change behind him, as you can see, for third. And we've now got several very, very similarly painted carts or stickered carts running behind each other. Now, Jaden Sherwood, oh, huge change. You can see we shuffled through on the timing board there. Sherwood second. Yeah, and we've, we've got, got two carts off. Yeah. 53 has gone. Who's yeah, they were, they, were down, they were down the field. Charlie Hume. They were, they were way actually, down the field. Up by yeah, the field. He yeah. spun off. He's having a nightmare. We've got Meanwhile, yellow. at the front, where all the action is. Triple three from triple one. From 99, if you haven't got an alliterative number, you're not going to be near the front. 333 from 11 from 99. It's Clancy from Sher from Howell. I'd like to give you the colours, but they're all the blinking same, near enough. Two of them are teammates. The, and in the middle, it's the same colour as Amy Peacock's colours as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And we'll up the inside out. there, that's the end of the, the, the time in the lead. The triple three goes from first to third in one corner. As Sherwood and Lucas Howell push now, their way through. Now, I'm told that the triple three, Daniel Clancy, is just literally qualified off his novice plates, um, which means he's got six signatures on it. If he has got a, a, a license, an MSUK license, which you don't need to race here in the NKZ because we are an IKR, an independent kart championship. Um, but it, it shows how what I'm saying is I'm, I'm justifying and, 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 and um, giving him... Nice. Yeah, the fact that learning. he's just off these novice plates, and yet here we are on lap four, and he's still hanging on to third place. So that's not bad at all for Daniel. Daniel's making the job very hard for people who overtake him. And you know what? That's what he's got to do. That mm -hmm. is absolutely what you've got to do in mixed heat racing, uh, mixed grid racing. You've just got to hold your ground, and, and he's doing a cracking job there. Uh, just drop down the, the field. It's, 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 real it's a risk of attrition, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's not for the top two. It's into its twelfth hour, so that I'm not surprised. Not, yeah, you know? a lot of the carriages are shut <laughs> up for twelve hours of running. Very good point there, Joe. Yeah, yeah. First, second, there a little bit of a bit, bit of air between the two of them. That's Sherwood and Howell. Uh, triple one. So with the one 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 of Jaden Sherwood under pressure from Lucas Howell, Daniel Clancy still in that third spot, holding off. And I think he's dropped back now. I think he's dropped back and has been overtaken by about four carts. So that will change as we see them coming through now. There is, There are the leaders, Jaden Sherwood and Lucas Howell. Into turn one. Into the S's. And out of the S's. Lucas Howell, fastest lap of the race that time, 34.9. 34.901 in comparison to 34.936 from the leader so these two at the front of the field the triple one now under immense pressure as Lucas Howell lining him up somewhat we wait for them just to come back into our view there they go that's the bat marker regaining ground here's the battle for the lead and there's a change for the lead as Lucas Howell goes down the inside, coming back at him though, side by side, into the S's, and onto the grass has gone Howell. He goes around that tyre barrier in very lucky style. I'm not sure how the stewards will sort that out. But right now we've got Howell, who is back in into the lead. Sherwood, they tried going side by side through the S's, and discretion being the better part of valour from Howell, he took to the grass. We see here, it just, there was not room, and Howell challenging for that lead found himself on the grass 
I think they've stayed in that order as Howell has come through in first, Sherwood second, Harris Roberts third now, Nathan Traverse, uh, Traverse in fourth, Jacob Onslow, Jack Theobald, Freddie Warlock, Daniel Clancy down to eighth, Lucy Lovell up to ninth, Zach Burke tenth. And now we will see whether Jaden Sherwood, as that back marker, does a fine job there in keeping out of the way. In fact, I think he's gone in the pits, has he? Yes, he has. So that looks like that was... I think that was Charlie Hume just calling it a day. Yeah. So there's the leaders now. I mean, Lucas Howell has now got by Jaden Sherwood with that, what will be deemed a bit of a controversial incident. We'll find <laughs> out exactly what that was. That's the 37 uh, in it's our Jamie camera Salter shot. looking to get going again. The no, driver's no. way out of the barrier. He put himself in too early. There's, there's a couple of carts parked elsewhere. But the leading now, one, two, three, four, right. Well, let's just drop back to the battle for fifth because it's a, a real train of carts there, five, six, seven, eight. They just sweep through underneath you, Ash. Just wait, this next bunch of carts. Just choose who you want there, because they're all having a right old go. Five is Jack Anslaw, and then Jack Theobald's Battle of the Jacks. Theobald looks up the inside of Anslaw. Can he make it stick? No, he can't. But behind them, there's four of them doing a safety dance, hoping to get through, through the S's. And uh, then they come round, and actually, they've decided to make it a, a green flag now on the exit of the, uh, this corner here, even though the park carts, are, carts are still parked just off as you can see to their right hand driver's right hand side and it's the 3-3-3 has been the centre of the action Dan Clancy obviously one of his early races so he's, he has been drifting backwards but that's not the point the yeah, point is, is how well you can it, where you find your position he's made it very hard for people to come by him and he's at that which is which is commendable that's exactly what you've got to do Daniel I'm pretty sure that people in your team will be telling you just that and he's with TH Corsa He's been carting for two years. That's Daniel, uh, finalist in the BIKC in 2022. Bridges Independent Cart Cup. I'm just might be. Well, yeah. it works. Letters work, don't they? You're missing nothing at the front, everyone. By the way, there is a, a kind of a second gap between all of them. Uh, one, two, three, and four. How Sherwood, Robertson, Traverse, and then Whitlock himself is making it less. Lucy Lovell and Daniel Clancy and George Kerr are all sharing positions, but it's a. It's kind of, oh, and off goes the 16. That was unfortunate. That was Lucy Lovell uh, doing, oh, a, uh, she doing was the, do, the Charles Leclerc number and, uh, and going off like Charles Leclerc she, did in, uh, she was was it? in France, she, wasn't it, two years ago? She was inside the top Ricard. 10, though. She was in ninth that time by. Yeah, she's going to uh, drop three, I think, at the least. Cracking race. She's run by her dad, James Lovell, who's done a bit of karting himself. I think, I think what people need to understand, of course, is that... Uh, Yes, this is a championship, but for a lot of these guys, certainly in the guys and girls in the beginning, it's also a huge learning experience. And every time you go out there, you learn something and you, and you gain more experience, you gain more uh, in, in, the, in the racing bank. And making these mistakes isn't, whilst, yes, it's unfortunate in that moment, it actually can be very useful for your career moving forward. Well, that, that's exactly why, that, that's why mixed grids, I'm a big advocate of mixed grids. I know a lot of people don't like them, but you learn so much. You learn how to be overtaken and there. We had Daniel Clancy being overtaken by the number 10, Will Swills. Now, Will finished 10th in the championship in 2023. He's coming through the field from the back of the grid. And Daniel there was en enabled Will Swills to overtake him without, without bashing wheels, without getting involved in anything, because he knows he's much quicker and much more mm. experienced. Eventually, Daniel Clancy will gain the same amount of experience and he will gain in pace, all from that learning experience which oh, you mentioned. and Swales there got through it got past as you saw Theobald Theobald kind of got stuck almost on the inside of the uh, of the hairpin he's like he just got a huge kind of bit of extra curb somewhere there he just actually took it too tight and then put a wheel actually onto the grass and just unbalanced the cart one a little bit up the air but we are now uh, starting the last lap Howell is leading by 1.6 seconds it's 1.6 seconds then to, to Roberts it's two seconds to Traverse it's two seconds to uh, they have a, they've had a gold spread out in this one Joe yeah, it has, be, it has become that. There's the number 10 just moving up another uh, place into six there. Will Swales just gaining ground all the time there. Now ahead of Jacob Onslow as the chequered flag is being readied. In fact, the chequered flag has flown. Lucas Howell just coming underneath us there. Jaden Sherwood in second. The gap was 1.7 at the line. So that was a fine heat win for Lucas Howell. Jaden Sherwood second, as I said. And then a little bit of a gap to Harris Roberts in third, Nathan Traverse in fourth, fifth was Freddie Warlock, Jacob Anslow 
did in fact finish ahead of Will Swales. I thought I saw Will Swales getting ahead of him. That wasn't the case. Uh, Jack Theobald finished eighth. Ninth was Max Chow. Zach Burke rounds off the top ten. So we are going to break for a lunch of well, approximately about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. I'm being told. Uh, that gives us an opportunity to play out our paddock walk that uh, Nick and I did yesterday. So I'll leave you with that. Enjoy your lunch while you're watching. And there's some really good, insightful information that comes out of our paddock walk yesterday. The first paddock walk of 2024. Well, hello and welcome to Clay Pigeon Raceway and more importantly, welcome to NKC 2024, the top kart championship. And to tell you why NKC is so important, it's the face of Carty Live TV. It's Joe Bradley. <laughs> hello, Nick. Um, we've waited a long time, haven't we? At last it's here. We ended 2023 here at Clay Pigeon. It seems right to kick off 2024 right here at Clay Pigeon. Little bit difference in the season this uh, in 2024. We have, a, we have two championships culminating in one big overall championship. So the first three rounds is for our Southern Cup. And then the final three rounds of the 2024 season, that's going to be for the Northern Cup. And the first three rounds are in the south. <laughs> and the, the last three rounds are in well, the Well, well, if Wilton Mill counts as the north. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, and we yeah. also have an O plate in Rowra, which would be great fun. But, of course, the key point is to find out what does the paddock think? What do the organisers think? What's going on? There's only one person who can find out the measure, the metre, the temperature in those awnings. Why, it's Joe Bradley. Joe, go and talk to everyone else. All right, then. So at the first round of any series, especially the Junction 6 NKC, we kind of, at this point of any season, we reflect back to last season. We've got a lot of hope and aspirations towards the 2024 season. But first, George Kidd, number 79 in Junior Rotax. George... It, it was the last round here in last year's NKC, and we've got some beautiful footage of what happened to you in uh, the B final, wasn't it? Yeah. So, right. just for the viewers, remind us what exactly happened. Uh, so, I was running in second place of the B final. It was all going amazing until my wheel, for some strange reason. You look, what are you looking at your dad for? What are you looking at your dad for? Yeah. Dad, would you like to explain what happened? Uh, Sorry, what's dad's name, firstly? I'm, Who's the... I'm Neil. Hello, uh, Neil. Hello. Uh, simple error mechanical error I was, I was changing lots on his setup and so focused on that i just left off the basic of checking his uh, his wheel nuts before he went out and off he went and as soon as his wheel come off I, kn I knew what i'd done wrong and i did apologize didn't i george yeah. so george in motorsport you you have to have the utmost faith and trust in your mechanics so how are you feeling going into 2024 then after that uh well, Dad is currently invested in a T-bar, so it doesn't happen again, <laughs> right. uh, which is quite nice, and hopefully it won't happen again. Um, so now I feel really confident and really ready for this year. So, all joking aside, George, yes, you know, you can look back at last year with, with a bit of light heart, and, and yes, you know, we can make sure it never happens again, so, yeah. you know. You've got to put that away, haven't you? And, yeah. and you've got, you're looking forward to 2024. Here you are, back at Clear Pigeon. So what, what are you looking forward to the most in 2024? Uh, I reckon we can do a lot better this year. We've now had a year in juniors and a national kart in year under our belt. Yeah. So we can come into the year knowing what to expect, a lot more confident and get some better results. After having quite a lot of bad luck as well last year, hopefully we can get a bit more luckier and then yeah. get some really good results and have a great championship year here at NKC. Looking at the calendar, um, do you know the, all the tracks that are on the calendar? For instance, we've got Forest Edge on the calendar here in the south. It's just sort of east from here, isn't it? Yeah. So do, you, do you know Forest Edge? No, we're not from uh, down south. So Forest Edge is the only track that we're going to go to this year that we won't have been to. So Forest might be a bit harder not having set up in the knowledge, but we'll soon get used to it and soon get the yeah. setup ready and be on pace before you know it. Yeah. So you're with Nathan, Nathan Chaffer's team. You've got a massive team behind you. Do you think that helps at all, having all of that sort of support behind you in case you know you need a, a quick engine change, for instance, or something? Uh, well, there's no other juniors, so right. that's a bit of a struggle because we lost our amazing teammate, Freddie Moore, from last year. Uh, they're all in seniors. They're also mostly on a different chassis. They're all on CRGs, so there's a difference there. But they are very helpful for if we need help. They do amazing food and 
They got a jig, welding, they do everything we need them to do and help us so much. You mentioned food. Now, an yeah. army fights its battles on its stomach, doesn't it? We've just had lunch called. Let's, Paul, follow me and George. We're going to have a walk round and see what sort of catering we have with NCR. Um, there was mention of a pizza oven, George. Is that right? Are we, are we going to see pizza on the menu maybe at tea time? We had pizza yesterday, so pizza probably won't be again. Ah, oh, look, look, um, look at this though, look at this. Yeah. So hot dogs, we've got hot dogs, Paul. Hot dog with fried onions, and this is, so this is the infamous NCR pizza oven then, George? I'm assuming so, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't really do much cooking myself, but it does probably look like it would do it, pizzas. It was, it was used last night, we had pizza and chips last night. <laughs> Thank so. Pizza and chips. Right then, George, it's been wonderful talking to you, and Thank hopefully you. you'll have a great weekend, if not a great season. Neil, I know what you're going to be doing last <laughs> thing at Park Fermi with his little tea bar There she is. Just get out of there, Paul, will you? That's our caterer. We're going to hang about here and hopefully get a hot dog. So this fella here, Jensen Watts, turned up three times last year and basically stole all the trophies. Now, Jensen, you're in for the season this time, so not just a one-off cherry pick of what trophies you're going to win, you're going for a championship, surely. Both the Southern and the Northern, I would expect. Yeah, that's the plan. We're only going for a win. Uh, that's what we're here to do. I'm glad this year we got one set of tyres for three rounds. People said last year we're trophy hunting, but this year we'll prove them wrong. Yeah, you're going to prove them wrong by being there at all six, then? That's the plan, yeah. And the all plate. Hopefully. Yeah. We should be there. I look so, so who are you with? I see Burrell on the uh, on the jacket there. You're with RP Burrell, yeah? Yeah, so this year we've joined Racing Perfection uh, Burrell team. This week we've got three drivers, but I'm sure going into championship we'll build a few more as we get going. So this is an advert then? So yeah. RP have got uh, spaces in the awning? We have, yeah. For the NKC. Uh, do you do anything else? Uh, all the local club rounds and right. we're at the British as well. So are you at your home track? Oh, I'd say Mansell's my home track. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. So this south of England. South of England. You're pr pretty familiar with Clear. I am fairly familiar. Yeah, I uh, grew up here. Uh, well, I actually grew up. Did my arcs test and that yeah, kind yeah. of novice plates. Um, I did a lot of racing in the Midlands, sort of in junior times. Um, right. But yeah, I've always stayed sort of close to home. Yeah. Come around here a couple times a year. Short lap. In fact, the shortest lap I think in the UK, Clear Pigeon. Yeah. Certainly in the NKSC. So what's the key? What's the key to getting a, a good run and a good lap time here? I said it last time, you've got a break later than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> you make that sound easy. Also, I think you've got to have the kind of support team behind you. Paul, if you just have a look behind Jensen here. So we've got a, a number of engines here. And Jensen, to be really serious about this, this business, it's not just about, you know, if you want to win a championship, you've got to have this kind of support these days, it seems. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Obviously, this year we've got the new barrels come out for Rotax. Yeah. So everyone's fighting for territory, I suppose. Uh, yeah, we're here testing some engines and hope to find some power. So do you find that a certain motor will work here at Clear? You're looking for your optimised run with your optimised kit. Do you find that that engine might not work so well, say, at Three Sisters? Yeah. Um, you know, some tracks, I'll give you Mans, for example, it's all about bottom end. It's a lot of slow right. corners, drive off the corner. Here, you've only got one real slow corner down at the hairpin. The rest of it's sort of mid-power. We haven't got any long straights. So you're looking for that mid-to-top range. Um, that's what you're looking for here. And is that the process that you're working to today? Is that the jobs list of, of, of trying to hone that setup, including the engine performance and the engine characteristic? Yeah, you sometimes find that you can get a lap time out of a certain setup, but in a race, can you overtake that setup? No, right. you need the power in the right places to send those moves. So it's do you sacrifice half a tenth for tenth for a good raceable race? Cut. Yeah, it all sounds far too complicated, mate. I wish you all the very best. I'm going to stay behind the microphone. It's much easier. Um, and I wish you all the very best. Have a great weekend, if not a great season. Thanks, guys. So the 2023 season, uh, the Minimax class was perhaps one of the most intense classes. This fella here, Sonny Morgan, battled it all the way through. At the end of the day, Sonny, you just missed out on the championship, but you still came away, came away as vice champion in Minimax. So that's something to be proud of last year, yeah? Yeah, 100%. The competition was close. Even though there wasn't really much of a big grid, people don't say it was people don't say it was as hard, but it was really struggled with me and Cork and we were bumper to bumper the entire way through the season, so it wasn't easy. Yeah, no, no. It only takes two carts and you boys yeah. really did it. So Sebastian isn't here this year, he's racing elsewhere. And because you have continued to grow, you have moved up from Minimax and you're now in the junior Rotax ranks. Yeah. And you're also running with Howarth Racing. Um, what, t tell us, we understand why you're now in juniors. What brought you to Phil's team? Well, we had a test day with Phil, well, a test weekend more like, and um, 
he really brought us on with driving in the wet conditions and he helped us out so much with setups of the cart. There was so much we didn't know and he's so knowledgeable over the cart and really knows what he's doing. Him and his dad and, and the team, they really, it's a really good team to be in and they helped us so much with the juniors because we wouldn't be on pace in juniors if it weren't for Phil. You've got, I mean, Phil's been racing since he was before, you know, younger than you. You've got all of that experience, and that's what you're gleaning from being a part of this outfit, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring Phil in. Phil, I want to ask you. He's saying really nice things about you, which is very rare, I've he's, got to say, in to this say paddock, is, yeah. to hear th nice things about Phil Howarth. So you've got Sonny here. You've got, I think, an expanded team, Phil, this season. It's you said again. you were winding down. I oh, know. You were yeah. winding down, but here you are. You've kind of come out the stocks well, we, well i've seen sunny uh, over the winter period mm. and um he, he's been pretty quick so he was one that i wanted in the team because I've, I've only had one junior now we've got three right yeah. so we're um, I'm, I'm hoping to put it put it in the front with him this this weekend we're fast enough so well phil it sonny's just been really really saying some yeah. nice things about about how you you've brought him on yeah. he mentioned you know you tutoring him and how to get the best in the wet is that something you enjoy passing on the like the, you know the sorcerer's apprentice passing on the magic down it's, um i i like the end result getting there is yeah. getting there is um is is a bit tedious at times but uh when, when i ran sunny down in the um i think it was dunk dunk as well in the wet in, um, dunk's well. Yeah, we um we done a day at Dunkswell and Clays. It's a double weekend, so mm. yeah. yeah. And he um he done everything I told him to do, and we actually we actually put it pole for the uh, the final. We drove it fantastically, so hopefully we can do it again here. Do you find it easier to drive the thing than actually watch one of your drivers out there, especially a young a, a kid? You know, he's he's quite unlucky really, because um, when I'm watching him, I, I I know when it's the car or when it's him. And um, right. when he's going to get told off, or when right. when there's a cart issue, so he he can't hide anywhere. He can't hide on the circuit. Looking forward to continuing those yeah. uh, those battles, Phil. That we've you've entertained us for a couple of seasons now yeah, on Karting Live TV. I mean, you know, it's been great. I think it's going to be exactly the same this year. <laughs> yes. It's not. It's definitely not going to change at all. It it's, um, it, we'll see how it goes, but it's definitely going to be hard. Hard racing. Uh, there's going to be no That's prisoners it. for me this yeah. year. Definitely never, not. Never is. Sonny, wish you all the best in the in the junior class. Uh, everybody, Phil has promised me he's got a volume control for the brightness on these shoulders. You'll not be able to miss him out there on the track, and we look forward to watching you two boys battle it out in your, in your respective classes. Sonny Morgan and Phil Howarth. Thanks, guys. The NKC for 2024 welcomes Coles Racing, one of the most renowned and reputable teams in UK karting. I've got the two men who are apparently in charge. Uh, could could you just introduce yourselves, guys? Yeah, my name's Connor Hall. I'm team manager at Coles Racing. Right, and I'm Ashley Whiteman. So yeah, second team manager at Coles right, Racing. Right, on the two. It's, it's, a, it's a two man job. I know. I've been there. Um, so I've, I'm going to ask. Who, who shall I ask first? Because the question is, what has brought Coles Racing to the NKC? Shall I ask you? Yeah, of course. Well, we really like it here, really, because. Um, the size of the grid is quite attracting to us. Right. I think when you go around and do some club racing, um, you're sort of looking at like between 20 to 30 drivers. But here, it's super, super challenging just purely because of the size of the grids. Right. So it really brings out the better in the drivers because of the size of the grids. And in the mixed heats as well, um, I think it highlights the driver's rating ability as well. Right. So that's what attracts us to this, really. Because that's the positive thing we take out of mixed grids. It te as much as it can be a bit of a fest, it also teaches you how to race. So was it was it the team that drew your customers to the series, or was it customer pressure that brought calls to the series? Which one? Who, who, who was going to answer that? Yeah, I, I think it was a little bit of both. We, our customers were interested in doing so. I think we looked back at the last year's results from the NKC series, and some of the drivers that were at the front end are very, very good drivers. So, you know, we wanted to race against ultimately, you know, some of the best drivers in the country. Um, and this looked like the sort of series that was probably affordable that would allow us to do so. Yeah. Do you guys see this as a kind of a um, a proving ground and apprenticeship. All right, it's a national series. We race all over the country. But do you see? Are you going to be bringing drivers through this series who are aiming at say UKC and with Vera Tills British? Absolutely. I mean, you know, the British is is the renowned championship. But this is a definitely. I wouldn't say a feeder series. It's up there. It's a, it's a different right. different market. You know, it's good. It's good track time. 
Um, you know, it's our first year doing it, but day two, we've had good track time so far. Like I said, the grids are really, really promising in all classes. Um, and there's been some, some names that, you know, the reason I say it's not a feeder is because there's some names that I've known from 10 years ago that are still here, you know, having a good time. You know, they've done all the British, they've done all of that, um, and yet they're still here racing. So, you know, all them years later. So it's obviously a series that's attractive to, to people. You know, it's cost effective with the tyres and the... And, yeah, the track time's been really good so far. I was going to ask that question, actually. So usually in karting, even at club level, we're throwing tyres at these things all the time, aren't we? So what sort of challenge is that, getting that one set of tyres to last three race weekends? Oh, I just want to firstly say, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's great for the sport and, and, and for the, for the mm. cost effect management for the, for, for the, for the uh, competitors. So the fact that we only got one for three, three rounds is... It's challenging for us because we're used to throwing tyres at it all the time, but it's also really good because when it comes to them second and third rounds, we're not throwing tyres at testing because we don't need to test for new tyres. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't just save on the race tyre, it saves with people trying to go for new for testing as well. Right, so you know, we're not yeah. just saving one set for two rounds, we're saving in three or four or five maybe sets yeah. of tyre. So that's where it's really beneficial. Also, I, know, I noticed behind us here the data analysis that goes on at this level of the sport, exactly the same at you know wherever the top level, whatever level it is, it's always you know we pull over data. What sort of you might not be able to answer this because it's only round one, but what sort of challenges can you foresee with regards to the technicalities of car setup with those worn tyres by round three? I think that is probably a question we'll probably be better off answering <laughs> round, at, three. At round three. I think <laughs> yeah. we'll let you know. As a team, it's not actually something we do too often. If you were to say to us like a three day old set of tires, we'd almost be throwing them in the bin. You would so undoubtedly be throwing them in the bin. They'd have, have been in the bin two weekends ago. Yeah. So I think um, we'll, we'll take it as it comes. But yeah. I, do, I do think there will be challenges for us definitely at round three on cart setup. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's something that we'll obviously compare against drivers setup wise. The setup will 100% be different from you know, a day old set of tires compared to a three day old set of tires. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it is something that we will assess at the round sort of thing yeah, yeah. and see what we need to adjust to sort of compensate for the older tire. I think yeah. the, the championships picked a good set of tires for degradation, yeah. as in, you know, yeah. we're not running the same tires they do yeah. with the British. Yeah. If that, that would be a very big struggle three <laughs> days in. Impossible. But, you know, so <laughs> hopefully that, that benefits us. Yes. Again, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll great. So you guys in for the full six rounds uh, and the all plate, of course. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. A lot of happy, smiling customers behind. Yeah, Paul, just to to get them on there. Yeah. yeah, they're all trying to make them laugh. Well, over the course of the season, I will be getting a chat with them. So, th guys, thank you very much thank for you very your much. insight. Uh, welcome to the NKC. It's thank great to have the great likes here. of calls here, and it only just enhances the credibility and the and the the, the kudos that we have for this national series. Brilliant. Thank you. So which class in the NKC is the most intensive? Which class has the best competition? It's like choosing your favourite child. You can't because every single class is absolutely up there when it comes to drama and intensity and none more so than the TKM class. Mitchell Bolt, Mitch, you carried off the championship last year, but it was like literally down to the last few minutes of the season, wasn't it? T tell us a little bit about how that went and, and what happened afterwards. How much of a celebration was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going into the uh, the last race, Charlie and I were the main sort of championship protagonists, were of level on points, perfectly yeah. level. Um, so it was whoever won or whoever finished ahead of the other was the one who would be champion. And it just so happened I had the right cart and the right uh, driving skills at that time to be able yeah. to sort of get away from it. And yeah, there was some celebration, to be honest. So <laughs> yeah. only stopped sort of last weekend, went out to do a bit of a preparation <laughs> round to get ready for this, you know. I mean, it's so hard fought. I mean, TKM especially. Uh, I don't know whether it's something about the carts, maybe the narrower track. You guys can go around each other and overtake and go three wide in places that the other, the, perhaps the wider road axe classes can't. And that just adds, certainly from our point of view, that adds to the entertainment. What's it like from the driver's seat? Uh, I think the main reason that TKM is as it is, is that they're underpowered, essentially. You know, They're quite right. low power engines, so it's all about momentum, smoothness, keeping the car, you know, perfect at all times. Rotax, you sort of, you know, part of the driving style is sliding, whereas in TKM, right. it's all about keeping momentum. And that leads to, you know, you get better and better at, at overtaking and keeping momentum and getting around people and stuff like that, you know. 
Is there anything different on the cart this year? It, or, I mean, I know the regulations kind of stifle development in that front. So is it basically exactly what you were running with the last, say, the last couple of seasons? Yeah, one kilo extra lead, to be honest. The weight limit's gone up. Ooh, that's good. Oh, right. Yeah. It's not like you've lost it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We've got one kilo extra on on the seat just to make that. Other than right. that, I think we uh, cart itself exactly the same. Is that going to make a massive difference at all? No, no, right. You know, it, everyone's in the same boat. It doesn't matter. You know, it makes no difference to any of us, really. It seems an obvious question, and I think at round one, possibly a question is impossible to answer. Um, but, you know, what, what are you looking forward to the most? I mean, all right, we know it's going to be winning another championship, but that's just so hard, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we, there's some good competition uh, this year, especially Jamie, Charlie, current Charlie's a vice British champion in the other series. Um, and he's vice champion here. Jamie's come from a sort of X30 background. He's got a lot of experience. Mm. Um, I'm excited for the, some new circuits, Forest Edge. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Warden Law either, right. although it is a bit of a journey. Yeah. Um, and for me, I live two miles from well, there. There you go. Yeah, it's easy for you. Uh, excited to get to those circuits, yeah. Um, try and learn them as best I possibly can. And yeah. uh, like you say, hopefully retain the championship. Drive around the best. Yeah, drive around quicker than anyone else. Um, I wish you all the very best. I also want to thank you from everybody uh, on Karting Live TV and NKC to thank you very much from uh, Junction 6. Uh, Junction 6 is your company. You are the series sponsor once again for the second year. Um, you know, it, 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 you get, what do you get from that exactly? I mean, you know, not necessarily commercially, but supporting the championship, I suppose, is, is the objective. Yeah, you know, I've been racing with the NKC for like, I think since the second year that it was running mm -hmm. um, and essentially we just really like what Chris and Ollie and all the guys are doing with the series and so I think we had one year we weren't the sponsor and since then we decided we'd just keep sponsoring it because right. we like the way it's going we think it's the right thing for karting especially grassroots or TKM and Rot Rotax stuff yeah. it's the right way to keep the classes going lower costs better organization and we just love what they're doing so Great stuff. Keeps Thanks, Mitch. Best of luck for this season. Thank you very much. Best of luck for the weekend. Thank you. Mitchell Ball, our current champion. Well, we want to find out about a championship. You come to the source of the information, the organiser, the man in charge, well, equally in charge, Oli Nitschmidt. Oli, um, 2024, NKC, bumper grids already, but a couple of changes. Less classes, but more people in each class. You must be really chuffed with the entry. Uh, yeah, another brilliant entry for 2024. Um, We've lost the Minimax class this year, but as a result, we've now got up to sort of 80 registered for juniors, um, senior Rotax up into the 70s, and Rotax 177. Uh, I think we're one of the only championships now running with the class, um, and we've had over 80 entries. So it's a um, superb turnout. Um, I'm really pleased to say that we've still got senior TKM, which is a, uh, it's a class close to our hearts. Um, we've got over 20 entries, again it's the biggest in the country and, um, and we're really glad to see that class still progress and we want to keep it going as long as we can. And the good thing was he was just heckled by the start of the junior road tax practice, that was quite good. Um, now a few changes to the sort of championship layout this year, we've got a southern and northern cup, explain the, 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 the idea behind that. Um, so this is something we did uh, a few years ago at a southern and northern cup. The reasoning behind it is not all. We are we are budget focused championship. We're very competitive, but we do um, focus on the budget. And we try and keep the prices down for our drivers. Um, and part of that, you know, travel is expensive. Hotels are expensive, so we like to offer a sort of sub championship for those drivers that can't make it um, all the way up to Warden Law or to Rara, but they just want to focus on. They want to win a championship, but. They want to stay on their like the southern area, wherever they're based. Um, so it just gives, and it also gives something uh, another championship for drivers to race for. Yeah, and you mentioned Warden Law. We've got two new tracks this series. Warden Law, that uh, glorious edifice in the northeast, home to the voice and the face of Karting Live TV, Joe Bradley. I have to keep saying that, by the way. It's TM. Um, but also we're going to Forest Edge as well, a track I think is very rarely used by championships. So give us an idea of why you decided to uh, to choose those two tracks. Um, well, I mean, Joe has been pushing Warden Law for, uh, for a couple of years to us. I think ever since they did a lot of uh, upgrades to the track, we've, um, we've always wanted to go there. So uh, we're really pleased to be going there for our final round for the, um, the championship decider. So that's going to be great. Um, Forest Edge is, historically, it's always been a motorsport UK track. 
Um, harder to get to for championships. They're limited on how many days a year they can run. Um, but two of the committee members race with us um, and they've been really instrumental in helping us uh, get to the track. And it's, it's, a, it's a big favourite, uh, loads of space um, and looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to mix the championship. I mean, of course, we have an O-plate, and that's at Rowra, so we all get to spend three days up in the uh, the Lake District um, with Malcolm and the team. <laughs> that's it, yeah. The, yeah the, um, everyone can come and join us at Rowra. That's an open open round, so you don't have to be a registered member. Uh, it's in July, and it's, uh, yeah, it's at the beautiful Rowra circuit, which, you know, it's another track we love. Um, format is to be decided, but it will be a three-day event with practice on Friday, and uh, two days of racing Saturday and Sunday. And being July, there's a slight chance it won't rain, possibly. <laughs> well, you never know, you never know, Nick. We'll, uh, we'll have to see, but can't promise that. Um, but we've been there through rain, snow, sleep, and beautiful sunshine. So um, either way, it's a great place to be. We've previously mentioned, though, that the, the big entry. What, what do you put the health of this championship down? Because some of the championships are going OK, some are struggling. This one's just growing every year. Why do you think that is? Um, we try and do things right. We try and uh, we listen to our customers. Um, we have sensible rules. Um, people don't need to be spending thousands of tyres each month. Um, so we do everything we can just to, to really look after the drivers in terms of the budget. Um, we, we choose good circuits and we, we do the best as we can with, uh, with the budget we have as well. So, and we have a great team behind us. So you do. Ollie, thank you very much and good luck for 2024. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys.
Welcome back to Clear Pigeon for the rest of the first round of the NKC. The 2024 season has certainly kicked off in some splendid style. The racing has been intense. Dare I say it, it's all been very clean and good fun so far with some fabulous, fabulous driving from... Why did you say that? I know, I know, I've said it now, haven't I? I shouldn't really. We're about to kick off with the junior raw tax heat. Um... Is this real? What number is this race? We've got Max Junior, Chown. That, that was, that, no, that was right, the last that one. Was the, yeah, that, that was, that was the confusing last one. me. Yes, Nothing Max Chown is the driver that's You're going to be quick because about to start. Dalton Hayward is up there. And we're away. Swills, but we are aware we get racing this afternoon. We've got a few heats to get through, and then we go into the all-important finals. Swales took the lead there, going into the... Uh, but he's blind for the first time. Oh, they managed to get most mostly, of mostly them through quite cleanly. Yeah, into the uh, hands hairpin. A little bit of moving and shaking. Three wide at the back of the field, but the leaders come through cleanly into the horseshoe for the first time. And it's a 10 from the 76, so it is indeed swells from Chown. Lincoln Bevan was scored third over the line. There's been some shuffling since then. I think it will maybe be Lincoln who is in third, Joe, as they come down underneath us for the first time. Well, it's the number 76, the bright orange cart of Max Chown, who chases after Will Swills. Lincoln Bevan third, Withcombe is fourth, Harris Roberts fifth. Charlie F. Griff, Archie Hardiman, Adam Catling, Nathan Traverse and Ryan Sears. We look for down the order. Amy Peacock in 13th. Keep an eye on Amy. She had an absolutely outstanding first eight earlier on this morning in the black and red liveried cart. She's got a little bit to go before she gets she on terms with She didn't make much progress. The she was actually on the one before the, the just delayed race before lunch as well. Ah, of course. And yeah. she didn't really move, move up on that. I think she kind of got up to about 10th or 11th in the end. So... Got, I think you know. Sometimes you're stuck in a, in a train of traffic, yeah, and it's, it's hard to get through. It depends on who you're with. Right now, though, a driver that isn't stuck and up in the third place has gone. Joshua Withcombe. We've seen how quick Josh can be, and already moving ahead of Lincoln Bevan, who's no slouch at all. And now Withcombe chasing after that bright orange cart of Max Chount. Hard to see how we can keep him back. Chown, that is. Withcombe has had some massive pace this morning and it, that pace continues into the afternoon. Yeah, and the thing to remember is that you need, you can't, you can't do the normal thing of two good results and one uh, result. You have to have three good results. You've got an A, B and a C final. You know, two goods and, a, and an average is going to put you down the back end of the, of the A final or even perhaps at the, at the start of the B final. So, you know, it is so much more to play for with such a much bigger, much bigger um field because of course you're not racing against everyone every time in fact you probably only mm. once you'll race against your major That's rivals and so it's really difficult you have you can't sit back for one second because every place will be so important you know on the cusp of b to c or b to a but more importantly you know in this situation you're very unlikely if you, get, if you start outside the top six or seven you have to win the race or win the event sorry that's that's very true nick and that's very much at the forefront of a driver like joshua withcombe's head uh, in, in his head right now, he's already ahead of Chown. The number 76 dropping behind him as he now chases after Will Swills, who's less than a second up the road. That's the two carts there, the two leading baton just ahead of these two is where we need to be, Paul. No, third and fourth's battle at the moment. It's still stretched out between second, first and second, so third and fourth's fine. We'll perhaps let them all sweep through um, on the, the, our lower camera and see we'll see one, two, three, and four. And <laughs> there they go. Wide round, two pairs. Noah's arcing it, as they often do in these karting competitions. Up towards the hairpin, though. It's third and fourth. We're a much, much closer. It's a move for position. And I think that will see Harris Roberts getting past Chow, and it does. So Roberts moves into third place in that menacing black machine with the, uh, the helmet. It's got a, it must be Lewis Hamilton sort of replica helmet or something. He's got massive monster claw look at that M on the side of his helmet that's the uh, the black move but now we need to move first and second are right together it wasn't going to take long for Withcombe to get on terms with Swales now we're going to take a guess at the liveries <laughs> um, are there two calls carts they look similar but yeah. there's a, a, a this one of his propensity to paint th they look similar but they're not the same no they're different I think they look very very similar one of them's a Coles car. I think the leaders. Are, I think uh, Swales is a Coles car, definitely. I'm not so sure about Withcombe in the 29. Yeah, now I thought Withcombe might have made a challenge there on that lap. Uh, he hasn't, and he still stays behind. There's the favourite passing place of pretty much everyone. So that's the number 29. The yellow and black helmet of Will Swales. 
looks over his shoulder there. As well as he's, he's quite relaxed in leaving. He he's, he's not. He's, he's not composed, looking like he, he's, he's not looking like he's feeling under any pressure. I think he's realised he's safe. There's about three places you can all go wrong. The first one is here. If you go too wide and lose the drive, and again coming in tight at the exit of the top bend, he's done it. And they both follow each other down. You'll get a slipstream, but not enough to get past. Now at this point, if you don't come side by side, you just can, just defend the inner line. Don't go wide. You can hold them back there. Slightly more difficult going into the the hairpin because there's two options of going. Yeah, it's it's sometimes about it, it's sometimes about it's sometimes about that breaking area into Billy's blind. To be honest, Nick, and it's about being in a position to mount a challenge into the breaking area. They're they're about to get to the part of the track that we are talking about. Here they come across the line. Then it'll be nine laps completed into the braking area no he just has a little you can see kind of his body language just looking at that where he's going to mount the move and sliding very wide the number 10 of will swills that's he lost a lot of pace there and there's oh, the move yeah. at han hairpin the han hairpin was where it happened and nick that happened way back at the mm. s's when swills had a massive oversteer slide yeah. coming out the corner a little bit too much boot a bit too early and uh, it was, I think he went deep into the corner as well. That opened the gap. So what he was trying well, to make up for yeah, at the exactly. He sat there knowing he hadn't yeah. got the drive and realising it would probably be a side-by-side -side situation. Um, you know, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a bad thing to do. So these two running at the front of this junior row. I think we're going to see Whitcomb now disappear. So we'll just get a grip of, uh, of what's happening behind them. We've got Whitcomb leading. Swill second. It'll be 11 laps completed next time by Harris Roberts, third. Max Chan, fourth. Nathan Traverse, as in fifth. Lincoln Bevan, sixth. Tom Holden, we saw how quick Tom can be. Amy Peacock, up to, up to eighth now on the number 17. And then Adam Catling on the triple seven numbered cart in ninth. That's Harvey Williams crossing the line just underneath us now, right on the... And he's got Danny May Reid, Archie Hardiman, Caden Welsh, Billy Vogue right on his tail. Yeah, I think this is getting a bit sorted out. Let's just touch it. We can drop back to sort of like fifth and sixth. There's three of them together in five, six, and seven. Uh, headed up by bright orange car, but chasing through is the 87 of Tom Holden. Again, with Peacock. Holden and Peacock were involved in that first team, mm, weren't they, together? That's right, They're together, now yeah. Now sweeping around the top of the circuit. Yeah, they were, uh, they were absolutely. Here they come across the line there there's the there's the field and there's the battle we've been looking for four cart train really together into the s's that's lincoln bevan amy peacock adam catling and harvey williams that's the hand hairpin you see them just squirming on the brakes into there that's a great shot as it just shows how downhill that is that's Peacock on, the, over on the back of that. Yeah, Oliver Bevan. Ahead of Bevan is Tom Holden on the number 87. And it looks like they've, they've pulled away yeah. and left Bevan to the clutches of Amy Peacock. And sh that's there she goes, down the inside. Just got enough break to stop going too wide there at uh, Billy's blind. So she's able to complete the move and move up to seventh, which is going to be... Yeah, with her third heat not being brilliant, I, mean, I think she'll be probably mid-pack at the end of the day, despite you know, kind of starring a couple of the, sh of the, of the races we've shown. That's uh, Tom Holden on the 87. That's with the black overalls. The white helmet is Nathan Traverse, who's holding his ground. They're into the last lap now. That's the last lap board flying from the start in Gantry there. And as they go through the S's for the, for the last time, Josh Withcombe. Will Swills, Harris Roberts, Max Chown are the four carts ahead of this this little battle that's uh, going on four, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Oh, and there's somebody going wide. I think that was a back marker though. Yeah, it's a two-one something. Yeah. And that's Max Chown coming back towards Traverse as Withcombe takes the flag. Will second, Harris Roberts third. Max Chown will cross the line in fourth. Nathan Traverse was fifth. <clears throat> then we've got Tom Holden, Amy Peacock, Lincoln Bevan, Adam Catling, Danny May Reed finishes in 10th. And then outside the top 10, Harvey Williams, Caden Welsh, Archie Hardiman, Billy Vogt, Ryan Sears, Jill Leverton, Jacob Hobbs, Sonny Morgan, Jacob Onslow, and Samuel Aston. 
And now you go for a cover, Flemmy Cough. <laughs> <laughs> What's up next, Joe? Um, well, the that was the sixth heat we've had for Junior Rotax. Next out, we've got Senior Rotax. This is the 162 class that are out next. Got Oli Varney, a familiar name to Junction 6 NKC viewers. Oli will start on the pole position with Ben Harper alongside. Got Alfie Bushel and Henry Stratton starting on the second row. Martin Bramwell and Ashton French are on row three. Jack Maiden and Henry Swanson are on row four. Michael Thompson and Philip Howarth is are on row five. James Becker and Matthew Griffin are next. Seventh row, Kieran Thompson George Hulm. Kelgrate, Archie Carter, James Cutting, Finley Underwood. Jamie Burt and Ethan Lomax are on row ten. Paolo Nunes Aranda and Rufus Flan are on row 11. Sam Cresswell and Harry Wright are on row 12. Ryan Shepherd and reigning champion Bobby Rosie are starting at the back there on row 13. Harry Pearson and Zach Fletcher are next. And then Jeremy Hawthorne and Reese Knight round off the 30-cart field for this 15th. Um, we've no Jensen Watts in this one, but we have got the current champion Bobby Rosier and we have got Philip Howarth. Mm. Um, ahead of Philip Howarth is Ashton French, Martin Bramwell, uh, you can't discount Henry Swanson or Jack Maidman or indeed Henry Stratton, Alfie Bush or Lonnie Vart. In fact, you can't discount anybody. Because you know what? Everybody in this championship... It's because Joe is, doesn't do discounts. Is, well, <laughs> it's because everybody is a, a bit, you know, the very, very, it's a very good standard. Uh, Martin Taylor makes a good point. Massive thank you to the Orange Army out there today in the sun, keeping all the drivers safe from waving flags to pointing the tyres, pointing the tires, putting the tyres back, keep the action going. OK, low five bangers, which is fantastic... Uh, uh, handle on YouTube says, come on Bobby you got this championship Bobby is this a Bobby Bobby Rosier on pole isn't he yeah yeah no mm. no no he's at the back he's at the back he's, oh, he's at the back champion Bobby, Bobby yeah, one. Yeah, he's right. carrying the number one and he's starting on 26 so alright no. uh, let's have a quick quick gamble guess where do you think he'll finish I think he'll finish in about 10th oh, I was going to go 13th alright let's see who wins I think he'll be doing very well to get in the top 10 uh, like I said the uh, the, the calibre of and quality of the field here in the Junction 6 NKC just gets better and better as years go by. I mean, the same competitors that were with us four years ago have now got four years of, of heavy-duty karting experience under mm. their belt at all of these literally, tracks. Literally heavy-duty in the 177. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't at that either. Well, it's, it is my... I, I was in, girls I, and boys. I've only ever karted in heavy. I was in the 100 heavy in, when I was karting in 88, 89, 90. And I was actually light then. <laughs> exactly, this is what I mean. It, right, we've got them all uh, formed up very nicely. Ollie Varney doing a great job bringing them out of the final turn. That's top bend there at the top of the track. And then we'll get them to the ah, acceleration yeah. line and then we'll get them underway. And they're off. And it was a good start from the two, Varney. Yeah, Ollie Varney. Went across quite quickly. I think the out row may have had an issue there. In, in, in losing a couple of places in Bushel. I can't tell quite. I think Bushel may have lost another place. Well, it's hard at the moment. We'll see if they come into the... Uh, yeah, it's the 62 with Harper in second as they go into uh, the Hans Hairpin for the first time. And they come sweeping out the horseshoe. It's a really line of stern, very neat. Philip Howarth up to fifth, by the way. Oli Varney carrying the number two. He's the current NKC vice champion, 23. The 2023 championship saw him finish second. There's Howarth making Fourth. his way past another of our competitors. They cross the line for the first time. Varney, Harper, Bushel, Howarth, third. French. Ooh, we lent on him there. We're watching, we're watching, we're watching Howarth uh, out well, the window. Howarth's, Howarth's yeah, another one picked I mean, off, Bushel. That was a little bit kind of um, more, um, what's the word for it, uh, block passery. Right, now then, I know we uh, we focus on the faster drivers coming through the order, that familiar cart number 101. It's going to be a very interesting final, isn't it, when all of these fast drivers come together. Ben Harper is the next driver on Howarth's list. He's got a little bit of a gap there. And Ben Harper will look over his shoulder and see that distinctive gold helmet behind him. The Howarth Racing livery. That's the number 77 of Jack Maidman. He's got a bit of a... He's in a bit of a train of carts there. He's got... Uh, French behind him. And yeah, then behind French He's got Bushel up. ahead of him. Yeah. So they're all pushing away. There's kind of a bit of a gap. But for the top three, a sort of gap. But they came back together again. Olive Varney got himself away really nicely. But that's now eased back. And I would say that Ben Harper is moving as fast as Howard, but they're both moving quicker than Varney at the front. So one, two, and three is where the action is now. Top three, street pass. And we're going to start seeing them coming together. And my guess is 
that both Varney and Howarth will pass. So both Harper and Howarth will pass Varney. But where Varney is order, I don't know. I, I don't know, Nick. I'll take your 20 quid uh, bet off you, mate. But these two will remain behind Oli Varney. He's no, carrying, the number, he's carrying the number two for they're, a reason. No, they'll get, they, I, there's just there's pace there. There's Fastest pace lap there. of the race last time by was Philip Howarth. Uh, update on Bobby Rose here. He's up to 20th, so he has... He has progressed six places up the grid order from the start. Will it be 13th? Will it be 10th? Good Here luck, they come. Bushel, they are French, coming. To, they are coming together. RS2. Well, this is this is what I predicted. I am Mystic Nick uh, in the karting world, and I predicted that. And they are now streaking through the S's. It's beautiful. It's, it's, amazing, it's amazing how lovely these things look, glinting in the sun, isn't it? Because there's a lot of fluoro in there, and there's a lot of chrome stuff, and they've got their, their highlighted helmets. But Howarth now, oh. he's got the glinting teeth of a shark oh. as he switches underneath the 62. Harper goes down, Howarth into second, and now he's going to set about Oli Varney. But Varney yes, he benefited from that, managed to maintain his lead as, as the second and third swapped. So he's done a little bit of a favour to Varney there by breaking them up. There were all three of them with bumper to bumper. Can he make a move down into the inside? And Ooh. Billy's blind. And that's allowed Harper to come up and challenge for second. Howarth leads though, Nick. Yeah. And that was a very... And you're right, mate. Um, certainly. That was... That was the last of the late break as he had to use a bit of the inside curb and just look sliding wide there. Not enough momentum, though, for Harper to get down the inside yeah. towards the S's. But I think Harper's going to have a go at uh, Olivani. Yeah, no I mean, question. How has got himself ahead? Now, knowing this is Phil now, Phil will probably get himself, what, one or two second lead and then hold it. He won't try and do the, you know, the, the, the Max Verstappen in the sprint race where he was 27 laps, seconds ahead off at four laps of getting the lead. You know, he won't do that. He'll just take it careful. Well, but now that, the battle that, is second and third. We, we call that tyre management in the NKC. Well, we have we, to. You have we to have, we have, Yeah, well, you have to think about your tyres. You can't just try... I mean, I, I think there'll be very little thought given to tyres when it comes to the final. Oh, none. But right now, Philip's thinking about the state of his tyres going into the final. But as we get to rounds two and three, we're going to be on the same set of slick tyres. And that's going to take some pretty magical setup work from... Uh, some sort, some sort of you know knowledgeable engineers within this karting paddock to get the best out of those well-worn tyres. Yeah. I suppose we could have a bit of rain. We didn't last year though, did we? Not enough. We had a, we had a half. We lost half a day, I think, for rain at Wilton Mill. Cause it always it always rains at Wilton Mill. So we've got Ben Harper challenging Olivani behind those two. We've got the the rest of the field pretty strung out, to be honest. Jack Maidman is the driver who's fourth. Ashton French, Alfie Bushell, Ethan Lomax, James Becker, Rufus Flan, Jamie Burt. That's your top ten. I mean, there's all hell breaking loose behind. Bobby Rosiak and report the current champion up now to 16th. So he's, he's had uh, an increase of ten places from the start. And it, they go through the horseshoe, that double apex left-hander, then very quickly in the button Barney's doing well though he's, he's not being phased at all by, by Harper and, you know, I think you're, you're, mm. you're, you're, my prediction half came right I think your prediction half coming right and the Varney whilst there's a lot of pressure from Harper doesn't seem phased by him and you wouldn't put you know, your house on the fact that he'll, he'll be overtaken by Harper no you who's wouldn't that, who's that? Yeah. it's Jack Maven who's joined the fun yeah, isn't yeah, it at the back yeah, yeah and kind of with yeah we're just inside two and a half minutes remaining really so the drivers can see how much time is on the clock on the notice board I think I yeah, can't quite it see it just on, outside on the, on the, there's a gantry <coughs> on the start finish but one of the few things you can't really see in any of our cameras there's a gantry that has uh, the flags and if it be a checker flag or a white flag or a black and white but it also has a countdown clock so every lap they know how long's left and of course being at uh, Clay Pigeon there's a lot more laps left than uh, at other tracks it's a very short very fast lap. I must be it's been noticeable today how they actually much more bang 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 because of the shorter laps and the, and the shorter distances and even things like getting the carts back because it's not as far to go. You don't have the huge it's, delays. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So yeah, this, when co you this compact and classic kart circuit actually pays dividends in a number of ways. Uh, the shortest kart track that is used at this level, 815 metres here at Clear Pigeon, I think the longest track that we will visit is, I think it's Rowra. I think how it's Rowra. How long is Warden Law? Uh... Actually, I think I think it's I think we're twelve hundred meters. Yeah, I think it's twelve hundred yeah. meters. So Ward Law yeah. will be the longest uh, that we're going to visit. So there this year. they go. It's a new track to the NKC, of course, that we're going to finish off the season, the full season, and 
of course just to remind everybody that the first three rounds of the championship based in the south of England uh, form the Southern Cup part of the 2024 championship and then the all plate in July and then the last three rounds in the north of England getting racy. this is a great race oh, from these getting two racy. yeah but it, well, unless he's unless he's decided I'm going to do it on the penultimate or the ultimate lap because I just don't want to have a chance of him coming back at me. Look how little he's, Varney is looking over his yeah, shoulder. I mean, you, you. I think that Harper is close enough to give it a shot, not necessarily a hundred percent shot, you know, like a fifty percent shot, but he perhaps he just thinks that the third's fine. You know what, kids? Just check out this this drive from Ollie Varney on the number two. Came second in the championship this year, so we know how quick he is. Look how little he's looking over his shoulders. If I hear a driver coach say, why are you looking over your shoulder all the time to a kid mm. who, you know, just coming into the sport, it's quite disconcerting. You can hear the engine from the cart behind you. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, he, he's not defending. He knows it's the last lap board coming up. He's not looking over his shoulder. And if you're not looking over your shoulder, then you can actually say it with sincerity and honesty, I didn't see you, mate, when I turned <laughs> in on you. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, that's this, the story this gap, I'm which sticking has been to. One or two tenths. It's been one or two tenths for the last six or seven laps. And La- last e- lap board, by the way, Nick. Yeah, at every point, Varney seems to have this in control. Now, does Ben Harper have anything special? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen as a move now coming into the hairpin. The first look over the shoulder there no. from Varney, but it didn't happen. Didn't need to. Ooh, I, I don't think that, he needs to because he got, got the pace. Slight, he got the exit slightly wrong there, but that's one, of the, that's one of the places where you can actually make a small error. The exit hairpin, it doesn't cost you anything. An error at this corner here would cost you, but they're coming over the line now. Phil Howarth is going to take a massive uh, jump towards pole position, which he's fighting obviously with, uh, with Jensen, but here we go, and they're across the line. That was a, a very satisfying win, I would think, from Philip Howarth. Howarth racing here in, uh, in strength, running an expanded team into 2024. Oli Varney, the vice champion from 2023. You squeeze my shoulders there. Yeah, there is other big news apart from the order. All right, I'll quickly run down the tent. No, because I'm just going to tell you, I can't wait. You said 10th, I said 13th. Ah, yes. Bobby Rose here was? 12th. 12th, so it's one to me. He's, yeah, he's yeah. closer to yours. Closer to me. I yes. am okay. Mystic Nick, All right, okay. the carting god. Yeah, <laughs> not exactly on the no. nosy, though, are you? So you've interrupted my rundown of the top ten it's to say that rundown. about you. Oh, look at his dog. <laughs> There's oh, a lovely dog. It's an NKC dog. It's got an NKC logo on the... On I, the uh, I like it. I like it. I like I it. I believe our dog correspondent is uh, Matt Guppy. Yeah, what sort of dog is that? That then? looks like a Tibetan Spaniel to me. A what, sorry? A Tibetan Spaniel. But a it Tibetan might, Spaniel. It might be a cockapoo. They're all quite similar these days. Um, things. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. I like the little NKC livery on its uh, on its jacket. Good. Go on, do the top ten then. That was that was <laughs> Ash actually. Was it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was Ash. That was Ash. Ash was doing dog watch. I do apologize. Yeah. Ash, Ash Lantine doing dog dog watch. Yeah. Everyone knows that if you want to please me as the person who actually in the end writes the checks rather than Paul's actually the director, um, it's dogs or, or weird, weird shoes. I'm happy with both of those. We have spent many a time at an RC event just showing the ridiculous shoes people wear. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Right, top ten from the... Shall I do it? From, yeah, go on. Then. So it's Phil Howarth who uh, was first. What is it? In the it's Rotax, so long senior ago. <laughs> Rotax Heat 5. Yeah, senior what? Rotax. What? Heat 5. What? what NKC. What yeah, but what weird category was it? Senior. Yeah. Not senior he- what? Ordinary. Not heavy. 162. Yeah. Did you forget the number? No, because it says it's Rotax 177 at the top when it's heavy. All right, go on. So it was Phil Howard, stop bullying me. You're in trouble. Oh, Ollie Varney, Ben Harper, Jack Maidman, Ethan Lomax, Ashton French, Rufus Flan, Alfie Bush. It's gone. <laughs> because you had you, one job. You, you delayed had, me. You had one job. Sure. Right, senior TKMs are out. This is the air cooled. Shocking. 110cc <laughs> air cooled direct drive engines from TKM that are on the You're lucky these it's cars. got a shorter grid because you've got three corners to do it. Well, I think I can. Uh, ben Watson <laughs> and Jake Humphrey are on row one. James Hill and Jack Crisp are on row two. Then we've got Sam Cope and Tom Johnson. Harrison Morrow, Ryan Layton, Matt Slate and Mitchell Ball, winner of 8-1, uh, uh, sharing row five with him. Molly Nicholas, Biles and Chris Whiteside are next. Then we've got Joseph Phillips, James Workman, Matthew Temple Purcell, Leo Crabtree, Jamie Mead, Liv Jenkins, Will Cregeen, Alexander Lehman, James King, Charlie King and Samuel King. All the Kings, mm. the last three carts at the back of this We three Kings. 
We three kings. We three, three kings of TKMR. Now then, the TKMs Driving usually... fast in our car. Nick, stop. <laughs> um, these usually get another lap. <laughs> but they're not. Once again, we get them straight off and racing from the very outset. And okay. everybody through Billy's blind turn one here at Clear Pigeon. Great start. And then off through the S's. Great start from Jake Humphrey in the 51. He's made the advantage of the bolt. The second and third are about to change. They're going into Hans Hairpin. And a few more. Oh, go, they say that. But then I think they went too wide. So they changed back again. So into that second position is the five. Yeah, Ben Watson kept it. Lost it and gained it all through the hairpin. So Watson remains second. And I expect it's going to be Jack Crisp in third. Well, Ben Watson, fifth in the championship in 2023, will chase down Jake Humphrey as the field come through. Humphrey, Watson, Crisp, Hull, Harrison Morrill, fifth, Mitchell Ball, sixth, Tom Johnson, Ryan Leighton, Matt Slate, and Jimmy Mead rounding off the top ten. Yeah, great action. But just a quick question I have for you, Joe, which you can answer during the course of this commentary. Why would you choose to race TKMs rather than Rotax? What is, what is, what is, the, what is the defining factor? Why would, what would make the choice for you? As they lead away, there's the one car of Mitchell Ball down in sixth. Mitchell, of course, won the first seat quite easily. You're thinking that one, are you? You're thinking how to answer my question. Yeah, I think, I think the people who ask that question are the actual TKM, uh, the TKM competitors and the, and the Rodas competitors. I think they, even though they're very similar, I mean, a car chassis is a car chassis, but the narrow, so narrow track... They're less powered than a Rot Axe Max. They've got less power. Oh, where's the change to the there's lead? The, yep, there's the lead. About to be challenged no. for side by side out of Han Airpin, mm. then towards the horseshoe. We'll leave the answer to Nick's question now, till when this second. calms this, this down. Is, this is interesting because this is the second time when someone's tried to get round the hairpin and it's over and under not work. Is there a difference in the power delivery? It means it's, you, ha you can't do the, get past the hairpin the same way you can with a Rotax. Absolutely. They, they, are, they, are, they are underpowered. And if you listened to the paddock walk, you will do. hear Mitchell Ball tell us it's all about momentum in this mm. class because of your lack of power. You mm. can't punch the cart out of the corner if you make a mistake. Andrew Johnson. Here we go again. Here we go again. There's the move down the inside at the hand hairpin. And this time the number five of Ben Watson. And look who's coming. Oh, the the yellow Mitchell and blue Ball. cart of wow, Mitchell great Ball. Move, great the move. number one is on fire this year. That was absolute opportunist cart racing at its very best there for Mitchell. He went, oh, look, oh, you're there. Oh, I'll just have that position. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely did. Have a look, let's have another look at it. Look at that. Because the number 51 of Jake Humphrey was stifled coming out the hand yeah. and having to relinquish that lead to the number five. Mitchell Ball was there to pounce. Great stuff. Um, uh, Andrew Jarman said the difference is that TKM has the best people. Well, that's a very valid, valid point. From YouTube. It's so a, It's on yeah. YouTube, must be true. Yeah. Nothing right. falls yeah, ever there. Yeah. Mitchell Ball now in the lead uh, again. So, as you said, Mitchell Ball has started this 2024 season remarkably. Oh, marvellous. Marvellous. He's not got his old nemesis. Um... Um, oh, Bevan, Louis, Louis, Louis Bevan. Bevan. Yeah. Where's Louis Bevan this year? What's he doing this year? Has he, has he taken a sabbatical? Forsaken us. Um, I mean, it was a great race all the way down the order. You know, the, all the way with Charlie King. Louis Bevan has is actually commenting on the YouTube stream. Yes, Louis. Talk. Where are you, Louis? TKM Why aren't you here? TKM has the fairest races and most equal engines and best value class out there. Thank you, Louis. I love it for the smoke. Oh. Louis, why aren't you? Louis, I, I realise that the world it runs, it, it costs money to do things and things are difficult and everything else, but Louis, we, we need you here. Yeah, because Mitchell's got it too easy, it looks like. he's He won the first eight, he's come through and now leading the second eight. I mean, the number five, Ben Watson, we know how quick he is. He's Charlie King's um, he's Charlie King's teammate, and we know how quick those guys are. Charlie King up to 13th, by the way, from the back of the grid. We haven't really seen Charlie feature at the front of this field yet, and yet Charlie on the number two for that reason of right, bit of, you know, went into the final yeah. round here at Clear Pigeon last year. Could have took the championship in the same way that Mitchell Ball did, and it was all down to the final, the final what 12 minutes of yeah, racing exactly. for the yeah, whole yeah. season. Fantastic stuff. Mitchell, though, he's, he's, he's on pulling. fire. He's not, he's not gapping no, he's not. the five with I'm not, Watson. I'm not surprised, though, because Ben Watson's quick. I mean, he's got the fives. So he must have been fifth. So he's, he's, no, he's, he's absolutely... He's taking no... Trucking no uh, uh, situation from uh, Mitchell Ball. Obviously, you like... Especially because he's red and white helmet, don't you? That's, that's, yes, he's got a son of that. Obviously. But, yeah, I mean, I'm interested. Because I would have, put, I would have thought after the way he came to the field and comprehensively got to the front, it would have been an easy, easy way. Give yourself that two-second cushion, but no. Time. Well, he might not. Um, I'm, I'm looking at his times. His times 
have he's got a best of a 36 four nine eight his last lap there 36 five three eight he's lapping at the same pace it's not like he's backing off the pace mm. he's not you know he's not that arrogant to think that he can get away with that because Ben Watson's not going to allow him to do that we're no. inside the final three minutes of this second heat for TKMs and we're just watching a master class in in absolutely on the limit TKM racing here from Mitchell Ball and Ben Watson and if anything Ben's coming back on him isn't he Nick he's, he's not not being dropped in the slot. No, he's not the being dropped at all. The pair of them have managed to gap Jake Humphrey a little bit. And Humphrey now is in a very sensible, easy third place before a kind of a, a, a trio of uh, Johnson, Mead and Morrow in uh, four, five and six. Charlie Kling, as you said, is up from the back to 13th. That's, I think he's the major mover in this one. But Ball now, looks like he's got into a comfort zone. He's got, says two, two tenths. Well, actually, no, you look at it there. And suddenly there was just a little bit better drive there, wasn't there, for Watson. He closed down the gap. And they come out of the hairpin. It's as close as you can get without balking each other. Ball goes through the horseshoe. And now on to through buttons. This, that's that right-hander there. And then round top bend as they sweep underneath the massive kind of clubhouse cafe situation we have here at Clay Pigeon. Over the start finish line, underneath the gantry, past us, and then sweep down towards Billy's blind. You know what, Nick? All it takes is for Mitchell Ball is to... You know, Levy's breaking a couple of a couple of feet, thirty centimeters or so too late. He'll go deep into the corner and slide wide. He's having to really focus here. He's aware that Ben Watson is there. You can see him just glimpse over his shoulder and get him in his peripheral. He knows how close he is. He can hear his engine. You can hear the engine in the proximity of where you are on track. You can hear your competitors being right there with you, so that you are conscious of where they are. But there he looks again. He notes where he is. Now, here's Ben Watson. Oh. Can I have a go on the brakes, maybe? No, because Ball's this... very good on the brakes. That's because mm. it's a very quick corner. Louis Bevan it's... has told us the reason he's not there. Go on, Louis. He says, Doesn't, I don't have the same passion as I once did, so taking some time away from it. Well... Have a um, little break. Yes, we, we've all done that, Louis. I totally get that. I totally understand. And that just shows the amount of passion and... E Drive, effort and desire, energy effort the yeah. energy it takes to race you know week in week out or even every month the focus it. it takes and the focus and and also the bank balance as well yeah, yeah, good point, your, yeah. your bank account will do it do itself the world of good louis by taking a couple of the thing is can about this it? sport nick yep. you, can, you can never ever be cured of it no you can't be cured. It, the addiction be cured never of ever goes away and you think you can and then you find yourself spending nine hours in eye racing <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly, and, and you know what? Here I am. I was ra oh. I was I was racing carts thirty odd years ago, and here I am at a car track, visiting car tracks, living virtually at the Warden Law car track every day. Yeah, uh, because I love it. I love the sport. And Louis, I'm pretty sure we'll see you back in some guys. Look at Paul Lazan. Oh, yeah. He retired us retire. last Won't year. Retire. But yeah, he's not going to retire. He's here running his gold carts, and he's oh. doing the odd uh, KZ. That Ben Watson is trying tried everything. Line. He tried the different line He's that time. He's trying everything. <laughs> I'll give it a no, That's not going to work. I'll try it the other way around. But yeah, I mean, he obviously got some passion. He's watching us. And thank you, Louis, for watching us. It's, uh, it's always good to have the previous There's races the, here. There, there it is, yeah. Louis. You might not be here racing, but you're still here in spirit. See that O-plate, you know, if you've still got your kit, that's an open one-off one <laughs> meeting at Rara. Anyone can enter one set of tyres. There you go, Louis. Come and upset the apple cart for 2024 and take the O-plate out of the final turn. Has gone your old nemesis, Louis. There's Mitchell Ball. Look at this. You can't go. let him have it all of his own way. Last lap. He's got the last lap. Ben Watson on the outside of Billy's blind. That's not where you want to be. And you see how mm. Mitchell just controlled the slide of the cart just to keep that narrow line. Look how defensive he's having to drive. Ben's not letting him get away with this. He's going to have a go at the switchback, has he? No, because they so, so evenly match the TKMs. But look at how defensive Mitchell Ball is having what to be. What lap time is he doing? He he's he's, he's doing 37s. He's, he's, he's three quarters of a second slower yeah, last yeah, that, wasn't he? Two and seconds. this lap's going to be even slower. He but it doesn't matter because it's about winning. Yeah, almost a Over second line, slower. And that's it. Final lap, 37 threes. Yeah, we saw 36 yeah. sixes. So, yeah. That's because he's defensive. He's been defensive. Uh, Ball takes a very defensive win from Ben Watson. Boards well for the final. Watson, Watson drove really yeah, well. Absolutely. He, he, once he got past, he drove really well. Uh, by the way, one more, last one from Louis Bevan. Certainly a lot cheaper watching on YouTube than racing. Yes, it is, Louis. <laughs> we, 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 we understand. You could sit we, there counting the money you've saved. Yeah, you're watching your bank balance go up every month. But I think you and I both agree he'll be back. I think he'll be back. Of course he'll be back. 
absolutely will be back in some guys and might, might not be this year but you will be back to karting uh, louis it's great to have you along for the ride and uh, it's great to have you as a viewer on karting live tv uh you got your old nemesis mitchell ball take the wit takes, takes the win from ben watson and jake humphrey it was who was about 1.7 seconds behind them in third jamie mead was about 1.3 seconds behind and then we had that gaggle of carts on Jamie Mead's tail. Tom Johnson in fifth, Harrison Morrow in sixth. We had a bit of a gap to Jack Crisp in seventh. Then we had Alexander Lehman on his tail. James Hull was ninth. Matt Slate was tenth. Charlie King made his way up to 11th. Liv Jenkins was 12th. Leo Crabtree was next in 13th. And then we had Matthew Temple Purcell, Will Crogain, Joseph Phillips, Molly Nicholas Biles, Chris Whiteside, Samuel King, Sam Cope, was next in 20th, and then Ryan Layton, James King. James Workman, the all-plate winner of 30 years ago, is being recovered. He was a retirement on lap nine. So hopefully not too much of a problem. And we will see him out for the third and final heat. We've got the... I trust you're very happy because you actually managed to read the entire uh, results at that time. Because you felt cheated last time, didn't you? <laughs> well, yes, you, you, you kind of spoiled it, didn't you? I like to spoil it. Got any, any further no, comments? It's great. No, it's great. It, I think it's. I, I quite like it. We start talking about someone and they just go, <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm Yeah, okay, yeah they're there. They're there in the background. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so if, if you are watching on Facebook, come and join us on YouTube. Um, if you are watching YouTube, please subscribe. If you, are, if you know, if you have been visiting our Facebook page, then it would be great to be like that because then you'll, we're constantly updating stuff. There's lots of information about the NKC and some of the other championships we cover. So, Matt Guppy. Oh, this is great. Some guy called Matt Guppy has, has written into the YouTube. So, Matt Guppy has said, Wow, your camera guys are doing a fantastic job. What heroes? He, he's oh. right. So, so who, he, is it, who is this Matt Guppy guy? Well, he's a big fan of ours. I've heard that. He's, he's, yes. he's a big. I continually I've heard, get I've heard, fan he's a, mail. I've heard he's a bit fighty with, with I, marshals and that I, sort of thing. No, no, no. He loves them. Oh, he right, loves yeah. every one of them. <laughs> a bit too unhealthily, actually. He loves them too much. Um, <laughs> Tanino Machichi is our pole <laughs> sitter in the 177 class for their fifth heat. Oh, uh, Ryan Taylor Truman, the number three, third in the championship last year. He's alongside Steve Gilly, first of the Masters, alongside the other Master, Steve Thompson. Nathan Chafer from the uh, NC, NCR racing team, the CRG dealer on the CRG in fifth place on the third row. Colin Davis alongside Marty Gilfillan from Jib Tech is on the fourth row with David Simpson. And then we've got Josh Bash, Gary Cox, George Walker, Tim Darlow, Max Williamson, Cole Edwards. I'll quickly run down as they come towards the line. Nick Skelton, Daniel Hammett, Dan Millward, Ollie Bailey, George Willis, James Price, Steve Seward, Stewart, Alex Thomas, Will Milner, Scott Clay. Quickly, 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 We haven't got time to mention the rest of the field as they get underway. And we're almost three wide into Billy's Blind. Did Tamino come Who, out of that? I think he didn't. That, that's, come that's come through. Come through. Let's have a look. So the leader. Slid wide, oh, the leader is the 20 from the 15. So it's Steve Gilly who's got through at the front from Cracking Tamino start. Michichi. And I think Michichi being eased out there, going through uh, the hairpin for the first time. Let's have a look. Cracking start it's the from Steve Gilly. Of Ryan the Tyler, Ray, Ray, Ray and Tyler trimming into second. So he started second. He's been third. Now he's back to second again. But Steve Gilly, great start. Second row of the grid start for Steve, and he's off and away. And crossing the line in that first place, it's Taylor Truman who is following him through in second. Ryan Taylor Truman right on his tail as they head down to the hand hairpin. Taylor Truman's going to be a big, it's going to be a big ask for Steve Gilly to keep him behind as they come out of hand and then no. through the horseshoe <laughs> and then through buttons here they come bit, they're going to be down and underneath us Steve Gilly needs every bit of that Venator racing engine power that he's got on his cart as he gets down towards the braking area and there's the move that's been coming but and Chafer, there's Nathan Chaffer through as well Chafer and it looks lead. like Chaffer's Chafer's got, got the lead, lead. Oh he's, oh, he's oh, he's run him off the oh. track. The three got run off the track that there. That is a bit of an incident Ryan there. Taylor Truman, we got that one again. Let's they just look. basically ran out of space, Nick. So this, yeah, Taylor Truman down the inside. Chafer goes with him, but Chafer's got momentum to get the lead, and he goes for it. And then as he turns into the left-hand side, he'd forgotten that Ryan Taylor Truman was there. Uh, Taylor Truman didn't back out. I don't know. Leave that to the stewards to sort that one out. 
I'm not even going to comment because that was a racing incident. If uh, uh, Tal Avera China M on YouTube, is, go go go, Chafer. That was before he did it. So he's got a fan club here. Yeah, wow, and a b- lots of love, uh, love icon. Yeah, uh, passion uh, that is, isn't emojis, it? That was, yeah. Yeah, it's passion emoji. Not that I know because I'm uh, texting. So but, can <laughs> Steve Gilly? I think there's a swap hang there. on to Nathan Chafer because Nathan Chafer held on to that lead all the way around the lap. George Walker uh, now has picked gone. up third. They've gone, and Nick. The 139, and then he's leading. He's on camera now. That 139 has just picked up third, getting past. Uh, I think he got past. Walker, when we come around, yeah, who got past? Thompson, it must have been. There we go. Chafe from Gilly. Steve Thompson's the driver there, chasing after Nathan Chafer as they go through the hand hairpin. Now they're coming back towards Steve Gilly here. Steve was able to pull out a bit of a gap and go along with Nathan Chafer, but the number 139 of George Water, that's the, the orange and yellow liveried cart of that chasing yeah, Steve to- uh, George Walker, now. who's gotten ahead got, of the number 42, Thompson Nick. behind him, and then Bass. Now, is he going to be caught up by the ones behind him, or is he going to have to bridge the gap? There's a little bit of a scuffle there also, 5, 6, and 7, so Edwards, Ryan Taylor Truman. Ryan Taylor Truman's had a 7th place, Joe, after that incident on lap 2. Mm, I'm not sure he would have had the right tracking ah. set up on the no, car after that. Is it no that? longer steering straight, like it's a NASCAR? No, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be towing in or out by a few degrees that it should, really. Uh, the rest of the field streaming through. We've got... Behind the three, cheer for Gillian Walker in the top three. Steve Thompson hanging on to George Walker, having been overtaken. Then behind them, Josh Bass, Cole Edwards, Ryan Taylor Truman, David Simpson, Max Williamson, Scott Clee, fourth in the championship and third in Masters right now. The, the leading master, Nick, is Steve Gilly in that second place. Yeah, the battle now is, is, is kind of a selection of carts on five, six and seven. Uh, the pure, whoa, aged, the edged out white machine 164, as you can see. That was Josh Bass. He's just dropped out. And he, oh, he's, he's, I'm not having that. He's just slipped back into position again, though. He's going to be on the outside. There's a bit of block, a bit of block yeah, passing yeah. going on yeah. around here. There is. The, the is that Moven yellow machine, which I... Is that Edwards? Yes, Cole Edwards is coming through in the Moven yellow machine, just ahead of these three. So this is actually five, six, and six, sorry, six, seven, and eight yeah, there. Yeah, that, that cart there, that try to get, keep, uh, keep that position is Ryan Taylor Truman. Yeah. And it looks to me as though he is fighting a bit of an Ill, ill-handling cart if anything, look look at how much mm. speed he's losing out of the corner. And there, just joining in there, is... Who's that? Is that Josh Bass? Did he Good get great, by uh, him? I don't suppose you know I the answer to the question. question. question we need to ask one of the audience. What happens if you get a puncture when one of your tyres? What do you mean? Oh, that's called force majeure. Right. And you, 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 would, be, you would be allowed to change, uh, to renew it, but you would have to scrub it in and do some laps in your practice sessions on the Friday before you do. That's happened. That's happened quite frequently. It's kind of inadvertent if you get, uh, you know, collisions and... Yeah, I'm just wondering that because that's with Brian Taylor Truman going off the side, clipping the kerb, coming back on again. That's sort of the... Yeah. can DB the tyre, of course. There yeah, we are exactly. back with uh, Gilly. Are we? No, we're, we're in, is that, uh, no, no, that's, uh, that's, that's Steve the, Thompson. That's Thompson in the blue Thompson 42, in the blue cart. And Cole in the... In Cole the, in Edwards the in the yellow cart. Chrome machine. Yeah. Yellow, that's purple and yellow and everything. Yeah, yellow and purple, isn't it? Or is that pink? No, it is purple. I, I or is it Cerise? Oh, I say, get you with your colour palette. Uh, hey. <laughs> yeah, Cole Edwards looking very racy on the back end of Steve Thompson there. Here he comes. Great to see Cole, 10th in the championship. Back onto the tail end of Steve Thompson now. This is where he can make that impression into the breaking area. It's a battle for fourth and fifth, this one. So it's not really down the order. Kate Rose here. Come on, Ryan. That's Ryan Turchin. You can get up there. Um, and uh, Emma Barrett. Come on, Ryan. So Ryan, after that dis- diff- difficult couple of laps, he's got his supporters on the stream. But uh, that's not going to affect... More, more love for cheer for us. It's the same person. T- T- Talvera is very fond of him. <laughs> um, and very fond of how well he's doing. And he is leading by 1.438 seconds. So there we are again, the, uh, the chrome machine of Cole Edwards. That's nipped past Thompson now, is not he? Yeah, he has. And that Thompson driver behind. Thompson now under yeah. pressure from the from recovery. Ryan Taylor Truman. Ryan Taylor Truman, oh, yeah. He used all of the kerb just underneath us there, did Taylor Truman. I don't know how he punched out of the top bend there, but he had massive amount of speed 
mid mid straight mm. massive amount of speed there and he, he really had to hold that tight line now he's after Cole Edwards there's Steve Gilly still hanging on to that second place in fine style and holding back George Walker Steve Gilly in the blue helmet the orange and yellow livery of George Walker is about to be joined by the purple and yellow livery of Cole Edwards yeah it's all it's all breaking it okay Constantine oh Gilly's made a mistake at the worst time it's going to be time it's cost him not necessarily a position in fact actually in many ways it's, it's turned out worse for Walker there because he's got his nose yeah, chopped off yeah. had to break and he's lost momentum and the 10 of Edwards is going oh, I think I might get a chance here and and you know what Ryan Taylor Truman whatever there he goes, it is there he goes Edwards Edwards, up the inside. Down the inside. Taylor Truman with him as well. Oh. I was about to say Taylor Truman has kind of Poor got his Walker. head around the character. Kind of getting his head around the characteristics on that cart that got bent. We're just assuming that it is because he dropped off the pace and now he's found the pace again. And if anything, Taylor Truman right there on the back end of Cole Edwards. These two championship protagonists from 2023 going at it once again at the forefront of the 177 field. And if anything, it looks potentially like Taylor Truman is lining up a pass on Cole Edwards. Time running out, though. They're on the penultimate lap. Yeah, I think this, 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 this sub-battling has really helped Steve Gilly to maintain that second place. He's not really under any severe pressure. Nathan Chafer is just cruising away now, about four-tenths of a second a lap. He's going to cross the line now. And then it's two and a half seconds before Gilly comes along. And this is the battle, the really one that's happening third and fourth. Truman trying to get back. He led for a very brief, well, almost a very brief period of time. Um, about seven or eight metres I think he was ahead of this race at one point but uh, he came back from dropping as low as eighth and back up to fourth and he's got this lap or half lap and one more to try and make a final lunge into third place he's about to lose a place himself because up the inside of uh, that's Taylor Truman down the inside of Cole oh, Edwards who's coming back at him and he had to almost put the cart on the grass it's going to be checkered flag though for Nathan Schaefer underneath us now It'll be Steve Gilly that hangs on to that second place, but a change for third there, yeah, the right? Tire at the Truman, brilliant. And I, here I, it I, is. Got, I, got, I got my carts mixed up there. Yeah, you did. But uh, that was that Taylor was Truman down the inside of Paul Edwards. Yeah, I mean that's a fantastic cut from that problem he had early on and the drop back through the field, which you, you I think you correctly identified, getting used to how it felt now. Superb comeback, superb comeback by uh, Ryan Taylor Truman, uh, and probably in the end only really lost one position where he would have been anyway. Yeah, probably. Yes. Yeah, he might have. He was about to have a bash at Steve Gilly, though, wasn't he? Mm. Um, anyways, like you say, he's he's recovered very well indeed, and and uh, and damage limitation exercise uh, has paid off. Uh, he, has Chaffer, limited, he has limited the damage. Uh, absolutely, Chafer takes the win. Then Steve Gilly second, Ryan Taylor Truman third, Cole Edwards fourth, George Walker fifth, Steve Thompson was sixth, David Simpson seventh, Josh. Bass was eighth, ninth was Max Williamson, and then it was Scott Clay who rounded off the top ten. You've got the rest of the order there in front of you on the screen on the timing bar. That was the fifth of our 177 heats. We've got the another junior raw tax heat. This is the seventh time Before we've you seen on, junior raw tax out this weekend. Comment. She says, well done, Ryan. Great comeback and fastest car on track. Yeah, fastest lap, 35.069 for... Fastest lap of the race, that one. Yes. What? I thought you were going to say it. You're looking at your phone, yes, looking like you're about to say something to send that's a relevant. To Ash. I'm sending a message to Ash. Or even irrelevant. I'm sending a message to Ash. All right, well, just give us some indication that you've stopped talking. Right then, yes, we have been married for about 27 years, everybody. If <laughs> you have not thought, up, if you're thinking up on you air, know, how, really how the f familiar Nick and I are, We've probably been working together for over 20 years, haven't we? No, 20 no, years. 16, no, 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 16, yeah, yeah, 16 yeah. 18, 20, no, 2008. 2008. Now, obviously, we worked seven. in a weird way for a couple of years prior to that because you were working in the in the you were working in the BC paddock, and I was interviewing the BC paddock. Ah, that's right. So I did know know of you. Yes. Yes, you were the pin and the butt who kept sticking a microphone under me driver's noses, but that's another story. And they kept saying and they, they, everything's great apart from our team manager. They kept saying. How <laughs> 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 no, true. So we've got Junior Rotax out next, and the grid will look like this. Jack Dimbleby and Daly, D blah, blah, blah. Jack, Jack Dimbleby and Dylan Morton are on the front row. They've got Freddie Whirlock and Alfie McBain, Zach Burke and Freddie Theobald on row three. Row four is Joshua Whiting and Jesse, Jesse Whitmore. Uh, Jarek Metters and Ma uh, Max Gritrex are on row five. Luigi Perlini 
and Melissa Adrian are on row six. Jason Ducius and Jensen Hooky are on row seven. Jack Theobald and Ben Adrian, row eight. Row nine, Alex Dahl and uh, Kieran Calhoun Ferguson. Jasmine Taylor and Alexander Stevanoff are on row ten. And then we've got Harry Hadley and Kaziri Vitarek. Row 12, Harvey Lee Winteridge and Leo Basterfield with Lucy Lovell and Daniel Clancy uh, behind them on row 13. Row 14, Aidan Clark and Charles Green. And then row 15, rounding off the 30-cart thir- field. Yes, 30-cart field. 30 of 70-odd entries, actually, is Barnaby Grubb and Oliver Guzman. We have got, Nick, one, two, three heats remaining after this one so four heats and then we are into the important parts through them quickly here don't you they do we 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 rattle through them as you say because of course you've got a short lap time so those last two laps actually don't can obviously that's that's a good point actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 40 seconds longer yeah it's only half a minute isn't it really Mm. around here whereas other tracks that we're going to visit it's almost a minute yeah. yeah 55 57 seconds uh, we are on a very fast pace lap. We'll slow them down. Jack Dimbleby on the 64. Dylan Morton on the 193. We've got them slowing the field down as they get towards the latter part of this track. They're out of buttons now and heading towards Top Bend, which is a, de- a deceiving right-hander. It drops away on the exit, off camber exit, so that really does catch you out if you're not careful. Uh, very ordered grid. They're all together. They're in good grid order there as they come towards us at a very, very slow walking pace. And we will very shortly get them towards the acceleration zone, which they do now. And getting the drop is Jack wow. Dimbleby. Take that and one. he gets a, a massive drop mm-hmm. as okay. they got to the Fair line. Enough. We uh, we are racing. Yeah. They, 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 they are quite reticent to throw the uh, go-around flag today it seems mm. we've only had one and that was for a, a, a completely mucked up start the the sort of ones we've seen getting thrown at Rowra by the world's most uh, angry or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what's his name Look, again? I, do, I don't know I don't forget his name um, the starter at Rowra yeah. uh, we've got everybody Nick um, have made it through almost a lap without uh, any stragglers anybody no. going off here they come across the line Nicely. it's the lime green and black Livery of Jack Dimble be that lead on the 64. Freddie Whirlock, Dylan Morton, Zach Burke, Freddie Theobald, Joshua Whiting, Jarek Metters, Luigi Perlini, Jason Ducius, and Jesse Whitmore. That's your top 10. Yeah, it's, it's, lots it's of players great. changing in the midfield, Nick. Yeah, there's a kind of a sorting out going on. Yeah, sort of positions like 12 backwards, but the front actually that initial huge jump from Dimbleby has been closed down by Freddie Whirlock now. So one and two getting quite a lot closer. And then we've got a kind of a tiny gap. Well, quarter second, half second gap. Then three, four and five. And then another batch of carts from six oh. to 15 downward. Paul, wait, that's, that's the one there. That's where I just saw flash underneath me. Freddie Whirlock right on the back of Jack Dimbleby. And Jack there with the lime green and black helmet. Whirlock in the blue helmet. Behind them, Zach Burke, Dylan Morton, Freddie Theobald, Jarrett Metters. But these two now, that's for the heat. Win there, right there. Still very early days. Six and a half minutes is what we've got left. So hardly is any laps done so far. So anything can happen. And if anything, I can see Zach Burke on the 57. Dylan Morton and Freddie Theobald joining in side by side towards turn one. And there's a change of lead before we even got to the Britain area, Nick. He made that move. Yeah, he looked at how the pace were. And and I think he decided this is my chance to win a heat. I'm going to dispose of Jack Dimbleby as quickly as possible. And the answer was... Very quickly indeed. Don't glance back. I think, I think I've learned today, don't look behind you. No, don't ever look behind you. Never look behind you. That's a, that's a, in many ways, that's kind of a mantra for life, isn't it, really? <laughs> it is. Good advice in all round, in all aspects of the world. So, yeah, you come here for karting commentary and you get a little bit of, yes, you know... A little bit of uh, philosophical, philosophical life advice. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yes. The philosophical commentators. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the other end of the... I shouldn't so do that. I should, should look at the you shouldn't the do screen. that. Whirlock leads... Jack Dimbleby second, ja- Zach Burke, Dylan Morton, Freddie Theobald, Jared Metters, Jason Dushis, Jesse Whitmore, Ben Adrian, Max Grittrich, Grittrix. There's a lot going Rams on behind off the them. top ten. There is this the, the far four, too much going on. Four, five, six is where it's kind of happened. Actually, it's more five, six, seven. They were super close a second ago. I wonder where the fourth player is. That's a 22, Freddie Theobald. He's broken through. Looks one of the sm- looks quite diminutive in his car. Maybe he's more reclined, but I think he's one of the smaller chaps. That orange cart there is Jarek Metters. Behind him on the white cart is Jason Dusis. 
It's the 22 who I think has got the move at the moment. The 22 is Freddie Theobald, Theobald just yeah. ahead of them. But and he's dragging them all together. Now, second and third are very close together now of uh, Dimbleby and Burke. And they're all coming back with a small break for Whitlock, which is probably now nearer three quarters of a second than the indicator. And up, there we go, second and third change. And it's going to be Burke through on Dimbleby. Burke in the blue and the red with the white helmet. And uh, Dimbleby green and black with green helmet. It's the blue with the white helmet that leads in Freddie Word. They're going to come under beneath us now. And there's a kind of a massive train of carts now, sort of like, if he's back and show the wide, there we are. Let's watch the rest of the carts go through, uh, Matt. And you can see them, look at that. Uh, there's another pair, another pair, another pair. And then they go into the hairpin with two more pairs. And I think there's another change of position there. I think that may be the orange cart you were talking of. Actually, may have taken the 22 cart. It was, yes. Yeah, so there's been a change there with a 353 of Metas getting past Theobald, Joe. Just look how small Theobald is mm. just into the Junior Road X class. And you can see by just how diminutive his, uh, his build is. Hanging on very well indeed, the number 22, Freddie Theobald, but just losing out to the orange cart there of Jarrett Metas, who will, I think, pull away ever so slightly. He's not, he's not, mm. he's not just blasted away, has he? He's just making ground. And now Theobald has got the advances of Jason Ducius and Dylan Morton. And if Ducius isn't careful and make the move on the number 22 of Theobald there, um, he's going to be very, very closely... If you, if you look at Ducius, who's on a white cart, which probably means yeah. he's right on the weight limit. Yes. And then ahead of him is Theobald, the 22, who's tiny. You can get an idea of the spread of a junior Rotax heat as far as physicality is concerned. Because look at you've got it's like, it's like it really is men against boys between the two of them there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, that that's why, you know, we, we've seen the... 12 to 14 year olds get split in another series um, however not the case in the Junction 6 NKC Junior Road axes from 12 years to the year of your 16th birthday and you know for his despite his minute size Freddie Theobald acquitted himself very very well indeed yeah he absolutely he's got massive pace he's got massive pace he's got massive amount of lead on the car as well yeah. <laughs> there'll be lead everywhere on that machine yeah absolutely bring him up to the weight 140 a kilogram well maximum weight there this is great racing though as Jack Dimbleby, who started on the pole, he's, he's fought well and kept those relatively faster drivers behind him. And there's a move on the 22. Just there, Freddie Theobald gets overtaken by Jason Ducis. Ducis ahead now on the white liveried cart. The blue and yellow of Theobald now coming under pressure from Dylan Morton, who will want to get by. Dylan on the red and white cart. That's the battle for 5th, 6th and 7th that we're watching now. And then just ahead of them, Jarek Metters right on the bumper now of Dimbleby. Coming into the hairpin there. No, I'm, I'm surprised to see no movement. But it is very much a case where we're Metters now looking to hit that third spot. Well, I say on the podium. It's a heat you're doing a podium. On the, uh, on the results sheet, let's say. Last time round, he was... Well, he's only about three tenths behind last time round, so he's actually no closer. He's not really managed to, to put the moves on him in many ways, actually. I think Metas may have pulled slightly on him. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. a couple I of tenths, yeah. yeah. Dimbleby, Dimbleby has given himself a bit of a cushion. We're inside the final 90 seconds, Nick, of this heat. And as we were contemplating there, a, a change for third position, Jack Dimbleby has found a bit of pace. He's, uh, I was saying how great a job he'd done at keeping the drivers behind him. He continues to do that in great style. Very composed there, looking over his shoulder very little, if at all, as they come out onto the start-finish straight, which bends, curves to the left into the braking area for Billy's Blind. That's the one there, Billy's Blind there, leads into the S's there, the right and left of the S's, then leads out onto the straight. It's called Sturmy Straight, into the hand hairpin. It's not... It's not that long really, long enough to get a breaking attempt and now breaking attempt into the hand hairpin and then out of the hand hairpin and through the left hander, the double apex left hander of the horseshoe. Yeah, Dukas was looking kind of threatening a, a lap ago, but it's a uh, the the whole it's easier to catch passing is something else seems quite out with these three or four carts. They're getting they can get close, but they can't quite make the move. So this is the battle for three, four and five. Warlock now has a one point eight second lead or so there's a quite comfortable second place with Zach Burke ahead of them and as they go round here this will be the penultimate lap and they come 
through the horseshoe again sliding lightly Jack Dimbleby he's got the uh, much bigger frame of the 3-5-3 of Jarek Metters behind him but uh, Metters actually managed to gap Dukis which he hadn't done before so there are third and fourth is there enough is there enough uh, momentum to get past answers no and then through the edge of the final time into the hairpin looking up the inside but no that's blood route oh. is blocked off but is that going to be too aggressive and we can get done by the switch back nope no he all Dim nearly yeah nearly Dim will be having to defend and that's causing a bit of frustration here on the final lap up ahead of these two of course we've got uh, Zach Ooh, Burton in second and Freddie Whirlock and yes <sighs> and he's lost a place because of it and he's not happy lost two places because of it so 3-5-3 three, three, he's not happy he's with hand up couldn't quite see what happened from that uh, flattened out angle there but the just have a look he went down the inside at button at buttons and then into the top bend and there we had Dimbleby taking his line he was ahead of him yeah you could clearly see Dimbleby was ahead of him not happy so but I, bit of a, I think that's fine yeah did a bit unfortunate uh, Jarek met his uh, dropping a, a place to that Freddie Wellock though took a fine win 1.4 seconds was the lead at the end there Zach Burke was second um, a further 1.7 seconds was the gap to Jack Dimbleby who then had Jason Douches coming through and taking fourth behind him. Jarek Metters ended up fifth, Dylan Morton sixth, seventh as Freddie Theobald, Ben Adrian was eighth. Jasmine Taylor, Jasmine Taylor came from 19th on the grid to Jasmine Taylor and 19th to 9th, 10 places. Leo Basterfield, he was another mover. Leo Basterfield rounding off the top 10. Charles Green, Melissa Adrian, Jesse Whitmore, Zari Viserek, uh, Max Greatrex, Jack Theobald, Jensen Hooky, Lucy Lovell. 19th was Joshua Whiting and Harvey Lee Winteridge rounded off the top 20. We quickly move on, Nick, in true Junction 6 NK style. And we have the sixth heat. All for, it's all quickly moving on. Um, oh, another dog is a boxer dog now we have. Ah, that boxer's been the yeah. star of the show this weekend. That is a top boxer dog. I need to work out who is showing the boxer dog. It is Matt. Matt. I think that boxery. boxer dog as, uh, is that a good as time? A oh, we've got a fluff. Is that a cat? <laughs> it's a handbag, isn't it? It's a, yeah, I shouldn't say I've got a dog similar to that one. It's oh, a, it's, it's a Pomeranian, a, isn't it? Is it a Pomeranian? Uh, aren't, the, aren't they the things that are really it's bad tempered? Oh, no. It's a lot of fur with a small amount of dog inside. Yeah, it's got a lovely little face. Is that a Pomeranian? Is I it? think it's a Pomeranian. The boxers just want to be off the lead, isn't he? The boxer, I mean, wants, the boxers, the boxer wants to bounce. The boxer wants to change. Hello, Hello, I'm your friend. Hello, I'm your friend. Hello, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. Throw yeah. my ball. Throw my ball. I'm your friend. <laughs> I've got a ball here, mate. Do you want to throw it? Uh, right, let's get back onto this. <laughs> this is the last of the 162 senior Rotax heats. Good luck, that we uh, that we have to date. Billy Edgecombe from Momentum Motorsport is on the pole position with Elliot Barrel alongside we then got Reese Pope Nathan Jensen good luck starts, Nathan says Holly Jensen starts his heat from the other front Simon Spagnuolo and Theo Frederick share row three Jason Bear and Louis Reese share row four Joshua Delacarta and George Spilsbury share row five Aidan Pomeroy and Alfie Bushell are on six seven is Sam Cresswell and Mike Good Michael Goodburn Sam Wyatt and Braden Hill share row eight row nine Liam Deedman and Grace Lee Davis Jensen Watts starting from back there in 19th place for the second time Mason Perrin in 20th Luke Evans and Henry Swanson share row 11 then we've got Kieran Gifford and Gregory Akers Levi Goodyear and Matthew Lambert Ethan Wyatt, Lewis Berry, Tristan Sharp, Samuel Christensen. Nick, we've got a lot of very, very quick drivers near the back of this grid. So yep. this is going to be action-packed. Oh, straight away. That was straight off. And I think it was actually caused by the 23. Initially got something slight. A bit of edge come, I think, initially clipped it. Let's hit one again quickly before the action gets moving on. I think Edgecombe had a problem quite early on. No, yes, no, he got hit, so it wasn't Edgecombe got, hit, hit, yeah. got hit, so I think it was, it was the other blue car on the he inside. He got hit by the 32, Nathan Jensen. I think the 47 might have been involved in that. 147, Louis Rees, I think, might have been involved in the initial... I don't know who caused it, it Nick. It, I thought it was a blue car. Well, we saw Nathan Jensen hit um, Billy mm. Edgecombe. But he was hit himself, I think. Yeah, I think so. I'm not blaming anybody. It's a, it's a start line, we're going for it, and these things happen, and, and space that was there disappears almost immediately bad news for Nathan Jensen though the uh, the star of the show is down to 30 seconds and out by the looks of it so Elliot Barrow led across the line for lap one there Billy Edgecombe recovered a second Theo Frederick third Louis Reese, Simon Spagnuolo Joshua Delacarte Aidan Pomeroy Jensen Watts up from 19th to 8th in one lap George Spilsby <laughs> ninth, 10th is Alfie Bushel 
Mm, just outside the top 10. They all play at Holder, Kieran Gifford in 12th. And then where are the rest? Matthew Lambert, 18th. Here they come again then. Elliot Barrel still leads. Edgecombe, Frederick, Reese. Watts up to 5th. Spagnuolo, he's on a mission, isn't he, Jensen Watts? Yeah. He wants that pole position. And considering mm. he's come from 19th, he's already in 5th. He's... I, I he think he could win this. Far, he wants to be as far away from Howard I, as possible. He does. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, from our point of view, Nick, that the side-by-side in the oh, absolutely. Uh, Mason Perrin, he's made a few places up in that second lap. He's up to 19th. Uh, there was a big, big, big middle field kerfuffle, but the big loser, Nathan Jensen, and we have, oh, no, I'm going to cry from his girlfriend. And no, Nathan, and no. Well, that's part of motorsport, and I'm now afraid. Now, says justice Ella. for Nathan. Well, I don't think there's any injustice for Bally. I think he's just a bit unfortunate in the middle of a, a selection of sandwiches. Um, in the carts, so we're going to break away now. Just this One, two, near three, thing. four, five carts have broken away in those top five positions. Yeah, here we um, go. This is cracking racing. Five card battle now, then into the horseshoe. Barrel, Edgecombe, Frederick, Reese, and Watts. How much more progress can Watts I think make? What, I think, is that Watts in third? I think Watts is, yeah, didn't he? He's red and white. I don't think he's in fifth. Yeah, he is. Anymore. I think he's in third. He's in third. I think he's in third, and the only two carts he's got are teammates. They look, they're painted the same or stickered the it's same. Theo Frederick has gotten ahead of Billy Edgecombe. I'm not sure what happened there. Watts is in third, though. So Barrel and Frederick. Change the lead. Change the lead. Frederick takes the lead there. Frederick in the lead now. Yep. Barrel in second. Watts down the inside in at the hand hairpin. Watts in the second. Next on his list. When did he start? 19th? 19th. No, it's taken him three minutes to get there then. <laughs> Incredible. And obviously the carnage ahead of him helps in be, that first couple He's going to be very hard to beat when he starts at the front, that's for sure. Here we go, though. It's a challenge for first place coming up here, and Watts is absolutely on it. If you watch the, if you watch the paddock show, you saw the support team behind Jensen. He's with, he's with the Birrell team with a, a myriad of there engines at their disposal. That's the lead. So there it he took goes. him three minutes and 16 seconds from 19th place. Anyway, so now the battle is uh, kind of going to rejoin. We'll just, just see. I don't think there's any chance that uh, Fedrick's going to be able to come back at him. He is quite close at the moment. He's not letting him get away, is he? No. And maybe we're going to see Jensen Watts thinking about looking after his tyres. He's used those tyres, a lot, lot of energy in, it, in his tyres to, to get himself from 19th to head this field. Not even before half distance. Uh, and he's at a track that he knows well it's uh, we've got him for the full season Nick so that's that bodes very well for a very strong Junction 6 NKC championship this year mm. but look at that Frederick work right from, with yeah, him work number 92 Absolutely. yeah, yeah stay, not, not being phased by the, uh, the, the, you know, the competitors know who the fast competitors are they know when the, the, who the, 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 the big guys are they know who the threats are but you know, sometimes you can go, oh, well, he's got past me, I'll let him go. No, I'm, 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 I can learn from him, I can catch him up, perhaps I can even overtake him, who knows. But certainly, Frederick, I've been passed relatively easily, he's absolutely hanging with Jensen as they sweep round the hairpin. Um, behind them, not a lot of action at the moment. Third edge comes, got a big gap. Fourth is Reese, and fifth is Kieran Gifford on the O plate. Well, that's a great, great move up the order as well from Gifford. He was down the grid as well the all played holder up to fifth now luke evans up to ninth ethan wyatt 13th matthew lambert was another one that we expected the number seven up to 14th alfie bushel just rounding off the top 10 on the number 226 oh an error from the fourth place right racer reese and he almost let gifford three he did that thing we've seen before last race with not getting the drive out of the uh, the s's but just not enough of an error to allow Gifford, who won the O plate at Wilton Mill last year, to get past, but they are now. This is the only real close action at the front of the track. It's four and five. But as you point out, any place you make from your low grid start, Joe, is really big bonus time, isn't it? Massive, massive bonus. I mean, from 19th to first, but equally so for Kieran Gifford on the O plate. He's up to fifth. Levi Goodyear up as well into sixth. Frederick. has got it. Oh, who's that? That was Gifford going past. So, so Gifford. Kieran Gifford up another position. He's picked up that fourth place. My feeling, I know there's still two and a bit minutes to go. I'm not certain he's going to be able to, to bridge the gap to Edgecombe. Jensen Watts pulled out a little bit of a convenient, a, a, a relaxing gap now, about six tenths of a second. He's not really looked under any immediate pressure, to be honest. 
And as they go around again, for 147 of Reese trying not to lose Gifford in case Gifford might make a, a minor mistake at some point. He can catch him back up again. But uh, behind him, actually, the very, very spaced out field, this one. It's not. It does. It's not, it does. It's not, yeah. You've not got that train of destruction that normally happens in these races. Well, They're kind well, of in twos and twos and twos and twos. We had quite a few. I mean, Levi Goodyear, who's moved up the order to sixth, um, he started in 25th. Kieran Gifford started in 23rd. He's up to fourth. Uh, Matthew Lambert, the number seven, started in 26th. Where's Mason Perrin? He's Mason Perrin, our, our current junior Rotax champion, started 20th. So getting a big lesson in how to move through the traffic. Yeah, I think that, 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 that scuffleage on the first corner did give a lot of opportunity for people at the back to gain a few positions for almost for free as everyone tried to sort themselves out again. You know, if you don't get involved in an accident in front of you, it's always a bonus. I mean, it is, the further back you are, there is more danger of being involved in one, but uh, that works in brief, you can hold sometimes. There we go, and up the inside goes... Who's that? Is past, that Gifford? That, that, was, that, that was Goodyear going past Reese. That's Goodyear picking up fifth place from, from, uh, from Reese. So Levi gains a position. Interesting that Reese dropped back off Gifford quite a lot in the last lap or so. So they're going to cross the line now, and there'll be two more after that. In a relatively quiet race, which has kind of seen what we kind of possibly might possibly happen, which is Watts winning from 19th. We thought it might take him a bit longer than 4 minutes and 15 seconds to do it. Um, but a really good result for the back, well, it appears to be for the back starters. They said a lot of people have gained a lot of points mm. they weren't expecting. And that's going to have a major impact on what we see when they line it, up for the A final. It is, absolutely. And remember, this is the last heat, Nick, so we will have the grid formed. Uh, I haven't been able to work it out. We'll leave that to the timekeepers to uh, furnish us with the details. Uh, remember, we've got a B final for the senior 162s and then an A final for junior Rotax. We've got a C final. Here they go across the line then. The one lap to go board has already flown for Jensen Watts and Theo Frederick, who are pretty much nose to tail out there on the track. Just coming through the hand hairpin. And Jensen Watts, Jensen Watts on the number 93, just through buttons now. And then into the final turn, he's going to take the chequered flag with... Theo Frederick right on his bumper. They're just ahead of these lot here. Billy Edgecombe third. Kieran Gifford on the all plate is fourth. And Levi Goodyear there, who we watched across the line. Fifth and sixth. Aidan Pomeroy seventh. Elliot Barrell eighth. Sam Cresswell ninth. Ethan Wyatt ends up tenth. Great effort from Matthew Lambert, who finishes eleventh. And 12th then, place was Alfie Bushel, 13th yeah, Mason Perrin, 14th was Simon Spagnuolo, then Gregory Akers, George Spilsbury, Michael Goodburn, Harry Swanson, Braden Hill down in 19th. That's that one of the people who didn't really move forward, you'd expect. Gracie Davis in 20th. Then it was Lewis Berry, Reese Pope, Jason Beer, Liam Deadman, Luke Evans, Tristan Sharp, Samuel Christesi, and then Joshua Delicato, he did nine laps, and poor Nathan Jensen didn't even complete one. Ella, I'm sure he will bounce back for his final. That's going to put him in the B final, I would thought, um, with a, a non-finish. That's uh, an inevitability that I think we can uh, perceive, or preempt, I should say. So we are making good ground through these heats. We've got two more of our heats coming. We've got the 177s out next, and then we finish off with the third and final heat for the senior TKMs. And then we will be getting underway with the process of getting through our finals. I'm just getting the timetable up in front of me. Um, the first of our finals will be the Junior Rotax C final. It's a six-minute uh, six race with the first four qualifying through to the B final. And then we've got B finals for Rotax 177, senior Rotax, and then B final for the junior Rotax. The first A final to kick off the 2024 season is senior TKM, followed by the Rotax 177s, then the senior Rotax, and then rounding off round one here at Clear Pigeon will be the junior Rotax A final. Before that, though, we've got uh, the 
sixth and final heat for some runners in the 177s. It's going to be Oliver Smith and Matthew Lear on the pole position. Archie Elliott and Scott Smith are set on row two. Row three is Marcin Kaminsky and Oliver Moss. Row four is Toby Case and Reese Llewellyn. Then we've got Marcus Basley and Neil Hemming. James Frost and Tyler Fossey uh, share row six. Row seven, Sean Rudge and Alfie Williams with Michael Mallett and Paul Moran on row eight. Stephen Mottram and Nathan Wells are on row nine. Joshua Pickford and Adrian Smith are on row 10, with Jack Sweeting, Robert Simpson, row 11. Max and Nettie and Harrison Crook are on row 12. Ollie Hancock starts down the order on row 13 with Cameron Marston. And then we've got Patrick Williams, Rahaj and Nicholas Walker, row 14. And then running off the 30-cart field, Simon Wheeler and, and Zach Fontenot are our 30-cart field, rounding off our 30-cart field. Uh, eight minutes and one lap, of course. And the shortest lap on the calendar here at Clear Pigeon. We are geographically just equidistant between Dorchester and Yeovil. It's the further it's, south we go, though. <laughs> it's the further south we go. Yep, yeah, that's been clarified, hasn't it, Nick? Um, Many times. Tape measure. <laughs> we are 100 metres further <laughs> south than, than, than Duncan as well. Sorry. Yeah. Which we visit. Quite soon. Uh, round two, just to remind everybody, round two will be coming up from Forest Edge. Mm. And that will be happening on the weekend of the 24th to the 26th of May. I'm looking forward to that already. And then round three, uh, the Dunkerswell Raceway, just 100 metres north of here uh, on the weekend of the 29th and 30th of June. A little bit of a... Uh, sc- they're going to get themselves, it looked like it was, there was no way they were going to get themselves organised because they were all very splayed out. But I must admit that organisation of getting these rolling laps working has been actually superb. I don't know whether everyone's on a special best behaviour at the start of the season or what. but Maybe it is, but really it's done well. It's usually the opposite, isn't it? There's a big gap yeah. in front of Reese Llewellyn I think there. someone can't beat. I think someone's yeah. not, in the, not made the grid. I think so, yes. We'll Here we go, someone dropped in there. Oh, we've got a spinner midfield, oh. Nick, and that's caused a pile-up. We've got carts that have collided yeah. with one another. I think there might be a few nose cones in amongst that. Mm. I think we're fine. I think we've got away with it. They've resumed. Oh, got carts on the grass and all sorts. Someone, 183 has lost his um, chain guard. Has fallen off the 183 cart. Uh, That'll be a, a mechanical flag. Hemming, yeah, for, yeah. Hemming, I think he knows it's happening. He's, 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 uh, these are, he's, got, he's, he's blowing out a weird combination. I think he's had a big thump on his exhaust. And he's, he's Here they come across the line then for one lap completed. Who's it going to be? Archie Elliott is the man. That leads, Oliver Smith is second, Scott Smith third, Marcus Basley, Reese Llewellyn, Matthew Lear, Tyler Fossey, Oliver Moss, Sean Rudge and Alfie Williams, that's your top ten, just outside there is Paul Moran. More yellow flags around the track. There's a yellow flag going into Billy's blind, I can't see if someone's gone lost it there, there's one outside, someone's they've managed to collect the detritus, which was that um, uh, chain guard. Out front, battle is more second and third. Beautiful break by Arch Elliott. And then it's the battle of the Smiths. Oliver against Scott. Scott in the white. Oliver in the multicoloured. Yeah, Scott Smith in the white cart. Looking like he's going to challenge. But a, a tighter line on the entry to Billy's blind there. They're already accelerating through the S's. They're the number nine of Oliver Smith. He's first of the Masters here. Ninth in the championship overall last year. He's the leading master here. Running second overall. But under immense pressure from his namesake, Scott Smith. Yeah, it's a, so it's bad enough racing against cut, but racing against someone with the same name as you. Although, although normally that means they might be related, but the Smiths is probably more likely than not. There's a kind of down below. There's a kind of a standoff between two Labradoodles, but let's leave that one alone because that's about dogs, not about cart racing. <laughs> the second and third. That's for the break. Come round the bottom of the corner now, and absolutely in his wheel. Tra- oh, a little bit too much of the inner curb there from the white cart of Scott Smith. Got away with it. He was flying in the air. I hope he's got rib protection. That would have hurt when yeah, that landed. Did, didn't really cause him much time, though. And, and he stays on the rear bumper of Oliver Smith into the horseshoe. And then accelerating out to short burst. It's literally flicked to the left and then turning right to the, but, to the button's right-hander. Mm-hmm. Out of there. Very fast part of the track there over at the top, uh, uh, top end. Final turn. And then across the line. Archie Elliott gap out to, well, just over a second, let's call it. Yeah, this one's really spread out. Um, you know, you've got a big bunch of cards, which are 10 seconds behind after three minutes already. And there's a change now. Up the inside goes Scott Smith. Can he make it? Ha- yes, he managed to just hang his namesake, Oliver, out to dry a little bit. Now, Oliver's been joined by his teammate, judging by the, uh, the, the sticker kits, the 9 and the 19. That's Marcus Baisley, also in this kind of blue and mauve uh, chrome look. 
But if you, I bet if you actually looked at carts the ages, not only would you learn about the growth of motorsport and how karting designs change, you'd learn about how liveries have changed as well. Because this chrome thing is quite new. I don't know whether chrome's new for this year, or it's the first time we've had sun for so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. I tell you what, though, Marcus Basley, I'm saying Basley because there's no E in it, Nick. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'll let you. Yeah. Well, yes. if, we're t- if we're saying it wrong, let us know. Is it Basley or Basley? As they come out of the horseshoe, Basley right on the rear bumper now of Oliver Smith. He's lost Scott Smith. Scott Smith's kind of disappeared. There's the white cart there. The red and white overalls, the yellow helmet, he's gone. And now Oliver Smith there, the first of the blue and white, and they look like teammates, don't they? Oh, they are, don't they? They're exactly, exactly the same, the same livery. Yeah, it's, it's someone's yeah. printed that in the same shop. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll find out who that team is as they go into the hand hairpin. Oliver Smith. He's coming under pressure, oh, and gone. there's the move. That was almost there like was that was almost a let through, and their teammate. He that, didn't that really that fight him, did he? Almost like a let through. I think probably as oh no, he's putting oh, off. He's in the he's pits. Off. What's he's happened? In the pits. I'm he, not sure. Is he black flag? Yeah, I'm, I think he knew On he was mechanical pulling in or something. And I, I think he knew he was pulling in, didn't he? He absolutely knew he was pulling in. He led his teammate through in without hindering hindering him at all. That's allowed now. That's allowed Reese Llewellyn. Alfie Williams, Harrison Crook, Reese Llewellyn fourth, Alfie Williams fifth, Harrison Crook sixth. The behind them, Oliver Moss, Sean Rudge, Matthew Lear, Ollie Hancock. Ollie up to 10th place. Ollie from 25th. This is good. Ollie's Cracking now drive. Like a seventh, a tenth, and a sixth, which overall will stick him somewhere near the front of the A final. Don't forget there's B finals. Here. So when you have a problem, mm. it's not just you start at the back, you start a completely different race just to race yourself into the A final. I've had a quick, quick check downstairs. It is four carts to bump up from the C's and the B's still. It's, yeah. uh, okay. I think, I think they, used, they were using six at one point last year. I think it's the O plate, but it's four carts. You didn't, bump up. you didn't get the grids for the first of the finals, did you? No. The C finals? No. Because that would have been the thing to do. It's not, it's not really yet. They need, they need the last Junior Rotax first, don't they? Or is it TK well, next? Them. They've had them. Oh, yeah. it's just TK yeah, yeah. is it? They're, they're ready. Junior's grids are formed. Well, the answer to that question is no, then. <laughs> Yeah, the simple answer was I was no. changing batteries. And you, I didn't, I'd, you didn't think, did I you? changed batteries. I got an extra question answered. What more do you want? The grids. Because they're coming next. Oh, you're a very difficult man. I am. Archie Elliott leads by 2.2 seconds, Archie. And that's a very, very strong drive at the front. Scott Smith on the number 38. Yes. Is second. Marcus Basley now, as we saw, moving into third. And then the rest of the field. That's Reese Llewellyn with the yellow livery on the shoulders of his of his overalls. If you can hear uh, the drill, if you can hear the angle grinder sound behind me, obviously someone's been making uh, some advanced repairs on their carts <laughs> in the awnings behind us. It's um, there's a few little battles developing, or a few well, carts are coming are together they? for chat. <laughs> yeah, they're all strung out here in the one seven sevens. I think we've got the closest battle on the entire track, which I think is this one here behind. I think so. Reese Llewellyn's been coming all day, yeah. hasn't he? So the 22 is just trying to get close to Basley. 19. But, uh, you know, on the whole, you get you know, lots of classics and you get some, some great races. But sometimes things just spread out. But that's just the way it is, you know. Yes. As mixed grids giveth and mixed grids taketh yes. away. Yes, that's Reese Llewellyn with the yellow shoulders. And he is chasing down that cart in front of him is Marcus Basley. Mm. And they are they are coming together. They're ebbing and flowing. The gap between them is, is narrowing and then it's it's building again. And it's uh, it's just classic karting really. They, they are these two drivers are absolutely driving as quickly as they can. If we drop back actually to the next two, they're even closer. That's the uh, 96 of William and Harrison Crook. They are very much closer together now as they come under the clubhouse. They're about to finish the lap now. The red and white fronted machine and the multicolor blue machine coming down by Matt's camera. There we go. Yeah, it is. That looks like a massive challenge, doesn't it? And Alfie Williams has got Harrison Crook, the number six, six in the oh, championship. That's it, that's and there's it. There's it coming. <laughs> that's textbook outbreak that was, into that the hand little, hairpin. That was was, wasn't it? They were both skittering <laughs> around weren't they, on the brakes. That left foot just easing the brake on a little bit more and a little bit more and then the back end locking up. But that's Harrison Crook clear of Alfie Williams now. And we are literally seconds away from having zero time on the clock. And that will mean it'll be the one lap to go board being prepared for Archie Elliott, who will receive that next time round. 
the number 54. There that we, we can pick up just going in, into buttons and then coming out the final turn in a moment about now let's see if we can pick up the leader here he comes he's across the line and towards turn one that's not him that's him on the blue and white cart there well done Matt you've got him um, that's been um, a bit of a commanding commanding victory. yet lonely for, yeah Archie Elliott just making his way past what have become back markers now the gap has been 2.6 seconds and what we'll see in the finals are the these drivers will be in a pack of drivers which have been and had a similar day points wise that's how we form the grid he acknowledges the flag and takes the last of our 177 heats scott smith confirms second place Marcus Basley stayed in third and first Masters from Leach, Reach Llewellyn in fourth. And then we had Harrison Crook, Alfie Williams, Sean Rudge, Max Mazzanetti, Ollie Hancock. Ollie should be very happy with that. 25th to 9th. Third in the Masters there. Oliver Moss 10th. And then from 10th downwards, James Frost, Matthew Lear, Nathan Wells, Paul Moran, Zach Fontenot, Fontenot Tyler Fossey, Toby Case, Michael Mallett, Nicholas Walker and Stephen Mottram welcome to the championship again Stephen Mottram, uh, finding your feet there and rounding off the top 20 last heat coming up Nick <coughs> Yep. last heat of round one is that TKM by John? it is, the third and final one for TKM 23 carts have um Entered. 23, 23 brave carts, carts entered the race. How many brave carts will finish? We do not know. Hopefully all of them. Well, yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, good luck, Patrick williams Ron says uh, Catherine Reid. I don't know which, which he was he had a bit of a He had a bit of a character-building race there. Came 21st. Yes. Yeah. Now, James Workman, who will start pole position for the third and final heat, is a former all-plate winner. I'm told, about 30 years ago. <laughs> I'm not sure whether he was an all-plate winner on a TKM or an all-plate winner in another well, class. 30 years ago, I mean, 30 years ago, 90s, early 90s, yeah. Well, there would have been a TKM class then. There were 100cc air-cooled engines then, weren't they? Mm. They've expanded to 110cc in the years that I've been away. It's like older as we get older, we get bigger. Yes, <laughs> I suppose we do. Uh, so these are the tkm engine class carts, the air-cooled carts. You'll see no radiators on them. They're 110 cc, so slightly uh, less power than what we've seen in the Rotax classes. Uh, they've got an, a narrower sort of uh, footprint, if you like, slightly less track width uh, and wheelbase, uh, slightly different. Um, they're on the Maxxis tyre. Um, they're on the Maxxis tyre, yeah, of course mm -hmm. they are. Um, so we see slightly slow lap times, but that gives a slightly different nature of the race. Uh, we heard um, the current champion, Mitchell Ball, um, explain that because of the lack of power, it's all about momentum and it's not as easy to gain things back if you make a mistake into a corner. You can't just punch yourself out the corner using the power. So it's a little bit, you know, you've got to be a little bit more smoother. Uh, the narrow width of the carts give us a little bit of variation on passing plays. We'll see that across the year. Maybe not so much here at Clear Pigeon, but certainly at other tracks where you would think that's not a passing place on a Rotax Max. That's well, it is a passing place, place in the TKM. Dare you pass there. So, <laughs> James Workman, our former all-plate winner, um, starts on the pole from Matthew Temple Purcell. Row two is Jamie Mead and Will Cregeen. Row three is Alexander Lehman and uh, Molly Nicholas Biles. Leah Crabtree and Liv Jenkins uh, share row four. Charlie King, our current vice champion, shares row five with James King. Uh, row six is James Hull and Jake Humphrey. Row seven, Ben Watson and Sam Cope. Jack Crisp and Tom Johnson, row eight. Harrison Morrow and the current champion, Mitchell Ball, row nine. Ryan Leighton, Joseph Phillips, row ten. Chris Whiteside and Matt Slate are on row eleven. And then uh, a lonely uh, row twelve is Samuel King in 23rd. And rounding off our 23 cart field. So a lot of a lot of rescuing of uh, carts from that previous uh, one seven seven heat, which is what's caused the minor Jack delay. What's that, Jack Phil? What's it? Show the junior, junior final, final grids. Well, we haven't got the junior final grids. Be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll be getting the junior final grids when we see the junior, when the junior <laughs> final grids appear. Uh, right. 
the junior, the first junior final will be the C uh, final. C final. Six minutes. Yeah. You can go on Alpha Timing results. Um, well, they have them, Jack, really. and you will be able to check um, where the how the grids are forming up. Yes, I think there is a. If you look at the results for the NKC Round One 2024 on Alpha Timing results. Um, easy to find if you've got on your, either on your phone or on your laptop or whatever. That is the buzzing sound of a TEM two-stroke, air-cooled two-stroke, making their way out of the collecting area in a pool of beautiful blue two-stroke two -stroke smoke. Unfortunately, the, uh, the advance in motor oils means everyone's using synthetic and not Castrol R. When they were using Castrol R, it was the most beautiful smell. It was. It was. So as the field make their way around, it will be James Workman, who has not come out of the uh, collecting area first. So I'm not sure um, who is where. James Workman is down in 15th out of the box. Mm. Senior TKM Heat 3. Yeah, that might have been a few sort of... Uh, oh, the first, the first wave by have for ages. Yeah, because the grid looks nothing like it should, quite frankly. <laughs> I don't know. They, 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 TKMs love two laps. They've always wanted two laps, no matter the size of the track. And they've not had two laps. And so this time they think, well, we're going to get two laps because, frankly, we're going to clean our carbs and our engines out and the, have a little bit more the, go. The grid sheet... Uh, bears no resemblance to the order that they're in on the track there, so I'm, I'm going to... Yes, Matthew Purcell is last when he should be second. <laughs> yes, and James Workman is down in 20th. Now, that might be a choice if James is just coming back to the sport. The last thing he might want is the responsibility of starting from the pole. It um, might be that there's a... Because they hadn't officially started, the timing didn't reset itself. And so it might, let's, see, let's see how they go across the line now. Here they come. Then There's still a few stragglers there. Yeah, catching up. To avoid I think we're going to get them underway though, Nick. There they go. Jamie Mead on the left, Will Cregeen on the right. That's Jamie Mead in the yellow and blue, the Flex Motorsport cart. We've got three carts oh, coming together. Dear, oh dear, One oh dear. of which I think is the Workman, number 11. The 18. That's Workman, is it? The yeah. 18? I think that was no, the 18. No, I think that's the 11. That's the 11. Sorry, that was it. <clears throat> that's Matt Slate. Yeah. So Matt Slate. Or Matt Slate. Either will do. Yeah. So who's in the lead? It's the 57 of Will Cregeen. No, it's not. The 57 or 97 might be Jamie. Mer I don't know. Let's, let's come yeah, let's the wait line. until he's. Let's wait until he comes across. You see the numbers wrong. Because the grid didn't look like the grid sheet, Nick. That's the thing. It's 97. It's the 97 so it's of Jamie leading. Mead, Will Cregeen, Alexander Lehman, Molly Nicholas, Piles, Liv Jenkins, Leo Crabtree, Charlie King, Matthew Templer, Purcell, James Hull, and then Jake Humphrey rounding off the top 10. So minor kind of resorting scufflage but they are I think there's going to be a little bit of a move there I think I think second and third was certainly battled about I'm not sure which changed yet the 91 of Axon and Lehman now picked up second place through the horseshoe and third is the 84 of Will Cregeen who has been with us certainly the three seasons we've covered the NKC and it's I, leads. I suppose we are keen to see how much progress people like Mitchell Ball Ben Watson um, Charlie King Charlie King already up to 7th actually well Mitchell Ball's got 2 wins so far hasn't he yeah he has yeah he's currently 11th there on that lap there's a move down no. the inside for, is that for the lead yep. yes yep. it is the 91, 91. Not, 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 yeah. no, no B final on this one it's straight into the A final this that's right next time out they'll be in 12 minutes yeah that's right we've got a change of lead then that will show this time across the line We've only had two minutes of racing so far. Look at that. A train of, what's that, eight, nine carts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight before the first decent gap. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. And that decent gap is 8.5 of a second. And Around the bottom of the track. When you're in a train of carts like that, you, you, you're oh. looking for an opportunity to pass the car. You just focus on the cart in front. And then the next cart, and then the next cart, and then the next cart. And then you get very so surprised so so whatever takes you. you thought and then eventually really you have no carts in front <laughs> of you, and that's a good thing. So that's you're in the lead. Oh, right off the track and into the barriers goes, I think that was the 65 of Matthew Temple Purcell. Is that off the screen, Nick? No, it was on the screen as he began the accident. And oh, the, right. the rest of it was off the screen. All oh, right, so that was from eighth place. Is that allowable? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't see it. <laughs> he's, tried, he's dragging it out of the... Uh, oh, there's a change for second there. 
as Jamie Mead comes back at the number 49 of Liv Jenkins, who was who was actually oh. ahead in second, comes back into second now at Han Airpin. And that that is this is absolute back and forth. Yeah, they're having a right old scrap there. Uh, Tim Fazell got going again, so he's won the eight TKMs with a clutch. For that 97 car, which led for a while, Mead down in third and looking to perhaps come back forward again. It's, it's not always just I've overtaken you, I'm off and running. Sometimes it's, well, you've got past me, I'm going to come back. So this second, third and fourth scrap with Will Cagoon in the back with the orange cart. But getting away at the front, Alexander Lehman. Yes, and I think Liv Jenkins is kind of comfortable now. Liv not going to be challenged, I think, by Jamie Mead. There is still movement going on behind them. The gap to Lehman leading was eight tenths last time by. We'll see where it is this time. Now that Jenkins has gotten through and into second, Jenkins have got has got clear air towards Alexander Lehman. The gap was uh, it's nine. Lehman increases that gap ever so slightly. These three though, Jenkins, Mead, and Cregeen, this could go anywhere, couldn't it? They're following one another round, but they're, they're waiting for a mistake. Ever so slight mistake will do. Yeah. There's not there's not a great kind of difference in per, in speed. And the interesting thing is Mitchell Ball's got as far as eighth. He hasn't made that stellar no, move forward, you I think. I think he's, he's into seventh now. Ah. If you just drop back from these three, a couple of carts, Mitchell guys. Ball in the one. And then you'll see the yellow and blue cart there. That's the one with the red and white helmet. Mm. Now that he's gotten, he's made his way through all of that train of carts behind him. He's got clear air as Mitchell Ball, and he's got clear air to the number two of Charlie King. Yeah. But and then, um, I, I think that was... He's dragging Leo Crabtree with him, though. So Crabtree yeah, he is. Him. Just ahead of these, we've got... I think we've got Jamie Mead back ahead of Jenkins. But we'll wait, we'll wait and see. Yes, we have. Yes, there it is. Yep, that really right. is. Well picked up. Yeah. So second, third, fourth is going very quickly compressed into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But it is. It does look like Lehman's got an answer to everyone at the moment. Three minutes to go. And there's these plenty of time, isn't it? Mm, still fanning out a little bit there, these three. Plenty of time for both Charlie King and Mitchell Ball to tag on to the end of these three. Well, Ball scored and sixth now. So Yep, he's behind Charlie King. That's where he was when we picked him up that time, Nick. We left them because he had a lot of time to make up he's making that time up and a faster slap of the race from the man who has been the man to beat so far today hasn't he mm. Mitchell Ball 36.444 uh, sorry 444 so slightly wider there but again the 97 Mead and Jenkins Jenkins sorry fighting for the uh, chance to pick up second place Liv possibly looking for that he's glancing over his shoulder you've got plenty of you've got loads of gap there Liv. don't worry about yeah. it yeah yeah loads of gap still two minutes as well and we're still waiting for charlie king and mitchell ball to slot onto the back of will Cregeen, who's the car just to the left of these two these two battling for second the gap is still there's the orange car the driver with the white helmet alexander lehman who continues to lead this third heat to the flex car of Jamie Mead leading that 49 big JR written the back of the uh, the overalls of, of Liv Jenkins I've no idea who that is but yeah so oh, oh, Mitchell Ball ahead of Charlie King Bill, but that distinctive helmet does not help us identify what he's doing yeah look at that Mitchell Ball ahead of Charlie King he'll be in the background now, this shot any second now there he is that's significant because this time last season Charlie King it was never that easy to get by Charlie King mm. so I'm not sure what Sort of dear Charlie King is having, but he, uh, is having, but he's certainly not got the pace that we not saw a good one, no, from him last year. No, taken by Mitchell, not such a good one at all. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, that would never, you know, it would take a lot longer than that to do that. So Mitchell Ball is clear of Charlie King, and with inside of one minute, time is running out from maybe him to improve. I think, I know, I think with a top I think five, I think he's got, he's going to be on pole. Yeah, but the squabbling between that's true. Um, Cregeen and Jenkins has actually put him nearly onto the tail and there's going to be two more laps after this one now the lead has actually come down by a couple of tenths as well so Jamie Mead now is trying to bridge the lead but it's kind of the two the three four five one two is interesting the three four five more interesting is Mitchell Ball gets right onto the tail of Cregeen 
perhaps not. For, it's going to be a last lap lunge for fourth or third, or can he even do it this time round? No, nope. sticks to the racing line through the hairpin. Now looking for a chance as the others are scrapping as well. And there's an opportunity to move up the inside of the horseshoe. That's oh, there it is. no, no. Oh, no. Overcooked. He, he went in very, very fast, didn't he? Very hard. Very, he ended up going in too deep. He's going to have to do that all again. Back to the drawing board as the lead battle comes together. What it has done is it's let uh, Luke Jenkins get away. So I Four think if the ball gets past Cougain, that'll be the limit. And he has got past Cougain there as he goes into fourth. But that's probably the limit of his movement. But then again, from where he started to fourth is pretty impressive. And, and I'm absolutely certain more than enough to stick him on pole for the main final in an hour or so, hour and a half or so time. Yeah, he's got two wins, hasn't he? And what is currently a fourth place. We'll see if he can improve any more. We'll see, actually, if his flex teammate can actually get by Alexander yeah, Lehman, who's Lehman's fallen really right back towards him. He's yeah. lucky he's got only a few, a few yards to go. I don't know whether that's a pace. I don't know whether he's pierced himself he's here. He's before that. And I think but like that's that, the checkered flag, Nick. That'd be very, very brave to that. Another interesting race I there. I think that was a pace. I think he pierced himself, let himself come back towards okay. the, the field, just saving a bit of tyre life. Um, Lehman takes a controlled win then in the third and final heat for senior TKM. Jamie Mead was second. Liv Jenkins was third. Mitchell Ball finishes fourth and will undoubtedly be on that pole position for the final. Will Crogain fifth. Charlie King sixth. Leo Crabtree seventh. Jake Humbry eighth. And then we've got in ninth Ben Watson. Tom Johnson tenth. And then down the order Molly Nicholas Biles, Joseph Phillips, James Hull, Jack Crisp, Matt Slight, James King. Chris Whiteside, Ryan Layton, Samuel King was um, 19th, but we lost on lap 11. We lost James Workman on 7, Harrison Morrow on 4, Matthew Temple Purcell went out on 3, and Sam Cope we lost on lap 1, Nick. Um, do you want to nip downstairs and see if you can get some grids? I'll be doing that for you, sir. Um, I'm going to tell everybody about what's coming up in the NKC for 2024. The Junction 6 NKC, we're at round 1. We've got three more rounds of the Southern Cup, which forms the full season, of course, the full championship. Forest Edge on the 24th to the 26th of May. And then on the uh, 29th and to the 30th of June, 29th, 30th of June, at Dunks as well, which is just north of here by about 100 metres. It's Actually, it's very, very west of here. Um, we break from the championship in July uh, for a three-day event at Raura up in Cumbria. The All Plate Championship, uh, one day championship that is for the accolade of carrying the All Plate for your class. Uh, we then get back on cha the championship trail, this time for the first round of the Northern Cup part of the overall season. Wilton Mill, 16th to the 18th of August. Three Sisters, 20th to 22nd of September. And then we finish off the season, the third round of the Northern Cup, the sixth and final round of the NKC Championship at Warden Law, just south of Sunderland on the northeast coast of England. Yeah, the grids aren't quite ready yet. Even though this race is going out the sea final, Jamie Salter, Alexander Stefanov, Luigi Perlini, Kieran Cahoon, Alex Dalt, Izzy Loughton, Harry Headley, Jacob Aston, George Theobald, Ethan Barrow, Charlie Thompson, Axe for the first ever NKC sea final, Joe. Yeah, well, that's your, that's your grid, the Nick, Jamie Top Salter. Top four bump, but that's not, they're not going to let that, that, that go, are they? That's yes, we're going to get them underway. I think a few people decided not to take part in the Slightly shorter length, this six minutes of this C final, and we'll pick up the field at the Han hairpin. There they go. And remember that the key part of this race is going to be the battle for fourth. The leader pulling away slightly, second place falling back. Third place a little bit as well, but then fourth place, that's the cork in the bottle. Let's just confirm who that is. Jamie Salter leads, Stefanoff is second, Pellini third. It's Alex Dole, Kieran Calhoun Ferguson, Izzy Lawton, Alex Fraser up from the back of the field. Let's see if we can get the fourth place battle. That's where the action is because that's the last of the qualifiers. It's four qualifiers that will go forward into the B final. And that is getting very, very busy indeed. It's going to be all to fight for to get through and have at least one more race. It's going to be a big ask with the 30 car B final potential. It's certainly over 20 as they cross the line. Salter, Alex Dole now up into second. Perlini third. 
Stefanov down to fourth. He's in the he's in the area of jeopardy, if you like. That's the leader there. And that's the fourth place battle. That's the 133 of Izzy Lawton. She's in sixth. The 73 of Kieran Calhoun Ferguson is in fifth place. And that might even be fourth. I think they've gotten by Alexander Stefanov. I'll confirm that as Jamie Salter comes underneath us and completes four laps. We are two minutes into this race. Now, Kieran Calhoun Ferguson up into fourth now. Izzy Lawton right with him. That's the number 37, Jamie Salter. As we through the hand hairpin there, side by side, the Momentum Motorsport driver, number 133, the number of Izzy Lawton, right on the tail there of Alex Fraser, getting by Alex Fraser, and Alex Fraser, the 55, trying to get inside of Izzy Lawton. That's the battle for fifth, though. That's not the final qualifier. Just up the road is, is Calhoun Ferguson. And Calhoun Ferguson is dropping Izzy Lawton and Alex Fraser behind him. There's the gap for the last qualifier. Out of, well, into and out of buttons there. And then on... Crossing the line goes the leader, Jamie Salter. The Alex Dole second, Luigi Pellini, Kieran Calhoun Ferguson. Slightly comfortable now, I would say, with a one second gap to Alex Fraser. Alex, you may remember from the Minimax class a couple of years ago. He moved up into juniors last year. He's had a bit of a character building day. As the leaders are already through buttons. Now the question is can Alex catch Calhoun Ferguson for that fourth and final qualifying position to go forward and get another race out of your weekend two minutes remaining there is time is running out to qualify for the B final that's for sure we've got the B final coming up for Rotax 177s and then the senior Rotax class of the 162 class before we go to the B final of the Rotax juniors the junior Rotax class which we'll see the first four competitors join us for that B final inside of two minutes now and it's Jamie Salter solidly in the lead with an 8 tenths gap now Alex Dole who's got three seconds on Perlini so comfortable in first and second but second third and fourth now coming together Perlini, Calhoun, Ferguson and Fraser now coming together that's the battle there here we go Salter, Dole, Perlini, Calhoun, Ferguson and Fraser that's those there Kieran, Calhoun, Ferguson crossing the line he's in fourth He's got a minute to hang on to this fourth place and get another race out of his out of his race ticket today. He's going to be under immense pressure very soon. Alex Fraser, Luigi Pellini is about to lose third place to either Calhoun Ferguson or Alex Fraser, and it looks like Alex Fraser has gotten into fourth place. Alex Fraser ahead and into fourth. He's looking at third though. He's wanting that third place. He's the last of the qualifiers. There he goes by in fine style. And into turn one. Comes out of turn one. And into the S's. And solidifies his qualifying place in third place. Now then, can Kieran Kilhoon Ferguson get back into qualifying? As Luigi Pellini comes back at Alex Fraser. It's going to be the one lap to go board this time by, is it? Or do they cross the line in time? They do. Two more laps. Incredible stuff. There was only two seconds on the clock there. So two seconds on the clock as the leaders came through. And I see the last lap board being, fly, being flown there. So I'm, the, the timing's just a little bit off on our screens. 
And we have, in fact, got a one-lap board flying at the start-finish straight. So this is it. The first of the qualifiers into the B final. Jamie Salter will take the chequered flag. Alex Dole, chequered flag for him too. And who is it? Alex Fraser and Luigi Pellini, the last of the qualifiers into the B final. Commiserations to all of our competitors. Kieran Calhoun Ferguson fought very well to try and get through there. Jacob Aston, Izzy Lawton, Ethan Barrow, George Theobald, Charlie Thompson, Harry Hadley, and um, unfortunately we lost Alexander Stefanov on, on lap five. But their weekend's end. The weekend continues for Salt, Adol, Fraser, and Pellini, and we'll see them out in the Junior Rotax B final coming up shortly. We've got our first B final of the year coming up. First B final of 2024. Coming up next. And once again, it is the first four that qualify through. It's the 177s that are out next. And we will see who we've got on the grid when they uh, appear out on track. We will. Uh, we haven't been. We haven't got any sign of, of a grid, so that's not really a problem. We'll uh, we'll uh, we'll have a bit of a chat, and then we'll see who we've got that has qualified for the B final. I just heard Sarah calling the grid, and it's like listen out for your number. <laughs> yeah, that's Sarah Darlow in the background there, just car uh, shouting out the qualifiers for the B final. We've got a few carts being retrieved out there after. And I think that's Alexander Stefanov, actually. That's the only cart that's been retrieved. We'll be able to get him over the barrier and get the um, get the track cleared in good time. Then we'll be able to get things. Is that the grid that's been called to the collecting area now? Yeah, I think so. All right, OK. So that gives us a few minutes to have a chat then, Nick. It does. When is Junior A and B final? What's the, have, you, have you read out the order to go now? Right, so this is the order of the finals, right? The junior A and B final. We've obviously got to have the B final for the juniors first. Obviously, because people bump up. Yes, so that because the top four qualify into the A final. So the I can tell you the junior A final will be uh -huh. the last race of the weekend. Yes. Uh, so we're about to go ahead with the B final for junior, uh, for sorry, for Rotax 177s. We then have the senior Rotax 162s. The B final for Junior Rotax will be there next. Then we'll have the uh, Senior TKM A final, the Rotax 177 A final, the Senior Rotax 162, and then the Junior Rotax final will, uh, will be the last race of the weekend. The last race of round one. As if by magic, Chris Cox brings us As if a by magic, full of grids. The shopkeeper appears, but it's actually Chris Cox. <clears throat> yeah, good old Chris who's saved the day. Right then, here is your 30 card. 30 card B final, man. That is wonderful. Uh, Tyler Fossey is on the pole. Alex Thomas is alongside. Steve Thompson. You saw how quick Steve was mm. going. This is going to be an absolute... This is going to be cracking. First four qualifying, remember, through to the year final. So Steve Thompson and Ollie Bailey share row two. Row three, Tim Darlow. And Patrick Williams, Rohaj, Tyler Kelsey and Matthew Lear, row four. Row five is Cameron Marston and Will Milner. Oliver Smith and Dan Millward are on row six. Toby Case and Nicholas Walker, row seven. Row eight, Adrian Smith and Gary Cox. Lewis Crocker and Josh Constable on row nine. Row ten, Matt Zanetti and Stephen Mottram. Marcin Kaminsky and Marty Gilfillan on row 11. Tonino Machichi and Steve Stewart on row 12. Row 13, Michael Mallett and Neil Hemming. James O'Keefe. And James Price are sharing row 14. And then the 15th and final row, rounding off a 30-cart field, is Jack Sweeting and Colin Davis. Okay. So top four qualify. So we will be focusing on that fourth place. We'll keep an eye on who's ahead of who, ahead of them. That is, first, second and third. However, fourth place is where the action is going to be. Fourth place is where the scrap's going to take place. Um, and 
we are no doubt going to be treated to some very intense racing, Nick. I hope so. I demand intense racing. We are going to have it, mate. Don't worry. Don't worry, mate. We're going to have it. We're going to get it. We're going to have it. Absolutely. Oh, we, at yes. some point in the near future. I've just been talking about the calendar, Nick. Yes, it's very and, exciting. You're um, going to go to new tracks and new tracks for the championship and new tracks for us. Yeah, so where are the new traps tra- tracks for the champ new tracks for the championship? All right, Forest Edge. And and Warden Law. Warden Law. So and we've never been to Forest Edge. We've never been to Forest Edge. I've never raced at Forage Edge. Forest Edge. Forest Edge. It's in, it's in the <laughs> south of England. Um what's the nearest town? It's not as far Winchester. Oh it's not it's not far from here then. It's not it's about an hour and a half from here. Is it really? Nearer, to, that, nearer to me. Are we, are we nearer that, to me. Are we that far away? <laughs> about an hour or so, from yeah. Winchester. <laughs> wow. Um so Forest Edge, it's um it's a it's a very picturesque little track. I saw if you you know check it out on YouTube for any onboards and stuff. And uh, we've had some racing there before. It's the first time the NKC will visit there, and we're very much looking forward to ticking that off. There's another track that we've uh, we've visited. The other new track is we are um, we are basically finishing the season at our next new track, which is Warden Law, which I know a lot about. I've heard that. I've driven Warden Law far too many times. I'm still involved with the club there. It's uh, I live literally, literally a five and a half minute drive from there. I know. I spend a lot of time. I there. live literally, literally a four and a quarter hour drive from there. It's uh, <laughs> I live a four and a half, four and a quarter hour drive from everywhere. Living in the northeast. No, Rowra. Uh, Warden Law has been has been described to me. So you know, if there's any newcomers to Warden Law, and there will be a lot. Um, from the NKC that will be visiting there for the final round. Um, you know, what can you say about Warden Law to the newcomers to the track? It's very physical. I'm being told that. It's certainly physical, but then again, I'm old and fat. So, you know, that's why it's physical for me. Old and well covered. But it's very, very physical. Um, we had, uh, we, we, we were always having that, um, that description being made of it when drivers get there. I think it's, it's, um, it's got very few, if, if zero, really sort of slow parts. And it's quite, it's, I've also been told, you know, very technical. It's got some very, very fast sections. The first section, turn one, is an absolutely, uh, for want of a better term, courageous corner. You know, you're barely, you're barely lifting and then you, you're flat through it. It's, uh, it, you know, a bit of courage and you can really make a difference there. So we're, we're all looking forward to yeah. having the NKC there. Um, prior to that, of course, we go to some well-known cr- tracks and places. Back to the Three Sisters, hopefully not as drizzly as last time. Yeah, uh, well, we go back to Dungerswell, and Dungerswell with the... No, we go back to a different name. The, the, yeah, formerly known as Mansell, formerly known as Dungerswell. Do you think they've cleared out that collection of Mansell caps that was in that room next to us? Possibly. From, Possibly. The, from his Le Mans attempt in like 2012 Possibly. or something. Yeah, the, the guy there gave us a... Gave us a few, didn't you? I think the subs still got them in the boot. Have you? Um, Dunga's Seriously, well was I wouldn't take them. I would, I would, I would, out of date Mansell the kids. Caps. Kids? Yeah. yeah. Adult size. They wouldn't fit in their heads. Head. I know what you mean. Rowra for the ore plate. Um, familiar ground Rowra up in Cumbria. Um, the, 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 it's been around for a long time, mid-60s. Um, I visited there for the first time in the mid-80s. And uh, fell in love with karting uh, by watching God. karts at Rara. Yes, I we know. know. You've, you've heard this story no, before, no, but people have There are tribes, as yet undiscovered Africa, who've heard that story. Because it's, you know. Well told. Yeah. Told by a proper raconteur. Have, have we got any comms? What are you talking about? Any communication? Comms is us talking to each other. No, no, have we got any, no. anybody? Everyone's just listening in okay. rapt adoration of you. Well, it's possibly what? How long's Rara? One thousand and thirty meters. So GYG Glanny Gores, which uh, we've we're been there before, we're not at <laughs> this year. Um, that's a long track, isn't it? Uh, one lost twelve hundred meters. Mm-hmm. So one lost quite a long track. It's fifty, fifty four, fifty five second lap mm-hmm. for something like a junior or tax. Uh, anyway, Rara for the Oplit, and then we got to Wilton Mill, which was is a different track. It is. It's we've got a new chicane, different. haven't we? It's new, 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 yeah. new, new. Three sisters, first place they ever drove a car. Have See, you heard that story? Not enough. All right, then. I need to hear it more. Well, Please, got, tell no, more. Joe, car- I need no, I'm not telling you because we've got carts on track. Tyler Fossey, on the pole <laughs> position, leads the field of B finalists out and onto the track, and we'll be getting them into some semblance of order. It's the, There isn't really much time, Nick, to get any heat into these tyres or brakes, I've noticed here. And for the... 
I'm used to seeing at least two rolling laps here at Clear Pigeon because of the, you know, it's only 800, yeah. 815 metres, for instance. Well, they also a bit of variation spice things up, so perhaps trying to vary all the lines, everything else. Yeah, we've got them. We've got everybody uh, in grid order there coming through buttons. So there's a few of them, only 24 carts have taken the start, so there were 30, ah, right, there were 30 so officially listed. So yep. I think a few of them, either they'll get picked up this time round, they've missed off. But I think a few of them, perhaps in, in the B file, have had a bit of a bad day, and that was it really. And they've decided to kind of like call it a day. Yeah, we've got 22, 23, 23 starters. Yeah, so seven right, didn't, didn't yep. line up, which is fair enough because yeah, some people think, oh, I'm just going to go home. You know, yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm at the back of the B. Oh, we're going round again. I'm at the back of the. Oh, that's why I'm going at the back of the B final, and I'm not going to get into the A. So I may as well just uh, cut my losses, pack up my Trent, get home again, and, and sit down and have a, a beer. And also saving the life of the tires, we've got a oh, car. That's very sneaky. Well thought out, team manager Joe. That's what I do, mate. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's carts being retired, but that won't be. That will stay there, and they'll try and get them started again. There was a cart that spun at the, the S's that got going again. So don't forget, it's only about the top four here. The top four bump into the a file. They're quite a long way from the front of the a file, but of course you can still gain place and gain points by you know, coming 22nd or 18th or something. And so plus, you, you, we have drop rounds, don't we? Mm. Do we? Are we still having drop rounds? I don't know. I need to overall, you do, yeah. I think you will have we overall. Do, yeah. You have yeah. six. six. Whether you can drop yeah. one out of three for the regional competition, I don't oh, know. I don't think you can, no. Here we go. No. A lot of choking of the uh, been, carburettors. Been, yeah, we've got... Happier. Uh, that is, that, I'm sure they let that one go, because they've, they, they, they've let a lot worse. And they come round the corner. Grid Marshall pointing at Tyler Fossey to make sure he kept the, uh, the pace down. Uh, however, Tyler, F Tyler Fossey has uh, uh, lost out at the first turn. And it was Alex Thomas who's gone through and into the lead, I think. Yeah, I think we'll confirm it's, it's, that when they come back to It's a three number in second place. And um, he's the only three number around there, which is the 115 with the uh, cart with a big orange stripe down in front of it. It's led by the f 11 about, you're right, it's, it's Thomas from Fossey. For... The, four, the front breaking away a little bit of a gap. Steve We're going to confirm who is in that fourth spot. It could be Tim Darlow, actually. We'll find out any second now. It's no. not, it's not it's Steve Thompson. So it's Alex Thomas, Tyler Fossey, Ollie Bailey, Steve Thompson, and then Cameron Marston, Tyler Kelsey, Nicholas Walker, Lewis Crocker, Matt Zanetti. Tim Dan Darlow's Millwood. had a nightmare. He's down at 17. I think he might, might be the person who spun the first lap and couldn't regain but the first of the rerun re laps of it and couldn't regain his position. Now, the 115 of Fossey has gone down to third, third. and well go down to fourth. Yeah. And don't forget, that's key because it's the bump-ups are the top four. So second place now, I think, is uh, Ollie Bailey. And, oh, he was bumped off the track there. If I yes, was, uh, was. Yeah, if I was Fossey, I'd be unhappy about that one. No, he was uh, a bit of a nudge there to make him make the space to make the move we'll get a clarification on who's who when my timing screen updates on my computer that is yeah Cameron Marston up in the fourth Tyler Fossey now down to fifth they're still close though Nick yeah around about that fourth place they haven't sort of dropped away so it's still all the battle for yeah eight minutes One, again two, for three. these B finals One, remember two, three four bit 12, of a gap to the main finals yeah bit of a gap to um, so here come the leaders Alex Thomas Ollie Bailey Steve Thompson Cameron Marston into and out of the first turn and already into the S's and then on towards the hand hairpin we've got a little bit of a racy looking Steve Thompson mm, wonder that, I wonder whether winning is important they are, they're well, aware of fourth I, place I, don't I know. think Steve Thompson is concerned about what's behind him and, uh, he's, and, it, and if you've got momentum, you've, you you want to continue it. It's a four-car breakaway, though, Joe. It is. The top is, four have got away. Is. Alex yeah. Thomas nicely away. Then Ollie Bailey, Steve Thompson, Cameron, Marston, knows the tail. And there's a nice little chunky gap back to uh, Tyler Fossey. They're about 1.6 yeah. seconds away. And there's a foursome, all qualifying at the moment, all bumping up to the A final, which will be taking place, I don't know, about an hour and a half. I don't know, an hour and a quarter. Um yeah, they're pretty safe now, aren't they? Uh, the way that they've broken away. That's, yeah. uh, that's going to be, you know, if, you, if you're Cameron Marston in fourth place, you're going to be looking over your shoulder and just checking where that threat's coming from. And you know what? There isn't anybody there because mm. we've dropped right off the tail. Yeah. There's the white cart there. That's the f cart in fourth place. These four can change positions as much as they want, Nick. Yeah. They're going to be on the final two rows of the grid for the year final. There's a change for yeah. second place, for instance. And they pulled out the gap between fourth and fifth to two seconds. So, 
you know, there really is no, uh, you know, you think of racing series with no jeopardy, Formula One. Uh, there is no jeopardy at all of this one at the moment because unless these two, but what, what the jeopardy is now is that they, they, they actually trip over each other and actually hit each other and slow each other down. This second, third, and fourth battle, Bailey, it's not the order now because they've, they've had a kind of a kerfuffle around, but it could consist of Bailey, uh, Thompson, and Marston. Alex Thomas, well away, and thinking, why am I in the B final? Why have they been so bad I'm in the B final? I can you know, lead this so comfortably. Yeah, that's obviously going through their heads. It's getting, get, you've, got, you've got another race for the afternoon, haven't you? And, mm. you know, you're, you're racing for pleasure. I'd, like I said, I'd be really dubious <laughs> about my tyre life. Mm. Um, about, you know, putting another eight-minute final on the tyres. But then, you know what? You, you're kind of hoping that when we get to Forest yeah. Edge and then Dunk as well. Just hoping that Forest gonna, Edge. It's going to rain. Yeah, basically. It's going to rain. One. If there's a wet one, fantastic. All bets yeah. are off, aren't they? Yeah. Otherwise, Absolutely. At, the, at the back end of uh, Dunkers, we'll be going, oh, I haven't got any grip. Help. <laughs> Help. I have no grip. Yeah. Any, uh, am I allowed to race on canvas? Oh, okay, fine. Well, if you, if you watch the paddock show, we talked to the two managers at Coles Racing, and, and it's something, it, it's quite alien to mm. be going into, and it, he actually said, he said, we're going to be going into round three with a set of tyres that we would have put in the skip two rounds ago. <laughs> and he said, it's going to be, it's new ground. It's a challenge, you know. They're going to, they're going to relish the challenge of, you know, trying to get the tyres to last and, and mm. trying to get the tyres to work going in. And that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Now, we have a message from Jenny Thomas, and she says, come on, Alex Thomas. Now, I'm guessing, and you can call me a sleuth, that they're related. <laughs> there might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jenny, I don't think there's Jenny a general, might be related there's to There's a Alex. general like Thomas Clan who just, anyone called Thomas, I'm going to back So, them. Jenny, you need to tell us, are you his wife, his sister, his mother, his aunt? Could be his girlfriend who randomly has the same surname. <laughs> that does happen. That, that would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, two and a half minutes remain, and these four have got this, dare I say it, in the bag. If they don't trip over one another... They can have a lovely sedate drive to the check and flag in two minutes' time. Tyler Kelsey has dropped off 1.2 seconds now, back, Nick. Actually, Yeah, but he's back because he was, he was two at one point. So that yellow helmet in fifth place is closer than he was, and he's giving it some, that's for sure. Um, that's Tyler Kelsey. You're thinking of Tyler Fossey. Tyler Kelsey, you're right. Tyler, so Tyler Bob Fossey. He, Tyler, he hit, Bob Fossey giving it jazz hands. Tyler Kelsey... Yeah. He's in fifth, he's come back to yeah, it. Yeah, he's come, he's come back and he's got a little bit more pace. In fact, he's the fastest cart on the track. Is he still there? However, he? there is two minutes remaining. And I'm f I, I fear, Mr. Kelsey, that you may have run out of time. I know you've made your way through and you are chasing down that fourth place, but we'll keep an eye on that. His sister. Up. There you go. Thank you. Jenny, Thanks, Jenny. Sister. Thank you. He's, uh, you're going to have another race to watch after this. Jenny, oh, what are they oh, doing? What's going on here, Alex Thomas? And as I say that, Jenny, Alex Thomas has fallen back into second place, and I'm not sure whether that was a mistake or not. It's yeah. got to be. Yeah, it's got to be because they weren't really challenging. They're one all another, over were they? Oh, now then, this is going to get interesting, Jenny. Yeah, Thompson leads. It's Kelsey's got it down to it's uh, so 1.3. It's still a, a, a nice little yeah, gap to the is. fifth place. It is. I thought he was making some sort of impression. On that gap, he's not, is he? Now, if these four who have already qualified yeah, they should just start squabbling, they are. they're going to come back towards Kelsey, and Kelsey could rob it. Could one, run the last place on the grid. Is this one? And two, it might be three more. It's going to be right on the cusp of three. I think it's one and two more, isn't it? Um, let's see where we're at. We're 50 seconds. Remember, they're lapping in 36 oh, seconds. Oh, no, is this one and two more? It's going to be two more two after more, this. Yeah. yeah. Cameron Marston seems very convinced he doesn't want to be third. Yes. He's, he's been... But now he's got to get past Alex Thomas. <laughs> Jenny, says you, Jenny says you jinxed it now. <laughs> yeah, you have. You have, quite frankly. Yes. Right. The next time you message in, we'll not mention anything. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just acknowledge you. We'll give you a pseudonym. Okay. So, two laps to go when they cross the stop finish line this time around. I don't think, actually, Kelsey gained an awful lot that time. Doesn't look a lot visually close. Remember, it was 1.3 between 4 and 5. 1.2, actually. And now it is 1.1. So he only needs another 11 laps. But he's only got two. So. Now, give Steve Thompson his due. He's managed to gap the rest of the field since there. Thomas Cameron, Marston and Ollie Bailey. 
So our leader now has a lovely little gap. He's just showing his, his pace. He needs to be trying showing that. You know, now it's time or so for the main final. It might be less than an hour for the main final. It might even be 45, 50 minutes. And there they go. Nose to tail. Master. Oh, he's right shove at the backside of Marston there. <laughs> That's risky. You get, it, you, get, you get a nose comb. It, it absolutely is, yeah. And get five seconds. Now, five seconds would drop you back to sixth. We'll drop you out of the top four. That's yeah, the people. Drop you out of the top four. Look at that. There's our, there's our man, Steve, um, Tyler Kelsey, on the back of these. But uh, it's all a bit late. Oh, is it? Because he's got one corner to go. They're on the last oh, lap. Oh, they need to not make a mistake, boys. Keep your foot in. Crossing the line then, qualifying there we go. One, into two, three, the air four. final. Steve Thompson, Cameron Marston, Alex Thomas and Ollie Bailey. There are your four drivers that you will see back out later on for the year final in the Rotax 177s. Tyler Kelsey, Nicholas Walker, Patrick Williams, Raj, Tyler Fossey, Tim Darlow, Stephen Mottram. Steve, you finished in the top ten of the B final, mate. That's not a bad outing for your first visit to the NKC. Um, interesting Nick that even though those four could have just you know gone round and round together yeah, they, they, they didn't they squabbled and they didn't and they nearly blew it let's be honest about this but they didn't so they can they, they will, they'll learn nothing <laughs> no quite frankly no they would have learned something they didn't learn anything because it didn't it didn't go horribly wrong <laughs> that's right what can you say racing drivers did you ever, you know, you were a team manager, did you ever have a race driver who just didn't learn anything ever? Of course I did. <laughs> Alan <laughs> Taylor. What are you talking about? I told you the story. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I just wonder, well, I wasn't really counting him. He was Alan a, was, he was, was, a, he was more of kind of doing, doing rental Alan driving. Just wanted to, Alan just wanted to sign autographs as a British touring car yeah. driver. We, uh, where I ran Alan in minis and also Cleo Cup. And um, I remember, what's your reference point for your breaking point there, Alan? What do you mean? <laughs> I said, well, what, are you looking for, a, like, a change of tarmac colour? Are you looking at a tree? Are you looking at a barrier? Oh, I don't use reference points. I said, well, how do you know when to break? He said, I just time it. <laughs> I said, well, Was that why you lost so many bumpers? What do you mean? Yeah, that's why you went creaming into things. <laughs> you ran a marshal over, man, in a flipping yellow flag. Oh, I remember taking him to the steward's office once <laughs> for a yellow flag infringement. He overtook one of the yellow. <laughs> and uh, I said to him, just keep your mouth shut. Just say yes or no. So I'm very sorry. It won't happen again. So the, the steward said, didn't you see the yellow flag? And he says, no, I didn't, sir. I'm very sorry. It won't happen again. He said, you didn't see the yellow flag? No, sir. Yeah. Did you see the JCB recovering the car from the car? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Do you not think there was a yellow flag accompanying the big yellow JCB? <laughs> I never thought of that. I just put my head down. <laughs> I remember under safety car at Hilton Park in a brick car race, he'd come on the, he'd come on the radio. I said, <laughs> Pace, uh, safety car, safety car, and safety car. And then literally 35 seconds later, I've just taken him. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken him, Joe. I've got a place. I'm thinking, what? Safety car, Alan, safety car. Two minutes later, got another one. <laughs> Under the safety car. <laughs> Brilliant. Senior uh, Rotax. I'm thinking it's now a race. We can't tell you about Taylor. I, I do know most of Alan Taylor's stories are completely un, 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 unusable in the, in the, in the free <laughs> no, world. But, uh, 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 right, qualifies for the B final. Looking again <laughs> at the first four to go through to the A final. Lewis Berry and Alfie Bushel, Ben Ballou, George Spilsbury, Nathan Jensen. Told you Nathan with that D and F would be there, but he's in fifth place, everybody. And uh, that could, the, I'm talking to everybody in the Nathan Jensen fan club, that is. The George Holmes alongside, Kel Gray, Harry Pearson, Gregory Akers, James Becker, Jason Bear, Levi Goodyear down there, Henry Stratton, Matthew Griffin, Zach Fletcher, Liam Deedman, Grace Lee Davis, Simon Spagnuolo, Reese Pope, Paolo Nunes Aranda, Aranda, Harry Wright, Joshua Delacarta, Reese Knight, James Cutting, Michael Thompson, Kieran Thompson, Samuel Christensen, Tristan Sharp, Martin Bramwell, and Jeremy Hawthorne. Oh, look at that. Way. Oh, well, and it's a nice jump for the 31 of Lewis Berry. Again, that second place on the grid seems to be slightly better than the first place sometimes. But he's, uh, remember, it's all about the top four. So you get in, settle down, but there's a lot of action going on through the S's. No, kind of bumping and barging, but no major incidents. They get through the, the first few corners with no retirements. And 28 of the 30, was it starters, took that one? Yeah, so only two people have decided to pack up and go home. Now, don't forget the bottom four, uh, the bottom four, so the top four, <laughs> talk about, don't forget the top four, I'm just still laughing at Alan. The top four <laughs> get through at Alan Taylor. So Alan Taylor gets a free pass <laughs> if he's here. 
Here we go then. <laughs> Who's your top four? Crossing the line first is Lewis Berry, Alfie Bushel, Nathan Jensen. Nathan. He's up to third. Ben Ballou, Kel Gray, Gregory Aiken still all to play for though. Do not settle in your seats, everybody. As the number 37 of Ben Ballou breaks a little bit free there. There's a challenge for second. That's Jensen. Nathan Jensen on the red and white cart, number 32, going into second place and got his sights set on Lewis Berry. And uh, Holly Jensen says, come on, I believe in you, Nathan. I'll give it enough oomph there. Um, one, two, three, and four. They are your qualifiers. They're in your shot now. And that is, as they cross the line, you get the, the, get the names and the gaps, is Berry from Jensen, from Ballou, from Bushel, Akers, Gray, Holm, Stratton, and Becker, Bear. That's your top ten. But right. it's, four, it's four from five at the moment. You can see him from space. Alfie Bushel in the bright yellow helmet and the bright yellow cart. Look at it. You can see it from anywhere. He's about to come under pressure, though, from Gregory Akers. Look at that, Akers. We need to be following the yellow cart, Paul. That's the one there. Because Akers in the white cart behind him is absolutely chasing him down. It's RC rules, everyone. It's all about the bump up. Fourth place. And if you want to know what that means, enjoy, have a look at some of our sister racing during the European Championships from RC Racing TV. Between the World Championships and up the inside there. And I think the lead's changed, actually. Just, it did. Oh, those three are absolutely... They were side by side going through the, uh, the, the, the first bend at Billy's Blind. And if they're not careful, they're going to have each other off. Nathan's leading now, isn't he? So Nathan Jensen takes the lead of this final. But he's about to lose it again. Oh, that was a, that was very, very forceful by the 37 Tony cart. And Jensen drops back to yeah, third. Yeah, Jensen's back to third. But now we've got a six-cart train. So we've got joined up by somebody else, which must be uh, George Holm. This is all no relation. For, this is all to play for. And Jensen goes wide as he goes by Bushel. It's all going to sort itself out into Billy's blind. Ooh, oh, and he's gone. Bushel's no, no, gone. No, no, no. Is he taking, is and he taking is he Jensen taking with him? Off? Is he taking Jensen with him? Has he t who's he taking off? We can't see the number. Oh, oh that no. is tragic. Oh, Bushel. no. I think, it, I think it was Jensen he's taken with him. I think it is. I think it's the 23. Hang on. There's nothing you can do, no, guys. No, the 32 is still there. It's not Nathan. Oh, it's, it's not, not Nathan. Nathan. No. Sorry. So, it's. let's look at it again. It was the 226 of Alfie Bushel. And who was the second cart? It's the two. So the thirty-two is ahead Holm. of the yellow. It's Holm. It's Holm and Bushel who've gone. Yeah, it is Holm. Holm. Yeah, but I think I. Th oh, how many times? Now, did he lose it or did Holm tip him round? I'm not sure. No, we, I think. Can we just have another look at that one? This is the, uh, with, with this, uh, yeah, the other, the, the four behind the replay. There's four. I mean, two, two sets of cards. So has four he, wide. Ah, he, got, he, he got, got a little nudge there, and, and he then got, no, he, he got he, he, he got, got, got touched. Yeah, yeah. It was touched. It wasn't. It wasn't he, an overlock break. I think he bricked for the cart in front of him the tawny cart in front of him of mm. Gregory Akers now then these we four we now have a four who have hopefully have learnt their lesson but they've got two seconds they've got two seconds on the cart in fifth which is Reese Port so if these four can behave themselves it doesn't matter whether you start on the on the 14th on the 15th row or the, row row or the, or the 14th row you're going to get another race this afternoon or you're going to have nothing and you're going to go home I think that was a move there was that uh, was that yeah, that was Nathan moving up to second. So Nathan just moved second. So it's Ben Ballou, Nathan Jensen, Lewis Berry, and Greg Akers are your four bump ups. We've lost two due to driving. Well, it wasn't anyone's fault. It was one of those things. It's, no, it's, it's racing. It's a racing I mean, instant. I think, I think it, they're, they're going to be sick as pigs, but they're going to they, realise it's they, just one of those things. These drivers know that it's all about the fourth place and they're wanting to qualify mm. for the year final. They're wanting to gather more championship points, and it's yeah. also, you know, they're going to win a B final. I'm sure, I think there might be even trophies there for is, B there finals. Is, yeah, and you do get a picture in the in the, in the Facebook page. Yeah, uh, Ben Ballou, who was very forceful on on uh, Jensen, oh, there's a, exactly there's a there. But that's that's where he kind of eased Jensen out for the lead, for the lead, well, lead or second place a few laps ago. It's all been seems like a different day. Something's yeah, happened since a, then. Yeah, it absolutely does. Uh, just to remind everybody: three minutes remaining, three minutes of this B final, and another change for the lead, and it's Nathan Jensen, currently our first qualifier from Ben Ballou, Lewis Berry. Gregory Akers, the gap has come down to 1.1. It oh. was 1.9 to that fifth place cart. Now it's just on the second. And if they're not careful, Reese Pope and Levi Goodyear's coming as well. 34.9 is the fastest lap of the race, 34.916. So Levi Goodyear's on a charge. Well, it doesn't matter about Goodyear because Reese Pope's going to get there very, very soon because there's some stupidity between Akers and Berry as well. Just drive round, boys. When you actually go oh, for it, you lose time. Here comes the fifth place man, the man who's been oh, dropped. The tawny is cart Akers. Of, the tawny cart of Gregory Akers there. The white cart is now under pressure from Reese Pope. And if anything, with two and a half minutes remaining, 
Reese Pope's going to get him. He's going to get him. There's too much time on the clock to hold him back. He's got a massive amount of pace. Look how far he's come to catch them. And now he's on the bumper. He's on his rear bumper. He's having to defend. He's going to have to defend for two whole minutes. No. And here it comes at Buttons. He's got the inside line. Going to have the advantage into the, first, the last bend, their top bend. And look, what's he doing? He's saying, come on, catch. You don't have to, mate. You're in fourth. You need to get away from him. You don't have to catch them. Well, you do if you want to consolidate, but you're in fourth now. Yeah, four, five, six. Like one of those is going to bump up. And I, I, I'm finding it hard to have any sympathy for uh, Gregory A because I just felt they were just too aggressive when they could have just run it round. You know, I think there's people who don't quite realise the point of this B final is to bump into the A. It's not to win anything. It's not, you know, it's, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a mindset. They've got a racist mindset, and some people, you know, that's not how it works. Well, we've got one, two, three, six. four, five, six carts now. And with a minute and a half or so to go, you could really not, not pick. Lucas. I would think, apart from Jensen, any, uh, any yeah. of the others could be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. There's the 16. Oh. Try squeezes up the inside of the 38. Oh, and the, well, there we and go. Who's that? That's gone that's off. The 16. That's Goodyear, isn't it? That's, that's the Goodyear. number 16, well, Levi yeah. Goodyear. Let's have a look at that again. You can see that Aggression. Coming. And I understand why, because you've yeah. got to get past... He's got driven out and oh, ooh, coming together. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. As who's going to who's going to reap the benefits a bit of a there? Isn't instant there, to be honest. But so let's see as they cross aggy. the line. It's quite aggy, isn't it? Nice let's gap get a, now. Let's get a grip of this. J Nathan Jensen, Lewis Berry, Ben Ballou, Reese Pope hangs on to fourth, steers ahead of Gregory Akers. That's the battle there for fourth. That's mm. the last qualifier. Yeah, they're going to get two more laps after this one as well. Yellow flag is the yellow flag into the S's. There's a yellow flag into the bottom bend. It's yellow all the way around from start finish is it? To, the, to the into the hairpin. Right, so you're going to get no. Ch so you're not going to get a place change at turn one, or to all the S's. All the S's. So from Billy's blind all the way to the Sturmy Straight, you're going to have to hold station. Okay, it might, they may lose the second yellow flag in a second because they are just about to drag that car, that 16 car, off the track. Oh, up the inside? No, not quite. So out and away, now he's in the lead as Nathan Jensen. The fan club's done well. And then we've got three carts who are still squabbling around each other. It really isn't a great idea. So Baloo is back in second, I believe, in the 37. Yep, yeah. then it's Berry. No, nope, Berry's gone to fourth. It's now Pope, then Berry. Akers with the all-white cart is kind of following them up. But with this now moving on to their last lap, as Jensen now takes the, the uh, last lap colour. And he will be fine if he doesn't make some monumental error on his own. In fact, it's looking like one, two, three, four is solidified because Akers doesn't seem to have the pace to catch up with the others. Now, what they need to do is not get involved with each well, other. They've, they've, they've just almost um, done it again, Nick, when Reese Port went past Lewis Berry. And, the, you know, that, that's for third and fourth place. Reese Port now third. He doesn't want to be the vulnerable one in fourth. Mm. They're quite, you know, conscious of where they are. Here comes Jensen out of the final turn. We'll stay with these three, though. They're the three final qualifiers. Nathan Jensen qualifies to the year final recovery drive for him Ben Ballou Reese Pope Lewis Berry they are your four qualifiers we'll see them on the back of the grid in oh, the year final on the last lap just outside of the top four oh. Gregory Akers Pablo Nunes Aranda James Becker Henry Stratton and that is uh, Henry Stratton Jason Becker Kel Gray that's your top ten commiserations to all of our non-qualifiers We've, uh, you know, this is what motorsport is. You've got to learn how to lose before you can learn how to win. And commiserations again. I'm sure you've enjoyed your weekend racing here at, uh, at Clear Pigeon. And we look forward to seeing our non-qualifiers out at the second round at Forest Edge. Yeah, unfortunately, it was an instant on the last lap. Um, both uh, carters are away. Uh, one of them is a little bit worse for wear, to be honest. Uh, I think that was the 818 of Matthew Griffey. Yeah, Matthew's not happy with the world he's got a he's obviously had a little bit of a, a, a dink on the the ankle and perhaps on the shoulder as well because he had the one of the carts sitting on his nose but uh i think everyone's fine i'll take him a little time to clear the carts away but oh, there's a lack of engagement of brain i felt there what did you think yeah 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 i mean it, it's the it's the it's that racing driver's instinct isn't it it's like you know be sensible you say to your driver be sensible you know you only have to qualify fourth and it's like, yeah, but I could be third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I could be second. <laughs> uh, the Reese, would you like to hear the uh, the um, 
the Nathan Jensen fan club comments. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, here we go. Holly Jensen, come on, I believe in you, Nathan. And then Reese Sedgwick, come on, Nathan, first place. Holly Jensen, yes, Nathan. Reese Sedgwick, uh, come on, Nathan, keep going. Jenny Thomas, turns out I was good luck because Alex Thomas must have uh, pipped in the previous one. Uh, Holly Jensen, yes, Nathan, well done, proud sister. And Reese Sedgwick, come on, Nathan, you've done, you done well, done, mate. The only thing is his girlfriend's not coming anymore. What's happened there? Ella, isn't it? Yeah, she's not there. She's not, she's not made a single I comment. She, I, I actually think that she probably couldn't cope with the tension. Ah, I see. Could you? Or possibly she didn't realise it was the B final. Because <laughs> he's probably used to being a his name final. He probably, probably walked up to a nightclub and go, hi, I'm a top carter. Yeah, the, 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 it might be. People talk to me about top carting. It's me, Nathan. Hi. <laughs> and uh, she goes, oh, well, you're top carter. Okay, so you're only ever going to be in A final. Yes, yes, I'm in the NKC. I'll be in the A final. We were on a half past four. And she goes, oh, tune in then. Nathan That's how well. things could have worked out. Uh, yeah, Nathan Riss is... Uh, gift shop. Gift shop. <laughs> well done, Nathan Jensen Whoop. Aero... Has he got his own Aero gift shop? Aero get in Nathan my goat. Greatest of all time. Um, no, I realise so, that. I don't think it's like an alpaca so like Ash Nath- this day. So the Nathan Jensen fan club has a gift shop. Gift stop. We have dogs. Gift stop. Yeah, we are no, I, I got a text. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, that's what do you call the what's the collective noun for dogs then? Now, that is, is are those small greyhounds or big whippets? I think they're small greyhounds. They've got definitely a greyhound on the right, I think. And then you've got a kind of a flow type dog or a couple of um, furry things on the on the left. Sorry, it's a greyhound type dog. Aren't on the dogs right. all furry things? Uh, not those Mexican ones. They're new, naked, aren't they? Um, this is Nathan. Je- okay, you get me the Nathan Jensen thing, yeah. yeah. Lives in Hartlepool. Does he? He's a long That's way from home, like, like I am. Yeah. Um, so yes, we have four dogs there. Two two greyhounds. I assume X racers because it's normally isn't it? most of the greyhounds you see are X racers. Lovely pets, greyhounds. By the way, I've had greyhounds in the past. Well, my daughter has got a whippet, mm. and it's not even a dog. <laughs> it's a cushion. It won't go out. <laughs> it won't. It's a cushion. Yes, <laughs> it's quite frankly a cushion. It, you, it, it's it's also a camel. It doesn't wee, it doesn't drink, it barely eats, it just lies there and does mm. nothing. <laughs> it's pointless even having it, <laughs> apart from it's got a cute face. Is it friendly? Freya is very, very friendly. Right. Yes. How, on, the, on the flow to, to, to Vinnie's scale, how friendly is she? With Flo, mm, oh. and Vinnie, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> She's nowhere near. Vin, Vinnie's a 10 for, for exuberance yes. and, and, and over the and flows and, and drama. <laughs> And Flo's quite sort of a minus 10. Oh, there we go. That's like being bearded. That's a big oh, old what's thing. what's that then? I don't know. I should know, shouldn't I? Yeah. It's, um, is that a Bedlington Terrier? No, or no, 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 no. Bedlington's. It's not. I don't think it's We're a, a long way from Bedlington. That's and it's sure. not a Bedlington Terrier. I don't think it's, uh, it's black. It's putting me off. It was, if it's differently colored, I think it's a, um, uh, an Airedale. It might be a black Airedale. Well, that's down by Matt, isn't is that it? a black Airedale? If it's, going to, if it's going to do its business, please don't cut it uh, up. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt can ask, actually, what sort of dog that is, and then, and then message us, if you like. There Hang he is. On, there this, he is. is. this is worrying. Yeah. Hold yeah, on, yeah. hold on. Who does this remind you of, okay? Okay, Holly Jensen. Mm-hmm. Nathan, I'll give you a piece of chocolate for that. <laughs> a little bit of chocolate. Why, why are you... What's, it's going to follow up what the dog is. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's it's our caramel, dog Matt. info. Yeah, he's going to message us, actually. I think it's a black Airedale. Let's yeah. see if I'm right it's or wrong. It's a black Airedale. I'll say it's a dog. Well, you're absolutely right I'm with that first copy. Right. It's definitely a yeah. dog. Here we go, then. Oh, it's a giant schnauzer. I'm completely wrong. It's a giant schnauzer. <laughs> junior Rotax B final. That giant schnauzer, Junior Rotax, same thing, isn't it? The one we've all been waiting for. Thank Harvey, you, Matt. Harvey Williams and Adam Catling. Billy Volk, Harvey Lee Winteridge. George Kerr and Caden Welsh. They're on row three. We've lost the number 23 already. That's Ryan Says. He was in seventh and a chance to qualify. Uh, 23. Ninth, ninth and tenth is Sonny Morgan and Daniel Clancy. Archie Hardiman and Aidan Clark on row six. Seven is Freddie Theobald and Jack Theobald. Samuel Aston, Max Greatrex, Rafi Salentano, Jesse Whitmore, Oliver Grundy, Oliver Gooseman, Joshua Whiting, Charlie F. Grave, Sam Green Gomez, Alexander Cullen Tuno. Connor Tubby, Charlie Hume, Thea Bush, Lucy Lovell, Kathy Kamata and Barnaby Grubb. They're on the back of the grid. The key points are fourth place, Harvey Lee Winteridge, fifth place, George Kerr, Caden Welsh in sixth, Billy Vogt in third, all to play for and anything can happen and probably will. But not for the 23, it's a non-starter. Not for the 23. That's Ryan Sears. There we go. Junior B. Oh, I dread oh. to think what's going to happen here, Nick. Into turn one they go then. Oh, well, a couple of them just holding on. Yeah, midfield, get through. Everybody gets through, Billy's blind. 
everybody gets through it's a very tight narrow s's isn't it and then down to the hand hairpin they're beginning to space out the first two are pulling a gap oh no that gap's disappeared Is hang it, on a minute no, 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 got a false start. False start. i got all excited what there did, what was that why was that one a full start and 75 of the others today haven't I been know. who knows nobody knows nobody knows the answer to that one nick no nobody nobody knows how cold my toes only one person knows the answer god well yeah Got a clear pigeon today. So Harvey Williams then will bring them round again. Adam Catling will have it all to do again. Billy Vogt, Harvey Lee Wintridge. That little tactic that you used at the first turn that you've been thinking about all over the lunch break, that's going to have to be shelved because you've just shown your cards now, guys. You're going to have to uh, do something a little bit different if you want to try and fool somebody into moving out the way and giving you a bit of a gap. The 77, uh, the triple seven, I should say, Adam Catling. Is in the blue and blue and yellow Nando oh, Norris car, but it's Harvey about the Williams. Of the pack there. Yes, I'm not sure how they'll. They're taking that one. Oh, got an instant midfield, but everybody's through. Absolutely, I think. It was, oh, and two off. And one's got going again, which is the 53. And another one. That's it. That's I think that's game over and day over. All side by side into the horseshoe. Sort themselves out. Billy Voigt's in second. I read the 19. There. Harvey Williams is leading. I believe Vogt in second. I think so, yes. He's 19. Right. Harvey Williams, Billy Vogt. That's your first two. Or oh, four carts pulling away. Can we see eight minutes of sensible driving for the first four? I vote no. And probably not is the answer. Williams, Vogt, K, Catling. Kin, Welsh and Sonny Morgan are queuing up behind them in fifth and sixth. Down to the hand hairpin. And we've got a good luck Barnaby Grubb from uh, Jack Philpot 60. Just on the meshing up into the lead goes Billy Voigt through the horseshoe. And it may be even first to third unless uh, Hard Williams is careful. And the triple seven of Adam Catling is having a big old think about uh, getting up the inside of George K. And you know what they're doing? They're scrapping. They're not gapping. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> so Sonny Morgan, surprisingly Sonny in the B. Obviously he's found this uh, jump up to uh, Junior a little bit probably tougher than he thought, I would think. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure um, where, where he was finishing, remember. Um, but uh, he's with Howarth Racing for the NKC this year. You know what? It's all to play for in that fourth place. Look at that. We've got about three oh. wide. That's three wide for fourth. It yeah. is actually three and wide for fourth. Morgan now, who's in fifth, but he's looking to get back up into fourth. Caden, you know, Caden Welsh is ahead of him. Is that, is that actually? So Caden Welsh, yes, is now fifth. Sorry, Morgan is sixth. There's a little bit of a kind of a pleasant gap there. With the triple seven, the green car, that's the fourth place machine. There it is. You've got the rainbow machine in sixth. Looking up the inside, Morgan there, very intelligent driving. Could see things happening in front of him. Got a position up there. Sucked into the, I think sucked into it was very much was, was Caden Welch. And Catling went by. Oh. And then uh, it's still Morgan now battling round the outside. No, he went, he tried to get down the outside. But uh, Catling having to defend and with just under six minutes of this B final remaining, he's going to have to defend for another five and a half minutes at least as they cross the line. Morgan pulling alongside. He might have the inside line for Billy's blind. He has if he can go last on the late breaks. He, he has, has indeed. Sonny it. Morgan has, has made it, but Caden Welsh has gone through with him. And has he come back at him? Yeah, he's come back at him. Oh, So... Morgan now in fourth. The top two have had a little bit of break out. Voigt and Williams have got away slightly, but now Morgan that third and fourth battle. Just move it, just just just, just, just calling it wide and see if we get third and fourth and fifth. But third and fourth where the battle is. And it looks like Morgan's looking now to uh, snaffle up George K. And we have a gap now. Yeah, they have. Oh, he looks over his left shoulder, but Sonny Morgan's over his right. But he's can Sonny come through? Morgan no. Seemed to, seemed to lose a lot of momentum during the halfway down the straight. Like he wasn't going to overtake him, which is interesting. As you say, he's in the vulnerable position. You don't want to be in fourth. You want to be in third and give yourself a little bit of, uh, oh, dear, yeah, left, right, left, right. What's going on here? He's not, and he's not he's gonna gonna be, He's not going to be happy until he's in third. And now he's in third. And now he pulls away. And he's left George K hung out to dry. Because up onto George Kay's bumper has come Adam Catling, Caden Welsh, Daniel Clancy, and I think even Jensen Hook, he's in there. That's yeah. down to eighth place as well. Sonny Morgan's checked out. He's going to leave George Kay to the into the clutches of Adam Catling. That's the battle there for fourth. Catling on the Lando Norris there, the blue and yellow. And then you've got the 995 of Caden Welsh, who's not that far away. Who's the triple three triple coming three, to? Daniel Clancy, Clancy. The, the newcomer. Yes. So the young man, he was racing here last week on novice plates. 
we believe, and maybe may not be quite correct, accurate. Um, but he's certainly an experienced driver, and he's, uh, he's, he's learning fast, and he's looking for that final bump up position. Now, obviously, here point, yeah, the top three should just disappear. Though, obviously, Morgan is trying to challenge the seconds. There's this lovely gap now between third and fourth of 1.5 seconds. But this is the final bump up. It's currently held by the white cart of uh, George Kay. But he's got Adam Catley in the triple seven, Lando Norris, green and black. Get past. I tell you what, he's very hard on the brakes into the hand hairpin there, isn't he? Is Catling the uh, the car just snapped sideways? I mean, I know it's induced by the brake pedal, but I think if he found if he finds himself just a little bit smoother in there, he'll he'll be able to carry speed into and out of the corner. He's a little bit harsh. The car sort of hard to control, and just look at that, George K. Bit of a breather, isn't it? Mm. Quarter of a second is the gap that comes back towards Catling. As they go through the S's, absolutely nothing in it. As they go through the twisty infield there, the hand hairpin followed by the, the more open hairpin of the horseshoe. It's got two apexes to it. Clancy's That's got past Welch, so he Clancy's down six in the triple three. Now uh, he's got three, three, well, two, two minutes, 45 seconds to try and get onto the back of these two. You know what? It's still he's coming. Could, it's still, absolutely. Catling can still see qualification up there he just needs to get clear of George Kitt George has left the oh, door open and Catlin oh, goes through that. it he opened the door for him by sliding wide out of Billy's blind but look at this with these two squabbling they are they are allowing Daniel Clancy and Caden Welsh in on it Clancy I think was surprised by the opportunity and then they made his own little mini mistake which I think might just let Welch in not quite this is there just but there's two of the, the two carts at the back there this is fourth and fifth fourth now held by Catlin in the green and black whereas the white helmet mostly white with some blue on it with Kay he's lost the place but you know at this point as you say it's, it's easier to follow them to lead and certainly he's not been dropped by any means from this the Junior Rotex B final final bump up place for the A final which will be taking place I would say in just under an hour 15 yeah, minutes and he's yeah. got him it's he's got him he's got he's, uh, him yes lost he's, it again oh and he slid very well he's lost two places almost lost three no, he's do or die, but it means the triple three of Daniel Clancy now holds the most pointless position of all, which is the first person not bumping up in fifth place. And we've had a change of lead, guys, as Sonny Morgan comes across the line in the lead and ahead of both Harvey, Harvey Williams and Billy Vogt. Adam Catling cons confirms that fourth place there as he flicks it into the hand hairpin. Sonny Morgan has gotten through and he's away. He's got a, a gap of almost six tenths of a second. As we get towards the final minute, it'll be two more laps as he crosses the line with about 50 seconds on the board. Two more laps for Sonny Morgan, Harvey Williams, Billy Vogt, and Adam Catling to hang on to those places. It's oh, not over there yet, he though. Goes. Clancy through. Great and, move. But with him, the 595 oh, yeah, of uh, Caden Welch. So, so Clancy, he's certainly a quick learner, this young man. So Adam Whoa. Catling finds himself two places further down and well out of qualification zone. Oh, it's some bright squiggly movement there on a couple of the cars. Clancy's got two more laps to go to qualify to the year final. Uh, we, we were told earlier today he's just off his novice plate, so he's, he's a relative beginner. He's been racing two years. He raced in the BIC, BIKC. Is that, pro, is that a pro car thing? I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't know what the BIKC is. Um, we'll, f we'll find out probably. So, Morgan, Williams, Voigt, they are going to qualify. Morgan's put, pulled a nice gap actually overall. Yeah, he two. has. But He's they've got, got the top three got sensible now. They're about to start their last lap, but it is this battle here for the final bump up position between Daniel Clancy and Caden Welch. Out of it now is Adam Catling. So, what can Clancy do to hold back? The aggression of Caden Welch is do or die now. It's, 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 it's go or go home. Look at the left, look at the right. It's just inside, oh. not quite. Oh, he's very, holds it down. He's they go very, through the S's. He's oh, very, a lot of curb. A yeah, lot of curb. He's very fast through there, but he, then he blew it by hitting the curb. That's cost him dearly, and it's cost him even more dearly at the hairpin. No, nope. the hard Over hairpin. Under. Yeah, no, no, no. He's down got the, him. Oh, down the outside, dear, the nine five of Caden Welch went down the inside. And he's hung on to that. He slid wide, but he's hung on to that. And right at the young man has learned a big lesson here. He, he had it all to do 
He's very fast through the first section of this track, but then he blew it by clambering over the curbs at the S's, and that blew his momentum down to the hand hairpin, and he paid the ultimate price as Caden Welsh came through. Sonny Morgan first, Harvey Williams second, Billy Vogue third, Caden Welsh fourth, and the final qualifier to the A final, which is coming up and will end, be our last race on Karting Live TV today. Wow. And behind him, commiserations to everyone else, especially Daniel Clancy, who was in fourth place and going into that final the BIKC turn. is a rental karting indoors championship. All right, thank you for that. Who's that? Jack uh, Philpott. We've got Jack Philpott from Max 15 Karting, British Indoor Karting Championship. British Indoor Karting Championship, right. And, uh, and let's uh, look at this. So, this is the previous. This is when he got passed in the first place. Um, yeah, that's, he just sent it, didn't he? Mm. He just sent it and let it breathe out to the outside of the corner. And everybody has to steer away from you when you do that. I think this, I think that was a pretty I good think drive. he'll be coming along. He's a little lad. Well, I said that's not fair. I don't know how old he is, but he's physically small. Uh, and I think yeah. he's got a chance yeah. of, of, of uh, really he's going, you probably know. Probably in the early years of junior Rotax. Mm. Looking, at, looking how small. The early is. years of junior Rotax. Mind you, Lando Norris was that small until he got to Formula One, wasn't he? Yes. And he couldn't, he, that's one of his biggest problems. He couldn't drive the cars. He wasn't strong enough. A pack of dogs. Uh, says Matt Guppy is the collective noun for dogs. <sighs> what no, are you sighing for? Because it's not, because it wasn't what we were saying. <laughs> what? Giant Schnauzer. Yeah. Got any more dogs to pick up then, guys? <laughs> I need to reply to Matt's scurrilous statement. What do you say? Uh... That's not for broadcast. Um, as we retrieve some of our junior road tax B finalists uh, and getting their carts over the barriers, we've got the first of the A finals and everybody, the first of our podiums to be fought out over the duration of 12 minutes now. So a little bit longer, a little bit more patience needed in the early stages of these A finals. Or is it? Uh, no surprise when I tell you, Mitchell Ball, the current champion, continues on his winning way he starts the 2024 season as he finishes the 2020 he finished the 2023 season with the number one on his card as the reigning champion Mitchell Ball from the Flex Motorsport team on the pole position and his teammate Jimmy Mead alongside him in second we've got the uh the number five of Ben Watson the Paul Classen team there being represented by Ben, Jake Humphrey alongside on the second row Alexander Lehman and Leo Crabtree share row three, we've got Liv Jenkins and Matt Slight on row four, we've got the other um, the teammate of Ben Watson Charlie King, the number two, the vice champion, starting in ninth and I'm not sure what sort of day I can say Charlie is hard, he's not had as competitive as a day as we've expected from him, certainly in the when we saw him in the 2023 season. Charlie running in the British Championship as well, I believe, this year. Um, not quite sure how he did in the British Championship last year, but certainly came second in the TKM uh, NKC Championship in 2023. Uh, he starts a lot with Will Cregeen alongside him in 10th. Uh, row 6, Tom Johnson and Joseph Phillips. Then we've got Harrison Morrow and Molly Nicholas Biles. Uh, Jack Crisp and James Hull are on row 8. Row 9 is Chris Whiteside and Matthew Temple Purcell. James King and Ryan Layton are on row 10. Samuel King and Sam Corp are on row 11. And then rounding off the 23-cart field, we've got James, Work- uh, James Workman making a return to karting. Uh, I'm not sure what the gap has been since he last raced, but he was 30 years ago, we're told, a former all-plate winner. And unfortunately, he broke down one of the heats, which is why he's probably at the back. Yes, that's right. You've got a DNF, which uh, certainly bites you when it comes to your grid position for the final. You kind of wonder about the intelligence of people, don't you? You do know what I did for a living, don't you? Yeah. You put up chairs to pe- keep people away from your wiring and keep people away from your... Bro- from your uh, so they stand on so the chairs. So they stand on the chairs. Yes. It's just like rent a moron. It really is. Yes. People are... <sighs> anyway. Anyways, talk amongst yourselves. Anyway. Well, what are you doing? I'm going to need one of these to keep the... Uh, oh, it's jammy dodger time, is it? Yes. Some sugar. I only had 17 at lunchtime, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. An hour ago, about 30 no. 
Oh, I didn't see any of those. Thank you. I've been given some bit. Oh, it's Jamie Dodgers rather than uh, cream sandwiches. Yeah, the creamy ones were nice, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah. That's what all the girls say. Anyway, so well, there's a queue to get into. There's a queue to get into the paddock. <laughs> there's so many broken carts. They had to release ah, these. Ah, right. Yes. We can't both. Have, we can't both eat a biscuit at the same time. Was that sorry, Joe? I've got mine in. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Joe got his in first. He's ready to the grid, which is all you need to do. The, the pool of smoke clears. Uh, literally from in front of our camera. Well done, Daniel Clancy. Great race. It's Laura Clancy. I agree. She he did really well. He's, you know. Pardon? Oh, good, good point. <coughs> Thank you. Just, someone's concentrating. Have you finished eating biscuit yet, Joe? <laughs> it's like I've, as I have to do the start of the race, because our, our, our main commentator is stuffing his I'm face. I'm not too far away. Here we go, then. <laughs> the first of our air finals, senior TKM, about to get underway. 12 the minutes. The number one, the reigning champion, leads them off with his teammate alongside. How harsh is it going to be at the first turn as Mitchell Ball takes the lead? <laughs> Jimmy Mead slots in behind him. I've got a claggy mouth. Doesn't he, Jammy Dodger? Bitchell ball. Oh, we've got a spinner. Oh. That's the 20. That's uh, James King. James King. King team. So, go. right. One, two, three. Away they go. Mitchell ball from Jamie Mead. Third place is the 51 of Jake Humphrey. And it's the five of Ben Watson. Now, Watson chose quite a bit of pace in the final heat. And ball not breaking away too much moment. It looks like it's more nagy between second and third. That's me and Humphrey. Well, Mitchell Ball will be wanting to control the pace at the front. He'll 12 minutes, remember. Slightly longer. Well, a good four minutes longer for the finals. Half as much again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've An got... An extra 50%. We've got a podium and trophies to present for the winners of this very race, this 12-minute race right there in front of us. And right now, Mitchell Ball is not pulling away at all from Jamie Mead. Jamie Mead keeping everything in his sights. And behind him, Jake Humphrey, Ben Watson, Leo Crabtree, Alexander Lehman in sixth, Liv Jenkins, Matt Slight, Charlie King into ninth, Will Cregeen. Rounded off the top ten, across the line again. Everybody seeming... You know what, Nick? I haven't used this term oh, go on, then. at all today. <laughs> this my friends, is a high-speed game of chess. Right. They are playing a weird game. I don't want to upset game. you, but have used it once already. Have I really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't really remember that. You kind of gave it big about using momentum, but you had actually did that as well. So it's fine. Oh, I've used momentum. It's all about you momentum. You have to use momentum. It's all about race, momentum. Race driving is all about momentum. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, breaking away from the rest of the field. Alexander Lehman being left a little bit behind in the wake of these top five. Across so the line then. Three laps completed. Yeah, I do feel the pain waiting game. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Mitchell Ball's not broken away. I think he probably doesn't know about, you know, how well the tyres are going to last over a 12-minute run. It's not, whilst it's not super warm out there, the track's being bathed in sunshine the whole time. So the track temperature's going to be pretty much up there. Um, yeah, air temperature's probably only about 13 or 14. Is a bit, we're all on second and third changes, I think. Yep, yes, the 51's yeah, got him. So there goes yeah. Jake Humphrey in second. But they say, you know, you've got to think about tyre wear. Not tyre wear, sorry, tyre life and how it well, evolves tire, you, through the well, race with tyre pressure. That, that's else. all crucial on your starting tyre pressure. Mm. If you've gone wrong on the tyre pressure, the tyre can overheat. And albeit you don't destroy the tyre, but it renders it, 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 it renders it a little uncompetitive because the cart starts sliding around. Now then, the question is, with Jake Humphrey having gotten by Jamie Mead, can he break away from Jamie Mead, who's coming Ooh. back at him? And the more they squabble over this position here, and you've seen that, just one position change, and there's Mitchell Ball pulling away with the biggest gap we've seen all race. Yeah, Ball pulling away, but more importantly, that move by Mead has kind of backfired, because now he's got Watson on his back bumper. Saying that, actually, Watson lost a bit of drive at the top corner there, over the, over the top bend, and got actually a nudge in the backside from Leo Crabtree. Not, not deliberate, just because he hadn't uh, driven out the corner enough. Here they come then into the S's for the sixth time. And Humphreys, Jake Humphrey, is pulling away ever, ever so slightly from Jamie Mead. You can see the Jamie Mead cart. That's the blue and yellow cart. It's the same livery as Mitchell Ball. They're both in the flex team. Mm. And behind Mitchell Ball, behind Jake Humphrey, Jamie Mead, Ben Watson, Leo Crabtree, there's a gap now developed between them and Alexander Lehman. So the, really the race is about these 
It's looking and like third where it might move, isn't it, at the moment? There's a little bit of a gap there for Humphrey in the, the, the grey and red, and then the much more almost solid grey number five for Ben Watson sitting there in fourth place. As they drive away, you can read numbers beautifully there, 97, 5, 44. Behind them, it's kind of, again, it's all quite processional at the moment, not in a dull processional way, but no one's really pushing hard. They've only just moved past those first four minutes, so they are now in the second trimester, to give it a kind of... Uh, uh, pregnancy thing um, you, of you, the race. You know, I was uh, deliberating over what all plate uh, James Workman yes, will have were. won. I had the information in front of me all the time. Uh, he won the British all plate in 1994 in TKM. 30 years ago. Yeah, exactly 30 years ago. Raced in the uh, Super One Championships as it was then. Yeah, which of course was the British Championship days, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Right then, everybody's but balls, called back, no, but up. Yeah, called back up again. Yeah, so I thought they would. So I thought no, they would. Not, I, I, my wonder is whether Mitchell is going just as fast as he needs to go because he's, he's concerned so. about tyre wear and tyre pressures and life and temperature. I'm expecting that question to be answered, Nick, with about a two minutes, 90 seconds to go. Right. When he will maybe start, you know, really pushing. I think he's controlling the pace here. He's controlling his own pace. If he's not careful, Jake Humphrey will be latching on and getting a bit of a slipstream. Remember, the slipstream means a lot down the uh, the curving straight here at uh, Clear Pigeon. It's free time, isn't it? It's yeah, just, yeah, it is absolutely. Free time. Yeah, you get a little bit more speed out of the mortar. The mm, mortar doesn't cost you any, doesn't cost you any fuel, doesn't cost you any tyre wear. It's just free time. And Ben Watson, you can't discount Ben. Like I say, I think we are playing a bit of a waiting game. Yeah. And... Look at that. On the back of this five, you've got Alexander Lehman. We thought yeah. we dropped him off there. He's not. He's right with Leo Crabtree. And behind Lehman is Charlie King, the number two. There's I don't know what's gone on with Charlie King this weekend. I don't think. It, I, you know, some days it doesn't work. Stuff, you know, just perhaps he's, not, he's perhaps not a clay pigeon person this year. Who knows? But more importantly, at the front, we've got a train of five, to, well, six carts. You wouldn't, you'd say there's two sets of three, even though the gap between those two sets of three is less than the, about three tenths yes. of a second. Yeah. But you just think that the Mitchell ball cart and then the two carts, which are with grey and red and the, and the fully grey cart, just seem to have a little bit more at the moment. But I absolutely agree with you, Joe. I don't think that any of them are giving it... A, a, well, they're giving it 100% of effort, but not 100% of their available speed. They're all thinking about what they can hold in reserve and what will be available for those last four minutes as they go get towards... We're over halfway now, but we are not into that final third. Yeah, high speed game of chess indeed. And there, Mitchell ball using all of the road on the exit of the hand hairpin. And going very wide, certainly a wider line than Jake Humphrey and Ben Watson took. And I'm looking at the livery of the car on Jake Humphrey. I haven't got any information about Jake in front of me, but that looks black very and similar. Orange, black and, it's grey, black it, and orange. Yeah. It, oh, look at that! He's right on the bumper now. It's with different Ball. from the five, which is all grey. It is. It is. I thought it might be a class and car. Oh, hang on. Uh, there's the 51 now, right on the bumper of Mitchell Ball. Have yeah. you noticed Mitchell does not look over his shoulder? No, he's, 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 he's not looking over his shoulder not, at the moment. He's not breaking away either. No, he's not. And, he's and not. I would have thought that if you've got the pace, a little spurt to give yourself half a second and perhaps make the five of Watson more interested in the 51 of Humphrey than vice versa and then hope they slow each other down. I'm telling you, these boys are driving very, very hard indeed. But they've. I looks over his shoulder now. He knows he's there. He's got to drive with in mind that the cart behind him, remember little bit different the way you race a TKM to a Rotax Max insofar as you have not got the power so you you know throwing it down the inside like we see Rotax Max do at the first turn you've got the power to get yourself out of the trouble you've gotten yourself into not so much in a TKM and that would set you would sacrifice a massive amount of time by sending it down the inside. Yeah, we've seen what we've seen in the TK, which we haven't really seen in the road tax, people sending it up the inside of the, the hairpin, but they're not having the power to drive back out That's again. That's right. Losing the position in both the, the drivers involved, losing half a second into the rest of the field. That's right. And this is what we're seeing right now. Ooh. And you know what? Ben Watson is, I wouldn't discount Ben Watson either. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't discount the 51. That's a 97 to Jamie Mead either, because he's trying no, to... No, that's right. It, it, that three and three is now becoming a four and two. Perhaps Mitchell's not got the pace at this point, or at all. This is just where he's at. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I don't know. I don't, you know. Look, you know what, Nick? This TKM Championship went down to the final few laps of the season here at Clear Pigeon back in October. And it's going to be like this all season. We've seen this so many times. Here we go. I mean, look how racy Jake Humphrey looks. Look how 
Ben Watson is looking. He's he's hanging on to the back bumper of the 51. The 51 is right on the bumper of the number one. There's three minutes still remaining. A full quarter left of this 12-minute final. And we are not showing our cards. It's a bit like a game of basketball, isn't it? Down <laughs> to the final quarter. And then you start putting the points in. Just a slightly less good lap for me. He's been very slightly dropped. Top three... Pretty close. 36 sixes. 36 three is the fastest lap of the race. There's a 36 five from Mitchell Ball. Well, a 36 that time. four. Yeah, he well, a 36 five one two and a 36 four nine seven. Well, those five thousandths of a second are yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the, I mean, oh, oh, there's, there's a, a move there's a for move second. Move well, from ben nowhere. Watson. Has he got the drive out there? Has he got the drive I, out? He got to do a nudge. Nick, that honestly, mate, that did not come from nowhere. I could see what he was doing. He was playing a waiting game. He was looking at areas where... He was following Humphreys. He was looking at where he maybe had, had a chance. He was looking at where his cart performs better. And he chose his, chose his place. Now then... The winner was Mitchell Ball out of all that, though. Yeah, absolutely. And if these two continue to squabble... And I, I suspect that Jake Humphrey might want to come back at Ben Watson on the number five. If he's got any sense... Because I think they've actually got a bit more ground speed than Ball. I think he won't do anything until they're close, they've are close. closed back up to Ball again. Ball we that should. time around was four tenths of a second. But visually, it got a little bit less. Uh, and Mitchell, absolutely controlling the race. Has he lost a couple of tenths this time around to Watson? He's had a, a lap to think about it. He power what? down in front of him. He doesn't, doesn't like four tenths of a second to me as they go underneath us. Let's see what it is. It's not, mate. It's, let's call that three. We should have a two-minute bell, shouldn't we? <laughs> Well, they come out fighting, two minutes they come out fighting even more. Yeah, yeah. Abs well, they absolutely do. Now, this is the point where I think There's Mitchell, Mitchell needs Ball to go. He might needs need to, go to pull now. something. He might some need to pull something out of the toolbox and get away from Ben Watson. He's not happy at the moment. Watson's gaining on him. Abs it's absolutely. Inching, it is the definition of inching closer. Well, he's carrying the number five. He had a good season in 2023. He came fifth in the championship. That's not a thing. You know, you, you can't be... You can't be poor at something and come fifth in the championship Another as intense as this. Gain. So now he's just he's gained it was three tenths behind, now he's one and a half tenths. He's gained half it back again. But ball, obviously catching is one thing. Oh, oh he threw a look over his shoulder as well there. We're inside the final minute, if he's Nick. He's got it, you think he'd use it, but perhaps he just feels he's got enough at the place he needs it. He's breaking into blind uh, bottom or he's a one he's blind. He's a one. They're flat out. <laughs> they're flat out on the edge <laughs> they're flat out on the edge and all this, this all this tactic yeah. talk has been pointless so actually yeah, it's been a very good out. top corner there he's gained a bit back again because there's, there's, it's more the sniffing behind by Humphrey on Watson it's just slowed Watson down slightly back out of lost three a couple tenths. of cents on that one round again now at this point everyone's looking for what position they can make and winning it perhaps is out of the question for Humphrey so now he's looking for second into the hand hairpin then it'll be the one lap to go board next time by this is going to be a very intense last lap as Mitchell Ball been playing with us all of this final long. He's had two heat wins this afternoon. He's got a massive amount of points haul for the championship. He will see the one lap to go board. The last lap shines brightly above the gantry. Defensive. And their defensive driving for the last time in the Billy's blind. Last time into yeah, the S's, tighter one. line. One more, one more he, chance to lose it. He needs to hope that Jake Humphreys wants that second oh, place. From and way there. back. Oh, look at that. Jamie Mead down the inside of both of those carts. And then loses it back. And both. then loses it back because he didn't have the oomph to get out of the corner. And this has played into Mitchell Ball's hands. He knew that that might be the chance as they go into the final turn for the final time this afternoon, indeed the weekend. And it'll be Mitchell Ball that takes the win. In, in quite fine style, I've got yes. to say, all day long. Yeah. Ben Watson will be Watson, very pleased, he was very surely. Pleased. He was tapping his that, tank, he was he, chuffed. He was cool with that. He had a very cool race, did Ben Watson. Um, and, I, and I could see what he was playing at as well, just staying in the wind. But look at that, Jamie Mead. Fi third and final step of the podium for Jamie Mead right at the very end. And I tell you what, Jake Humphrey, Jake, you had a great race there, mate. And you'll be disappointed with fourth. You won't get a trophy for fourth, and you will be disappointed in that. Fifth place was Leo Crabtree. Sixth was Alexander Lehman. Charlie King, seventh. Liv Jenkins, eighth. Harrison Morrow was ninth. And then rounding off the top ten was Will Cregeen. 
Some great racing there. I've got a few messages to read um, while we wait for the next one. Uh, Kate Rosier, please give Ryan Taylor Truman team a huge shout out for supporting Bobby Rosie this weekend. Without them and Ian Armore replacing Dad and the Spanners, Bobby would be a bit stuck. Agree. And the low five bangers agree. The support Bobby has had recently has been amazing, even getting him here. Uh, Kate Rosier, proud of you, Bobby. SM number one, it's been a challenging couple of weeks and you're still holding your head up. P6 to start the senior final. It's awesome. Enjoy your race. Remember what, remember what the plan is. Um, and thanks to Oscar Lawrence for packing him and shipping him there and supporting him. So they love our karting family. So obviously uh, it's been a difficult week, uh, weeks for Bobby and the team. And he's been supported by friends in the paddock, which is lovely. Because we all talk about the argy-bargy and the aggression on the track. But you know, in the paddock, you know, not everyone's friends, but a lot of people are friends. A lot of people, you know, have a, have a good, spirited team to chat with and 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 have friendly competition with, in the uh, in the groups. I still have friends from my karting days that have become lifelong friends. Um, some of them you never get a call from to go out for a beer. He claims to be a racing coach or something, and he never has time. But you know, you know, it's Warren Hughes. You know who you are, Warren Hughes. Yeah, no, no, both three busy lives. My, but yes, I mean, my my racing buddy, unfortunately, died in two thousand and four. Well, thanks for lifting the mood here, Nick. That's fabulous of you. I must, well done, you I, must tell, I must tell you a story about him in the car. I can't tell you here. All right, good, good. <laughs> we were being all all lovey and family-ish. And you tell us about somebody dying or something. Jesus, he, he, t- trust me, he lived a full life. I get the picture. <laughs> He was older than me. He, was like, he wasn't my age. He was older than me. But would you like to read the grid out for our 177? <gasps> yes, I would. This is the first, our second of our A finals. I can't wait. Okay, so in pole, Harrison Crook. Then Raya Tame and Truman Drew in the front row. It's Alfie Williams and Ollie, Han- Ollie Hancock on row two. And Ollie's the fastest or the best qualified in the Masters. Then it's Scott Clee and Max Williamson on row three. You're just eating biscuits, aren't you? And there's Nathan Chafer. Come on, Nathan Chafer. And George Walker on row four. Scott Smith and Nick Skelton on row five. Reese Lewin, another master. And Jake Davis on row six. Cole Edwards with the, the uh, chrome nose. And Marcus Baisley on row seven. It's Sean Rudd Oliver Muss on row eight. Uh, Robert Simpson and Lawrence Hilton on row nine. Josh Bass and George Willis on row ten. Eleven is Dan Milner and Daniel Hammett. Twelve is Steve Gilly and Paul Moran. And it's Archie Elliott and... David Simpson and your bump ups are James Frost, Nathan Wells, Joshua Pickford, and Zach Fonson. Actually, they weren't your bump ups, were there? There are four, the, the, no, no, the four the, bump ups that need to be added to this grid. Yes, that's right. Yeah, which that's are right. Alex Taylor, Ollie Bailey, Tyler Kelsey, and uh, Nick Walker, Walker, I think, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well done, Nick. Good luck to George Walker, we, says uh, Finley uh, Merrigan. We're about to get going with our 177 final. And off the front is Ryan Taylor Truman and Harrison Crook. I think that's Harrison Crook who snatched the lead there. Let's see if everyone can get round Billy's blind. We've got a straggler on the outside, found himself with nowhere to go. We've got oh, a cart oh, pointing the wrong way wow, in the ow, S's. Ow, 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 ow. You do re- not want to be in that position there. He regains, though, and all good as the leaders are already at the horseshoe and out of the horseshoe very quickly in the button. Yeah, we can see the chaos in that first corner, or third corner, sorry. That, it, that must be so frightening. We've got the entire field it's coming terrifying. towards you. terrifying. You've not done that before. I, I was off the track when I fell off. <laughs> I was a long way off the track. <laughs> first lap completed then. Harrison Crook it is. Ryan Taylor Truman. Ollie Hancock third in the first of the Masters. Alfie Williams. Nathan Schaefer. Scott Clay. Max Williamson. Once again, Nick, I think we're going to see a little bit of patience creeping in. As I say that, Nathan Schaefer looking very racy indeed. That's nothing out of character, we is it? We have a lot of support for Nathan Schaefer. Well, one person giving him a lot of support. That's uh, Talavera. Uh, come on, Dan Milner, says Jack Philpott 6. And good luck to Alex Thomas, says Jenny Thomas, who's obviously we know is his sister. So they come across the line to complete lap number two. And the lead, I don't think, for Harrison Crook was as big as it was. It was 0.574. No, it's actually yeah, very it slightly bigger. Well, yeah, there you go. That's tenths. visual. And they got 9 tenths a second on Ollie Hancock. And it's Williams and Chafer. And that's your battle there. That's 3, 4, 5 and 6. Yep. Going up and away into the hairpin and a leap out the corner there and I think that may well have been Chafer taking Williams and don't it quote is. me on that but he may well Chafer's in the orange card yeah he's going to and he keeps the position the Chafer moves into fourth place I think Williams dropped back two there as he was kind of pushed completely out of position I think it was a bit of a uh, what's the word for it opportunistic passing as well going on there they go across the line Crooks lead is extended by another 500 to the second. Hank's got scored third. And it is those top two are getting away, but not closing up. It'll not take... 
So Ollie Hancock. And not a cheer for Long Nick. Well. He's, uh, he's got clear air to the next cart in front of him on his list is Ollie Hancock. Now, Ollie has got a wealth of motorsport experience and thoroughly enjoying his karting here uh, in the NKC. Chafer, though, the CRG dealer is on the CRG, the bright orange livery of NCR. That's his team. That National Cash Registers. The what, sorry? NCR was National Cash Registers. Well, it's Nathan Chafer Racing, I would I think. Do you know what? You're really good at this. I aren't am, you? yes, yeah. Into the hand hairpin then. And they all box up together. Harrison Crook is now about to be joined in the lead of this race by Ryan Taylor Truman. And Harrison Crook and Ryan Taylor Truman need to be sensible. Let's just drop back off these two, please, Paul. Oh, up that's the third place there. cart side by side into the first turn here at Billy's there Blind. And that's Nathan Chipper ahead of Ollie Hancock. We saw that happening, didn't we? We thought we thought that was going to happen. Uh, didn't expect it to happen as quick as that, though. Nathan Schaefer, Scott Clee, now behind Ollie Hancock. Out of the hand hairpin. I expect Schaefer, right, the gap to Ryan Taylor Truman was 2.9 seconds. That's a good if you're looking for the grid, there Thank it is. Cheers. And we've got a clear run now. Ryan Taylor Truman, another fastest lap in this race, as around the outside of Ollie Hancock has gone Scott Clee. Oh, Holly, absolutely does not let that go easily. And hung on to that fifth place, fourth place, as long as he could. Just to answer a quick question on the uh, chat, Lawrence Hilton is a non starter. He was supposed to be in this race, but he's not starting the 1 2 1. So he's the one person, he's the 34th car that isn't there. Ah, right, okay. Um, that came from uh, Jane Thomas. Right, where are we at then? we got right, still looking at this third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh leaders, battle. Leaders across the line. The gap to between second and third was 2.9. It's now out to 3.4. So I thought with clean air in front of him, Nathan Schaefer might be able to bring that gap down to Ryan Taylor Truman. I think we need to look at the top two. They're within two tenths yeah, of each other. I agree. Let's move to the front. Now, thank you indeed, Ash, for that one. First and second. I think we might be playing a waiting game here, though. There's still seven and a half minutes remaining. Well, he's, well Ryan Taylor Thomas is, sorry, but Ryan Taylor Truman has made up that three tenths of the gap, four tenths now. So he's, he's, he's moving forward in this kind of a uh, red giraffe logo they got on the, uh, on, the, the, on the stickers. Harrison Crook is absolutely rabid. The six, he came sixth in the championship last year. That's why but he's Ryan running the number third. six. What, sorry? And Ryan, Ryan Taylor third. Truman was third. Yes, that's what I was about to say, Nick. Well, I just uh, made so it easier they, for you. These by two you. drivers in this class, the 177 kilogram Rotax Max class, are really at the top of their game in this class. And it's, hard, it's going to be very hard to pick a winner. It's going to come down to, you know, who has a bit of luck, really. Because Ryan Taylor Truman, I think, is still about three or four minutes away from having a go. It might even be longer. It might be five minutes away. Oh, I think of the opportunity it presents, you go. Well, yes, but the speed difference between these two is not that great. I, d I don't think that Harrison Crook is holding up Ryan Taylor Truman to any great extent. I mean, he ebb the, the gap ebbs and flows. Right, let's have a look down the straight here. Taylor Truman looks over his shoulder. There's nobody there, Ryan. Into turn one. Lost the turn. See, see uh, you, you know, it just... It stays about the same. They're under, no, they're under no pressure from the guys behind. Nathan no. Schaefer is three and a half seconds back, sorry, 3.3 seconds back, and he's been that since he got past. So the, the clean air didn't do anything. He's just moving at the same pace as they are. I think they're both absolutely on it. They are absolutely on it. They are. So you've got a second pair of his Scott Clee, and then you've got a, a, more, a gaggle more of machines after that. Crook pulled it out by another 800 of a second there. No gain by Chafer. Yeah, the problem is, of course, Nick, that when we pull away from this to have a look down the Obviously. field. Obviously. Um, the, there is... The, the, everything's spaced out, to be honest. Um, you've got a little bit of a battle. Uh, a congregation behind Ollie Hancock, who's in fifth. George Walker right on his tail, and then right on his tail, Cole Edwards. 
and then Alfie Williams, and then Let's Matt risk it. Williams. Let's drop back to that Skelton. battle for fifth, which is yep, led by the white is. cart. So it's a pair and a pair, and the battle for fifth. We'll pick it up at the bottom of the track with... Uh, right, they're just about to come through now. Here we are. Here they go. So that's this is them the, there. Five, six, seven, eight. So that's five, only on the six, 51. Seven, <laughs> that's only on the 51. That's George Walker, Walker, the bright orange and yellow cart, then called Edwards in the... Your favourite colour. purple and everything else, yeah, purple and yellow. So there's the move into that fifth place of Ollie Hancock's and also going with him almost was Cole Edwards mm. so we moved to that battle just in time to see a place change yeah I mean it's, 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 it was coming, didn't yeah it? I mean the thing to remember is it, it, it's not about just about the win every position carries points and it's a, a points championship and you've got six rounds or three rounds in the Southern Championship and six rounds overall you can drop one but if you have a race We've well, had some good heats. You get some good, get a reasonable final. Even if it's like fourth or fifth or sixth, it's still a good points overall. You know, to get one of those top ten finishing positions. Ollie coming back at him actually, not letting him get too far away. George Walker on the bright orange and yellow cart, trying to break free from the advances of Ollie, Ollie Hancock. It took him a few laps to get by him. He's managed that, and now he wants to break free. He wants to pull that gap consolidate that position in that fifth place and then when you're sitting in that fifth place Nick you're just hoping that the cart yeah. ahead of you make a mistake and fire off yeah exactly you, yeah, you, when you when you base, it's, 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 it's the basic concept when you've done as much as you can and you can't catch people in front you have to make a massive mistake oh there's a move from Cole Edwards Edwards who was who found himself behind Alfie Williams I'm not sure how that's uh, how that's panned out I think he has gone ahead of Alfie Williams the 96 now behind the purple and yellow cart. We've still got three minutes on the clock. Yeah, top two are getting a bit racy again, but not sure where that, where that is going to be, be anywhere. It's a place where you've got, got, got kind of looking like four different places because there's, I know. there's, again, third and fourth are quite close together. My spidey sense is saying perhaps we should go back to the leaders now. Yeah, because we're getting towards the witching hour, aren't we? Yeah, it's almost so the two, top two. They're, it's at top, all, they're, they're at the top bend now. It's all and they're going to come the, underneath Ash any second. It's there almost the two-minute bell, isn't it? Yeah. 2.37 to go. And as you rightly say, Harrison Crook has not been under any immediate threat from Ryan Taylor, apart from the fact that Ryan is less than two tenths behind him. But there's been no real attempt. There's been, he's not even shaped to a pass yet, has he? There's been no... no look about it no, the, but it's, it's just starting going defensive and looking around the outside you're going to go for the switch back is it going to work no it's the two minute bell isn't it two minutes and 14 remaining this is where Taylor Truman who has been following Harrison Crook for four pretty minutes, much four and the half minutes, yeah. longer than that I think Nick oh no because it's 12 minutes isn't it sorry yeah yeah, 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 yeah seven yeah. and a half minutes yeah and now he's he knows where his weaknesses are if any or knows where his strengths are in comparison to Crook and now we might see, but you know, you, you know that Crook's been waiting for this moment as well. Mm. And now he's going to drive, not a 95%, but a 100%, if not more, if that's even Let's possible. Let's see if 101, because it doesn't need to work on the whole. But they are, it does, I mean, Harrison Crook is remarkably relaxed for someone who's been had this, another car well, up his backside I'm, for the last 10 minutes. I bet his heart isn't. He looks <laughs> composed, but that's how you've got to ri drive a cart. You've got to just remain composed, and you've got you, you know, some minimal, the, some minimal you movement. Can, you can see the stress. Well, we're seeing it now. He's looking over his shoulder. He wants to know where he is. He can see how many minutes is left. He can see where we are race distance time. And now he knows that you know it's getting towards that checkered flag. And look at that, man. They're both absolutely together. Nothing in it. I just I can feel it, Nick. Ryan Taylor Truman is going to have a crack at this <laughs> he's going to have a crack at this and my feeling is he's going to have a crack at this at possibly the hand hairpin because I'm not sure he's got the pace off the straight Crook's engine comes on song here is he going to prove me wrong he absolutely is he's going to have here a go. go oh and he defends it well as well that was a great move down the inside he stopped himself going out too wide that was a little bit right foot and left foot at the same time now he defends into the hand hairpin Harrison Crook will be kicking himself he knew it was coming all that time here it is Nick look at that this is the bit where he keeps the yeah, lead up kept him going, yeah. he checked that slide he checked the, sl the slide well, he, he also did. took um, it took him with him took Harrison with him didn't he yes yes he made sure that Harrison was, wasn't able to get in behind him it's still two laps to go We've still got two laps remaining. Oh, I, bet, I bet Ryan's chuffed about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I bet Harrison Crook no, is I don't know. Well. Ryan's got a little yeah. bit more pace than he's, he's, he he's literally has. has lit, lit, lit the blue touch paper and gone. But it's half a mistake, if that. But a third of a mistake. Yeah, it'll not take much. Harrison will gather his composure, get back on it, and then pull that cart in front of him in if he can't. It's not looking likely, though, is it? Look at that. Look at the pace from Ryan Taylor Truman. He's pulled out a gap of two tenths of a second. It's, 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 it's all you've got now. He's got one more chance. He's too far back, I think. It's going to happen. An absolute lob up the inside. Oh, he tried it there. He just tried to carry so much speed through the S's. Looking again, looking right. But now I think he's going to have to settle for the second position, the second best tally of points he could possibly get. As Taylor Truman has it a couple of corners to go, just round through buttons and round Big Ben once more for a textbook bit of stalking and finally pouncing from Ryan Taylor Truman to win the first round of the Rotex 177 Championship, the NKC, here in 2024. He takes it. Taylor Truman wins. It's Harrison Crook is second. A bit of a wait, but then the Nathan Chafer fan club, he chuffed. He's in third. Scott Clee, I think, happy with fourth. And it's the uh, Chrome Curl Edwards in fifth. George Walker, Ollie Hancock, Alfie Williams, Jake Davis, Max Williamson, Nick Skelton, Marcus Baisley, Robert Simpson, Reese Llewellyn, Archie Elliott, Dan Miller, Nathan Wells, Sean Rudge, Oliver Moss, and John Bass is in 20th place. And there were 33 starters, uh, and I think that we're, we're going to get 33 finishers, with just Lawrence Hilton not taking at the start. Anybody talking to us? Uh, no. People can good luck. Nathan Chafer. Yeah. Yeah, the Nathan Schaefer fan club. Um, well, guys and girls and Nick, um, if you thought the last two finals were intense, the intensity is just going to be ramped up considerably here. The two drivers on the front row of this grid for senior Otax, the 162 kilogram category, have been the class of the field all day long. This is the opportunity we have to see who's better than who. Jensen Watts is on the pole position, and guess who's alongside him? Philip Howarth. Oh, yeah. who's, and he's, hit, he's on home ground, isn't he? In fact, they're, both of these guys, lads are on home ground. They are here at Clear Pigeon. It's a track they both know intimately, and it's a track they both want to win desperately at. So this is going to be an absolute delight. Second row, Kieran Gifford. He's running the O-plate because that's how good he is. He took the O-plate victory last year. And carries that with pride on the second row of the grid alongside Theo Fedrick. We've seen also how just how quick Theo can be. Ethan Lomax is fifth with current champion Bobby Rosier. We heard about Bobby having uh, some issues getting here. And he's got a lot of people to thank for getting him to the meeting and, and helping him with, his, uh, with running his cart. Well... Third row of the grid in sixth is, uh, is, is, is certainly a good reward for all the effort and time that has been put in. And Bobby will be wanting to, uh, to copy exactly what he did last year and take a championship win again this year. Got some tough competition, though. Matthew Lambert, seventh in the championship last year, qualifies seventh for the final here. Rufus Flan alongside him. Ethan Wyatt and Ryan Shepherd are on row five. We've got the current junior row tax champion, Mason Perrin, alongside Jack Maidment on row six. And then behind them, two two drivers that were very, very quick back in their junior days and still are quick in their senior days. Ashton French and Braden Hill. Got Louis Reese and Arthur Thacker on row eight. Row nine, Ben Harper, Aidan Pomeroy. Row 10, Billy Edgecombe and Luke Evans. Row 11, Sam Cresswell, Tommy Lee Davis. And then we've got Elliot Barrel, Ollie Varney, Michael Goodburn and Sam Wyatt on row 13. Finley Underwood and Jamie Burt. Then we've got Archie Carter and Henry Swanson. And then we've got the four of the senior road axe drivers that qualified up the order from the B final, which we will be able to give you full details of when we get that in front of us and just remind ourselves. Because, yeah. of course, we've got to get through tech. So yeah, when we true. call it, whatever the result is that we call, it's always provisional because they've got to get through tech, which yes. is scrutineering. So this is the penultimate race of the day. Uh, and we've got some comments from the last race. Um, Emma Barrett, fabulous Ryan Taylor Truman. Well done. Uh, what a race weekend. Fastest again. Excellent driving, doing soddy kart. Proud. Um, and then Kate Rosier, we, we go Ryan. Oh, look at Dan Hayes. Good luck to everyone in their junior final. <laughs> and then some, some more Bobby Rosier fans. 
Oh, go and come on, Louis Rees, you've got this, mate. Says uh, Dan Haynes, number twenty-two. Is that Dan Dan Haynes who we've seen race here before? That sounds Will like he's that? Dan Haynes, twenty-two. I don't know. I doubt he's born in twenty-two because you're not going to be typing in eighteen months, are you? <laughs> no. So we've got a bit of a delay here. No idea why. Yeah, um, can't see any um, recoveries going on on the track, so we are just waiting for uh, probably the carts to be presented on the starting grid, or the collecting area, I should say. Good um, luck to Jack Maidment and Jamie Burt and Zach Fletcher, who's racing. I don't think he is. Let me mention Zach Fletcher. So, so cool. Zach Fletcher, I can tell you, uh, is with the Dan Milner racing team. He's only been racing one and a half years. Um, he's not driven in the series before. And I've lost him off my page. No, there it is. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is, Zach Fletcher. Uh, top 10 players finishes at his club level. And his mechanic is Simon Fletcher, who's his dad. Always best. Yeah. Mainly so because always great. Have made Simon Fletcher, I, a mechanic, but he has a credit card as well. Well, I like that. I like, I like He's got the money. Lad races. Dad I like that. Um, the, we've got Ben Ballou, Reese Pope and Lewis Berry. Off the back, we've got Nathan Jensen, who was one of our qualifiers from the B final. So it's Jensen, Ballou, Pope and Berry that join us on the back of the grid. So the Nathan Jensen fan club will be wanting to see just how much progress that Nathan can make up the order from the back of the grid. He had a bit of a character building DNF, didn't he? That put him in the B final. Uh, massive grid of 34 carts that have come out. And we've got Jensen Watts and Philip Howarth we've got leading the field round. Watts will be got on Nathan, the... We've got Nathan Jensen to the fan club to be getting ready to go. Hmm? Nathan Jensen bumped up to this one, so the fan club will be getting ready to go, won't they? Were well, you not just listening there? I was listening to something else entirely. You clearly were, because <laughs> I've just said all of that. Yeah, but it wasn't very interesting. Clearly not. <clears throat> Sorry, mate. Here we, here we go. Just noise. Jensen Watts on the right-hand side of the track on the red and white cart, Philip Howarth. Around the outside, they're side by side, and Watts slides very wide indeed, and Howarth goes with him. That's allowed Gifford, Lomax, and Frederick. Frederick going through. Who's the spinner in the middle of the pack there? I didn't quite see who that was. Howarth's through. Jensen Watts is down the field, though, Nick. No, no. Well, Howarth's got a big lead. No, he's not. He's got a big no, lead. it's Sorry, not Howarth. second. It's the leader's 122. It's a 130. Yeah. Ethan Lomax has got out in the lead. Ethan so that Lomax. Confusion has, has allowed. Lomax to come through. I think it's a 1-3. To go away for the cut to look at the correct number as it goes past. Absolutely. Lomax. Fantastic start. Howarth in second. Well, then that, that had everything to do with the front row going Watts wide. has dropped to sixth. And then you've got Rosier in fifth for the Rosier fans. That had everything to do with the front row going very wide indeed and taking each other wide. And then everybody else filing through. Philip Howarth. I don't know how he's pulled that back into second place. But he has... And he's off after the leader, Ethan Lomax. Behind Howarth, Kieran Gifford, Theo Frederick, Bobby Rosier, Jensen Watts, uh, what's the fifth Ethan now? Wyatt. What's his fifth already? Watts is ahead of Rosier. Here they come across the line and two laps completed. It's Lomax, Howarth, Gifford, Frederick, Watts, Rosier, Wyatt, Maidman, Shepard, French. That's your top ten. And flashing by through the S's. Nice little break for Lomax. Howarth not really working too much and closing him down now the, the big battle there is three four and five three the zero of kieran gifford and then we've got uh also we've got theo frederick and jensen watts and bobby rosier so you've got the zero and the one and then phil howarth and uh jensen watts look at all that gut all that uh track that they're using at the final turn there just to keep the speed going this is the battle third fourth and fifth and that's what's the fifth cart in that train ahead of him. Theo Frederick, Kieran Giffen on the all plate. And then Philip Howarth just ahead. We'll keep with these three, though. I think Jensen Watts sizing up where he can have a go. But he, he's now around carts that have earned their place at the front of this senior Rotax field here in the year final. So his progress isn't going to be as like what we've seen in the in the in the heat. It won't be a knife through butter. It'll be well, it might be no. like a knife through butter that's been in the fridge, perhaps. <laughs> so Maybe. a little yes. bit stiff. But uh, he's tailing very closely the 92 of Frederick. I was kind of thinking, I don't think he can wait too long, and he doesn't. He's up the inside at the hairpin. 
And can he hold it on the exit? A little bit of a oh, he scuffle has. He has back indeed. and he's yeah, got yeah. it. So he's got the position up now. Yeah. Tries to build the it's, momentum. It's, it's one of his favourite places coming out the S's. Mm. Um, like I say, he knows this place like the back of his hand. While he is making progress, I've got to say that Philip Howarth is not making as much progress towards the front got of a the tenth, leader. Got a tenth that time. <laughs> Another tenth. Six, yeah, he got six tenths. So he's, he's right. creeping towards there. Of course, it's a 12-minute race. We haven't got to eight minutes yet. So That's right. We've still got 50 minutes to 50 seconds. 50 minutes? Blimey. We've still got 50 seconds refueling. to get to the eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. So next now, on Howarth, the list is Kieran Gifford. Yeah, That's not going to be an easy one. But Howarth is getting much, much closer in these last couple of laps. He's really starting to look to put the pedal to the metal. So that gap, which was six tenths, is going to be down to about three or four. Now Gifford is looking to, to uh, run them through. I think we're going to have the whole five of these front runners coming together as one and chasing down Ethan Lomax for the overall lead we've now got uh, we've now got Phil right almost on the bumper of Lomax yeah one and two almost but, within but, but range then, for a lunge kind of be a bit wide because Jensen Watts is also really looking at Kieran Gifford I think it's still it's a bit more three and four but if there's any way you can get all those top four in the same frame that'd be fantastic there they are one two there's a gap and that gap is probably about three tenths let's have a look yep three tenths exactly and then you've got, oh, and got the inside goes Watt. So Watt picks up third place. And is he going to be, nope, he managed to avoid losing two positions to Gifford there. He didn't lose it to very well. But there go Jensen Watts. Right, now, we've got Howarth and Watts together. But, un, but surprisingly, we've got Lomax ahead of both of them. Yeah, Ethan Lomax now has Philip Howarth down his inside, inside. And takes the lead at the horseshoe. He will lead out of buttons and will lead towards the final turn of top bend. Philip Howarth takes the lead for the first time in this safe final. He's tapping his helmet and saying, you know what, uh, help me break away from everyone else, especially that Jensen Watts character. Yeah, well, that, like, uh, yeah. he's a bit quick Well, Ethan, he's coming at me. Ethan Lomax kind of liked the feel of being in the lead of this race, mm. and we're not even at half distance yet, Nick, so we're going to have Watts challenging Lomax, I think, and then it's just how much that process slows them down, which will enable Philip Howard to break free, and by then... We might be towards too late for Jensen Watts to challenge mm, Philip Howard. What the gap was only seven tenths, first to third. Um, the issue for Watts, I don't think it's not, it's not the seven tenths, which is only six tenths now. The issue is he's got Lomax in between them. So he's going to try and this avoid Lomax. This is what Lomax. I mean. For, for Watts to get past Lomax, he's going to do it as quickly as possible. He can't be held up. They can't lose track. They can't lose, lose um, contact with Philip Howard. And it's already beginning no, to it. happen. He's done yes, it. Yes, he has. He's, right he's the down the inside. There. Down the inside of the horseshoe. Now then, now we've got the race of the day that we've been looking for. Jensen Watts has been awesome. He's chasing down Philip Howarth, who's been awesome all day long. We've got the two best 162 carters here in the field. They've proved that by their results today. They're at their favourite tracks, I think. Their home tracks. And now... It's just a pure fist fight all the way to the flag. And you know what, Nick? We've still got five hours. Uh, five hours. Five you, minutes, you 50 really minutes. You really want this to be an endurance agent. It's 50 I, I, minutes. It's yeah. five hours. No, it's just five minutes, Joe. I'm sorry. Okay, five minutes and 30 seconds will do. Quite a lot of refueling in a five-hour cart race. Right, let's see. Half a second was the gap last time by. What's it going to be this time? Four tenths. Two tenths. Point, uh, three tenths. Point two eight six. So three. what? But I can't... Uh, I think this is the ultimate catching as one thing passes another. It's Phil Howarth. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You know what, though? Jensen Watts is fully aware who Philip Howarth is. Mm-hmm. The whole paddock is. Howarth, you, yeah. you know, and now Philip looks over, Phil looks over his shoulder. He can see Watts. Watts is with him. They're almost bumper to bumper. That The gap is going to be absolutely nothing this time by. Out of top bend. Look at how delicate Howarth was turning the wheel there. He knows Watts is going to challenge. Down the outside outside of Billy's blind. All the way around the the outside. outside. (laughs) He's going to have to do that for the next four and a half minutes. Because Howarth knows that Jensen Watts... Look how defensive Philip is there. Phil Howarth down the inside of the hand hairpin. He comes out of that one. Look how much pace they've took off their yeah, lap this, time. This, we've now got a chain of five for the yeah. lead. Howarth got himself slightly out of, out of line through the entrance of buttons. But I think he got buttons. No, he didn't get away. Oh, 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 o
They're off. Oh, no, they're not. Only one Jensen of off. Watts is off. Yeah, Watts is off. But yeah, but they oh, came together. Dear, they were both oh, off the track at the time. And that was a that was a lunge at the final turn at top bend, which we've seen very little overtaking there. But there, Watts, and I'm, I think it was just wheel to wheel. What happened was, I, said, I saw it, it's, it's coming into the entry to, 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 to coming out of the horseshoe with four button. Howarth got it wrong and lost the drive as he came around that right-hander. And that gave... Um, what's a chance to get side by side and then they came together now how are people going to judge that then they came together I don't know but I'm pretty sure that Watts is not going to be very chuffed about that he, he's the one the barrier um, and I'm not sure how pleased how I think it'll be because he's fourth so it's not really worked out pretty well for either of them but it was kind of a, in many ways not a surprise let's be honest no it's a shame it had to come down to an incident um, and yeah, yeah I mean not unexpected, really, when the intensity is that high. We've now got a different leader, though. It's the all plate holder, Kieran Gifford, from Theo Frederick. Ethan Lomax is there, but Philip Howarth is coming back. He's got just over three minutes to come back and take the lead. What he feels is his rightful position to be in. However, those three guys, those three lads in front of him, have Ooh. equal measure at how justified they are as yes. Philip Howarth. Yeah, I think he helped I himself think, the third. I then. think that was more of a more of a um, a mistake from Lomax. Right, was it? it looked like he helped Sliding himself, but there was also kind of a slight jitter on the camera at the same point. So I'm not quite sure. Oh, oh, we got a problem. Oh no, is that problem Gifford? for Gifford? Gifford's got his exhaust off. His, oh. his bumper, his bumper's gone. He's got his bumper. Co- oh, that's such bad oh. luck. Gifford's got a bumper down. Incredible, Nick. That we've got a zero points haul for Jensen Watts. A zero points haul for the all plate holder Kieran Gifford. And who's in second place? Phil Howarth. And he will win overall. The, 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 I think he'll get the most points overall when he becomes second. Yeah. Because he'll get another 96 for the final rather than 100. Yeah. Two minutes and 20 seconds is what's on the clock for Phil Howarth to get back on terms on terms with the rear bumper of Theo Fedrick. Fedrick finds himself in the lead of this air final. And... He's a very, very quick driver, is Theo. But he must think all his Christmas has got one, surely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We are inside the final two minutes. The two-minute bell has sounded. Yeah, I'm not sure if how I think how not sure how's cart quite where it was before. That dramatic turn of pace doesn't seem to be there. I'm not saying there's not enough in the four four laps or so left to get past, but well, he's lapping quicker by, by you how know, much? hundreds yeah. uh, and, and, and he needs thousands. Like, he needs two or three tenths a lap, doesn't he, really? Uh, well, with, he with does, yes, lead. with, one, with 90 seconds. Um, nine tenths is the gap, so he needs three tenths of a second per lap. Let's see where it is this time. It was nine tenths. It was, it's, it's a Gone second. Yeah. It's a second. The gap's remaining the same. Theo Fedrick, just over a minute remaining. He's pulled out that one second gap we've got 1.6 seconds back to uh, sorry six tenths of a second back to Ethan Lomax Ethan Wyatt has come through to fourth Ryan Shepard fifth Jack Maidman sixth Bobby Rosier finds himself in seventh then we've got Rufus Flan Braden Hill ninth Tommy Lee Davis tenth the current junior Rotax champion Mason Perrin just outside the top ten in eleventh and then in twelfth Ashton French Ben Harper, Billy Edgecombe, Ollie Varney, Louis Reeks, Hayden Pomeroy, Luke Evans, Sam Cresswell, Arthur Thacker rounds off the top 20. Where is Nathan Jensen for his fan club? He's up in the 25th now, just behind Ben Ballou. Started, what, 31st? So not bad? Probably having a great battle. Howarth hasn't, at this late race state, appeared to have the pace. You can see just ahead of him is our leader, Theo Fedrick, and not someone I think that would have been put down in many sweepstakes to win the first round of the NKC Senior Rotax championship final Howarth goes across the lead with two laps to go and he gained a half a tenth it's not enough so outside of a mistake for this man the 92 of Theo Frederick Frederick sorry no R Frederick it is not going to be a Howarth or a Jensen Watts victory or a Kieran Gifford victory the three favourites have all met differing ends one out through an accident one out through mechanical and one just lost so much time in, in fighting and none of them are going to stand on the top step, Joe. Absolutely. They're on the... About to start the last lap. Last lap board flies. And we've got a fine drive from Theo Frederick. You've got to be there to take advantage of those situations, Nick. And Theo's been there all day. I know we've talked about Jensen Watts and Philip Howarth all day. 
but these drivers also have been there or thereabouts around them and he's uh, once he's got the lead he's held the lead and you know we take for granted that these drivers have to press the pedal at the right time have to turn the wheel at the right time and Theo Frederick has had a very very strong drive from the lead I mean got that lead he will take the win in round one of the senior road axe class Philip Howarth he looked at that and he'd probably be a bit despondent but that was always going to be an incident packed final from this lot Ethan Lomax will be the third and final step of the podium Ethan Wyatt was fourth Ryan Shepard fifth Bobby Rosier sixth Jack Maidman seventh Braden Hill eighth ninth is Tommy Lee Davis uh, Rufus Flan was tenth and then just outside the top ten was our current junior Rotax champion Mason Perrin moving up to seniors for the first time um, these results that we read out of course are provisional yep. um, they've got to be made official by the uh, the stewards of the meeting and uh, the carts have got to get through tech and whatever happens there happens so keep an eye out on the uh, the NKC Facebook page um, yeah, no to idea. see it exactly is, yeah, who there might be some complaints there might be some stewarding I don't know well, there might be some stewarding there might be some issues Noses. on track but there, there might be some nose penalties there might be some technical uh, issues um, you know it, it's uh, that's why we that's why the results are provisional uh, well Nick we the have, last one. We have reached that moment that I kind of always hate because even though at the beginning of the weekend we've got all that racing to get through, when we get to the final race, we think, really? <laughs> can we not do? Can we not have just tag some more on at the end? A few more, please. Um, I tell you what, though, we've had some intense racing, right? We always have intense racing mm. in the U, in the NKC. The NKC has become a championship that is very, very much worth winning. It's got. A reputation in the karting world as being a tough and hard championship to win. It's got a it's got a reputation of being not easy to do well. It's got the extra challenge of the tire regulations, the Maxis tire, a completely different tire that the Rotax class has run on in all the other series. And even your club rounds. There are very few clubs that run the Maxis tire. I can't think of any really uh off the top of my head. Um <laughs> so th- this NKC has become a championship. That is very much worth winning. But what happens then is when a championship becomes worth winning, it becomes the intensity is just turned up the dial. The intensity dial just goes up. And hence, we end up with massive racing like we have. Uh, If you think it's been intense so far, we've left the junior Rotax final to last. There's a reason for that. It's because one, we've got 70 plus entries, which means we have to have a C final. A B final. It's all about track time for our customers. And the NKC, you, you as competitors are NKC's customers. And it's all about track time and getting your money's worth from your uh, of driving your cart around the, around the racetrack. That's what it's all about. So that's why we, uh, we've gone from, uh, you know, having a, a grid of 30 carts to taking 70 plus entries because we can do that. And we will continue to do that as long as you keep coming and racing with yeah. us. The slight delay is due to the fact that uh, they can't get all the cars in Park Ferme. So the carts are actually kind of leading it, leaving it still on the track, so they haven't cleared the track effectively of the, of the carts that are competing in the 34-cart field. Yeah, yeah, that's a same delay as last time. So that gives us plenty of time to have a look down the grid then for the Junior Rotax final. Um, Jaden Sherwood, um, he is the driver that's done so well in the heats to date. He's put himself on pole position with 143 points, for instance. Uh, in second place, 138 points, five points behind, is Will Swales. He'll start alongside on the front row. Good luck to that, because it <laughs> never goes the way you plan it. Um, second row of the grid, Tom Holden and Freddie Warlock. They've always been there or thereabouts pretty much all day long in the heats. Has as Nathan Traverse and Charles Green. They're on row three. Row four, Reese Green, Jasmine Taylor. She had an absolutely outstanding heat. I've had so many junior road seats, I can't remember which one it was, but Love she had seven. a great drive. One of the seven was great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She took the wind, didn't she? Mm. Yeah, brilliant drive. Uh, Zach Burke and Joshua Withcombe are on row five. Uh, Jason Dukis uh, is alongside Leo Basterfield on row six. Amy Peacock, she's had a good day as well, hasn't she? Jarek Metters shares row seven with Amy Peacock. Uh, row eight is Max Chown and Dylan Morton with... 
Jay Leverton on the gold cart, number 11, on row 9 with Maxim Smith. Ben Adrian and Melissa Adrian. I wonder what the, the relationship dynamic is there. They've got to be brother and sister. No, they're cousins. They? They're cousins, yeah. yes. We've done that before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. They're cousins. They share row 10. That's going to be one to talk about over dinner. Uh, Jack Dimbleby and Jack, uh, Jacob Anslow are on row 11. Row 12 is Frank Ward and Harris Roberts. Sam Mott and Jacob Hobbs, they're on row 13. And then up from the Minimax class, Kazeri Veserek uh, into the junior class for the first time this season. He's on row 14 with Lucas Howell. Lincoln Bevan over from the Isle of Man. Lincoln's on row 15 with Danny May Reed. Sonny Morgan, second, uh, second in the um, Minimax Championship last year, our vice champion for Minimax, also moving up, getting too tall. Uh, Sonny Morgan, first of our qualifiers from the B final. He's alongside Harvey Williams on row 16. And then rounding off the 34 cart field are the second two uh, qualifiers from the B final, Billy Vogt and Caden Welsh. That is our 34 cart field. We've barely got the carts in to the Park Fermi from the previous one. I think they're just about to clear the last one, thankfully. Yeah, I think they are, Nick. Um, so once we do that, we'll uh, we'll be getting underway for the last time this afternoon. Rolling out for the final race of this first round of the NKC. Have we got any comments? Uh, that was a good fight from Bobby Rosier. So does Bobby Rosier. Um, Ella Haynes is still very proud of Nathan. Very proud girlfriend. So you've got the final. That's good. Because I was worried because she wasn't at the B final, but it's going. Come on, Bob! Great defence. Anyway, that's now time for the final final of this day today, the final day of the two the three day meeting. It's all final. Do you think you can say final again? Uh, no. Finally. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like to say thank you to everyone who's been with us all day, and thank you to the people who've been commenting in the YouTube. It's always great to hear who you're supporting and why. And um, we do love to inter interact with you in this kind of weird third-person way you can do now on social media, mm. where we just make assumptions about things and you correct us. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're we, his, are you his second cousin twice removed? No, I'm his we, mum. We, oh, okay. we, we don't mind being corrected on anything no. we see. And also, if you if you can identify any breed of dogs quicker than we can, that's also appreciated. Yeah, yeah. But I guarantee we, yeah. Uh, we, but this will be a theme for the entire year. If we see a dog, we're going to cut it up during the breaks in racing. Joe? What you mean is cut up the pictures. <laughs> yes, we're not going to start we're carving. Going to we're not going to. No. Very good point. Well made. Yeah. So I went to be a production there. We're going to put the dog on screen. But now there are cars on screen. Joe. Carts, in fact. Thank you, Nick. We're about to get underway. Jaden Sherwood, Will Swills. That's the front row. The teammates into turn one. It's called Billy's Blind here at Clear Pigeon. Ooh. And we've got them coming together. And whether or not they get out of there and into the S's intact. We'll keep our fingers oh. crossed and our eyes closed. Oh, we've got uh, just one nine three had an issue into the. Uh, that's one nine three had that problem into the S's. Can't All right, out. that's uh, Dylan Morton. That's way but down the order now. Out the front, it is the ten of Will Swales, and we're going to be. Luckily, we only have to wait a little bit longer. They flat underneath. We get the rest of the position. Though the bit of a problem, the second place cart didn't pick up very well. They're at all out the top bend, and it's been. Oh, that was a 77, had a poor pickup, which was Charles Green, a great start for him to get into second. But he picked up badly, and Jason Sherwood actually nudged him slightly, and now he's lost the position. I think he's got a slight, he's got some sort of power pickup problem in 77, or he's had it, had it cough a couple of times. And into second place has gone Jaden, but he just lost it again, because Sherwood just nipped up the inside into third. So, yes, so coming round now, nice little gap in the lead for Swell. Second place, it's the triple one of Jaden Sherwood, and the 77 has dropped to third. All of that, all of those shenanigans going on behind the leader has allowed Will Swales to pull out a bit of a gap and a bit of a breather, a bit of a breathing space if he's not careful. It's going to be Jaden Sherwood. So they, Jaden Sherwood started on the pole. He's now second. Will Swales started second. He's now leading. So the two teammates will circulate together and no doubt they've talked about this over the lunch break and the build-up to this here final. They will work together, no doubt about it, and then maybe battle it out for the last two minutes. However, you've got Charles Green, Nathan Traverse, Freddie Warlock, Jasmine Taylor, Tom Olden, Leo Basterfield, Reese Green, Jason Douches. They are the top ten, and they have other, other ideas about what's going to transpire in this A final. Ida Billy's blind. They are coming back towards the leaders. There's only four tenths in the lead gap between Wills, Will Swills and Jaden Sherwood. And then behind him, just look at that line of carts. It all gets 
a bit awry at the it's, hand hairpin, and we'll see who comes out of there and in what order. It's an absolute bun fight, isn't it? There, there's, it there's looks one, like two, Whirlock, three, four, actually. five, six, seven, eight, nine cars all squabbling over about oh, 15 meters of real estate. One, two, and three have got breathing space gaps, not decent gaps. And then it's this four, five downwards, fourth car at the 88 of uh, Freddie Whirlock, who's picked up that position. Jasmine Taylor in fifth, and Nathan Traverse. And they sweep round Billy's blind in through the S's now. Oh, he's run sideways there. A couple of them, they took too much curb. They Taking do, curb's they? good. Taking too much curb is bad. They slice sideways through the S's. It's really brilliant to watch. We must get a camera down there, Nick, to see that. Um, okay, the, I'll, that be, I'll let you buy yeah. it. Yeah, 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 I will do. I think I would. <laughs> Just ask. How much are they? Uh, two and a half grand. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Here they come then. The two teammates, still Swales and Sherwood, leading this race. It's the two calls drive. Welcome no to Coles Racing. Yellow flag flying into turn one, so they have to remain in station. Coles Racing hitting the NKC with a bang with these two out in front in Junior yeah. Rotax. Will Swills and Jaden Sherwood are the names. They must have thought the highlight of the weekend was when you interviewed them in the paddock walk. But no, apparently it's been first and second in Junior Absolute, Rotax final. Well, it's not over yet, mm. Nick. They're still They're running and first minutes. and second. Yeah, running first and second and being there at the front row of the grid. Um, it's great to have the team on board with the NKC for the full season and this has got to encourage encourage them, they're being told to up the pace would you believe, Flags they need to away. up the pace because you've got Charles Green, Jasmine Taylor, Freddie Whirlock right there behind them some real say, curb slapping action through the S's, they now come into the hairpin no one's made a move this time, everyone's sat on the racing line, now up and away and they enter the first half of the horseshoe and it's uh, again just into that kind of calmer period now I think a couple of we've had those early scuffles and exchanges and now people are perhaps thinking about where I can start to make some, some movement but most of the distances seem to be equidistant as they were a lap ago and they flash over in exactly the same order they were 35 seconds in the past and as much as Will Swills and Jaden Sherwood trying to work together and not fight over it here he comes Charles Green is coming and Jasmine Taylor is coming as well yeah, I mean, we've got a four-car battle now, Nick. Yeah, I mean, I think the fact was, unless you absolutely gun it, you're not going to break away and even even keep the same distance. So this is four, and that four-car battle, I predict, unless there's some real push on from uh, Swales or Sherwood, did Sherwood get the lead? No, no, it's still well. I don't know. Is that Sherwood or, or Will Swales? If I just, he did, I may, I may have missed it. Is it Sherwood got through? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I missed that because it's two identical yeah. cars. Something else. Sherwood's got the lead, and then it's uh, Swales behind him. So yeah, it's 1-1 one one from 10. And, that, and then, right on his bumper, is Charles Green and Jasmine Taylor. Yeah, but and then, if they're not careful, Freddie Whirlock and Leo Basterfield want to play as well. Not oh, down the inside is Basterfield. Field is not going to Basterfield work. Basterfield has oh, he gone does well. the well inside. Done. Yep, he's <laughs> gone in there on Freddie Whirlock and has taken fifth place with a great move. It's, it's, it's off camber there, Nick, and you can carry a lot of speed. That carries you out to the outside of the turn. Doing a great job in holding the field up for his teammate is yeah, Will Swales. Yeah, I was thinking that Green and Taylor have got an issue here, and their issue is that Swales is not, they'll get past Swales, but Swales is not going at the same pace as his teammate Jordan Sherwood. So what's effectively happening, as you say, Joe, is he's, he's gapping his, his teammate and he can hold back Green and Taylor, who really, oh, and Taylor goes oh, up through Green, so yep. Jasmine takes third. So Jasmine says to Charles Green, here, let me have a try at getting past Will Swales. Look how composed Swills is. Look at where he positions mm. the cart. Look at how much he's driving or within himself. It, to me, that pace that he's holding is just enough to keep those two carts at bay. Meanwhile, Jaden Sherwood is going off and he's got a gap of not much, to be fair. It's only six tenths of a second. So that's still manageable if Jasmine Taylor can get by Swills. And here's the Ooh. challenge. The challenge She's got happened. halfway, no. Oh, and that's held her up, isn't it? Taking that inside line. Well, she actually got a nudge from I, uh, Charles Green as well I, because she, did, she just didn't get the drive up. Well, she was in a position where she couldn't put the drive on. I thought that was going to end in tears. I really did. I thought, oh, here we go. Who's off? But no, they continue and cross the line to complete 11 laps. There's five and a half minutes remaining. Five and a half minutes for Jasmine Taylor. So will she try the same move again this time? Or will... Uh, Swells, you waiting for it? No, bit, bit, bit. No, and it's gone to the outside this no, time. Then she was thinking about getting the switch back. Wasn't possible. The last of the lead breakers. Now the only thing you do is perhaps get up the inside here, but no, good position by Swells. This is fantastic news for Jaden Sherwood. These three having it well, two of them with a kind of a hanger on, really, with uh, Charles Green. These three scrapping is just easing him away. 
So let's see how far ahead is Jordan Schobel had over a second last time. It won't be less. And I guess it'd be slightly more. Yep, another two tenths. That was a precious lead when Taylor finally, if she does get past Wales, is a gap to make up maybe too, too great. We're, we're almost at two-thirds distance, Joe. So the gap's gone out at 1.3 to be exact through to Jaden Sherwood. Meanwhile, behind Jaden Sherwood, there's Will Swales. He's having to drive defensive, isn't he? You see the Swales through train the, now? Through the, it's it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like nine carts soon. It, it is very much, and that's how much pace. I don't know whether this is deliberately dropping the pace. Oh, oh but here he's comes, lost the drive. Here comes Jasmine, and she's in the ideal place to outbreak going into Billy's blind. And she does. She sits the cart there. Basterfield through. Basterfield following her through. And who's that gone to as, as, green well? as well? Charles Green. The cork has come out of the bottle. The course racing driver, Will Swills, has been demoted to fifth place now and will have to hang on to this. But these. he's seeded his teammate a two-second lead. He absolutely has two seconds, yes. So that if that was indeed deliberate teamwork, absolutely, that's clinched the win. As Sherwood came through, Basterfield. We saw, well, we saw Leo one. Basterfield drive like that. In Mini Max. Yeah. He's carrying that on in Junior Max. Cracking move from Leo Basterfield. Now, the lead actually went up that, that, that because that was the overtaking manoeuvre. So the 34 9 against 35 1 showed it to Taylor. But let's see this first open lap for Jasmine. But she's only got three, only, but she's only got about seven laps to make it up again, or six laps to make it up again. And, and realistically, if Sherwood wins it, the first person he needs to do is. Give Will Swirls a good shake of the hand and probably even the trophy as well because he's won it for him by, uh, by just holding well, back the rest of the field. Gap 2.2 seconds, Nick. Yeah, it's must be almost exactly the same time. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's less than a tenth faster personal, than Jasmine, yeah. Personal best lap time by Jasmine Taylor. Four hundredths quicker. 34.971. Yeah, just, just fractions, isn't it? Fractions quicker. Mm. Which might have been useful if, she hadn't, if she'd actually got past Wells earlier and hadn't been two seconds back. She's putting a little bit of Basterfield. He's probably quite chuffed with third. It's kind of a, a, a relaxing gap there. It's like a three quarters of a second. And then just behind them is green. So these, these guys who have been, you know, getting some sort of reward for this. Swells is shaking his head. He's, he's going past his team, his Coles team manager. He's shaking his head. So perhaps Swells has got a little bit of a mechanical issue. Yeah, maybe maybe the pace dropped off the cart. I mean, it, you know, we're, we're being a bit sort of... Uh, well, there you go. He did a great, he's done a great job. He's doing well. But, I mean, he, he has been less fast than the others. And he do, I think he probably does feel he's not quite got the machine under him he would like in this 12-minute final. I, I think suddenly the pace has dropped off the cart there for him because uh, it happens in car racing. It happens at the top level in Formula 1 and the like and British touring cars and the like. However, I don't think I've ever heard of a teammate holding up people for their teammate to break away you want to beat your teammate you're in that you're all the, the yeah. you know you're in the same morning you want to beat him you want to be the number one driver in the awning and they want it he wants to be the number one driver in the uh, in the coal zoning and that that just hasn't happened has it will swills down to sixth now and behind joshua withcombe and he is struggling all this time he's struggling to hang on to any kind of pace whatsoever yeah. so i don't know where that drop off is whether it's tires whether it's motor that's dropped off i'm not really sure I mean, he said he lost the drive didn't he so unfortunately suddenly lose the drive could be power or could be grip couldn't it so you kind of choose one of two uh, in fairness to um taylor she's doing a decent job she's pulled back another tenth but i think at this point Sherwood's in control mode um you know it's a good points for both of them 100 points for um Sherwood and 96 points for taylor good championship points a good start leo basterfield will get 95 uh, oh, sorry, 94. And there is the 84 of Jasmine Taylor. Plowing a lonely furrow now because she's broken Basterfield entirely. So it's a 1, 2 and 3 have all got big gaps. 4 and 5 are having a bit of a scrap. Just drop back one uh, to, the, to the blue and the car for, for a lap or so. 77 and the 10 are going past now. And they're the ones having the ring. This is Green, Swells, 20, oh, Swells. But, oh, oh, big mistake by Green. He's lost a place. But at the same time, Swells didn't gain a place because... Joshua Withcombe <laughs> went past him. So, yeah. whatever he does, it just isn't working now, is it? Opportunist driving there with 30 seconds remaining. We are heading towards uh, yeah, the last lap Two more, lap I board. think. No, I think we'll get two more because I think what will happen is that... No, no, I didn't say that. I said the last lap board. So yeah. Two more. Yeah. Heading towards the last lap board. Not this lap, Nick, necessarily. But heading towards yeah, the last a, lap a, board. There's a semantic discussion in the middle of a final, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> yeah, shall we? Ten seconds remain, though. So, it will be the penultimate lap that the drivers are on now. As the leader continues on his way, Jaden Sherwood for Coles Racing. 
Another couple of tenths taken out of him that time by uh, Jasmine. I but think he's piercing himself yeah. to the flag, though. As more contact into the hand hairpin there, just out of our sight, we'll, uh, we'll pick up the leader, which is not that one there. That comes through. Here he is, the one behind. There's Jaden Sherwood. One lap to go, board. Just gone through. Here he is. He's our leader. That's him there. And a great drive from what was pole position, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, a very commanding day from Jaden Sherwood. And really just showing, Nick, I think, what we've got in store from yeah. the likes of this team. Yeah, great performance by Coles. Great performance by Sherwood. But, uh, yeah, and a really entertaining race. And good performances by Taylor and Basterford and Withcombe. And some excellent action in the uh, very nice afternoon sun of, uh, of Dorset and Clay Pigeon. Here he comes then. He takes the win. Round one of the Junction 6 NKC for 2024. Here a clear pigeon for Junior Rotax. Goes to Jaden Sherwood. Jasmine Taylor takes a very fine second place. She's got to be happy with that. Leo Basterfield. He's got to be happy with third. Absolutely cracking drive to third in the final. In your very first NKC Junior Rotax final. Yeah. A podium position for Leo. Joshua Withcombe was fourth. Will Swill, the despondent fifth, I think. Freddie Wurlock, sixth. Tom Holden was seventh. Eighth was Charles Green. Reese Green was ninth. And then rounding off the top ten was Harris Roberts. Great stuff. And rounding off the coverage for today as well. So thank you all who've been with us uh, here on Casting Live TV for the NKC Round 1 2024. Do not forget, there is more karting action next week on Karting Live TV, where we go all the way up to Sunderland and Warden Law to cover the kart championship's uh, third round. I have to go all the way to Warden Law. Uh, five minutes from your house. And uh, we'll be on air from two o'clock on Saturday, so it's a couple of hours on Saturday, and again, the full day Sunday with karting action. Uh, and hopefully you can join us for that. The next round of the NKC will be coming to you on the 20... <laughs> when is it? May is it? 28th it's of the May? the middle of May. No, it's the end of at May. At Forest Edge. Yeah, it's in Forest Edge. It's the end of May, isn't it? 26th Mid, of May, 25th, mid, mid, 25th, of 25th, 26th of May for round two. So thank you all for being with us. Thank you to Joe for, for talking and, and correcting me <laughs> endlessly. <laughs> thank you to Paul for sharing a chair with me. Uh, thank you to uh, Matt for filming dogs. And thank you for Ash for just generally being able to set cameras up really well, much better than I ever could. Um, my name is Nick Damon. We are Karting Live TV. We'll see you next week with the Kart Championship and see you towards the end of May with round two of the NKC. Good night, all. Hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. <laughs>